All right, I think we're live. How you guys doing? Welcome back to Age of Vampires. And tonight we're going to be doing some casted games, which should be quite a bit of fun. Uh, my hand's a little bit beat up and having some issues, so I am just going to be casting replays. Well, not replays, but live game. I'm sorry, I'm used to used to Total War Warhammer, all that stuff. But yeah, we're live. Let's get it. Um, we're going to get this going. All the players are shooting messages. Ezra is going to be hosting our lobby here, and uh, we should be good to go. So let me go to the friends list here. Find them, and uh, first game is going to be Mega Random. Yes, yes. All right. So where is this? Lobby is right here, and as soon as it started, we'll go. We're going to do a couple games tonight, and I'm thinking um, we can see what you guys want to do, but we could also do smaller lobbies. We could do, like, four-player games and have, like, more rapid-fire ones. Yeah, certainly could. Certainly could indeed. Ram, I hope your daughter's doing well. Hello. <laughs> hello there. Hello. Welcome to the stream. Yes, yes. All right. So let's see where Ezra is sitting at the moment. And it looks like the lobby is up. All right. Cool. And uh, we should be starting in a moment. Excited for the expansion. That's going to be a whole lot of fun. We're going to get Byzantines in Japan and all the variant civs. Still going to be maining Holy Romans myself. I've been playing a little bit of HRE 1v1 a couple days ago. It was a lot of fun. I forgot to remove his hands from the freezer. No, it's, uh, yeah, I don't know what it was. I Well, I've, I've had these issues for a long time, but I uh, I woke up, like, I was going to bed the other night, and I started getting, like, just, just weakness and, uh, you know, tingling stuff in my left hand, and it's been pretty messed up the past few days. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I've had, had those problems, and I did have surgeries to fix it years ago, but I will have to see. I'll have to get it checked out again. Hopefully it won't be any problems. All right, so yeah, we could do four player games. We could do like Thunderdome, like Fast, FFA. I feel like those ones will usually just be won by like, uh, oh man, we got a lot of messages here. All right, put me in coach. Yeah, we got, we, got a, we got a host right now. We do have a host. All right, the game is live. Let's fire it up. Let's get it going. All right. So we get Dark Hunter, Ezra, and Delhi Sultanate. Uh, I have no idea how to say those symbols on the Chinese. We have Prime on the Abbasid, Dandy Dragon on the Mongols, Smeagol on the Chinese, Sai on French, Deavok on the HRE, and Rebus on the Abbasid Dynasty. Let's get it, man. Let's have some fun. Hey, Quill. I know Quill just messaged me. You're a Conqueror player, right? Are there any other Conqueror players in the Discord that you would, you would want to duke it out with on the stream tonight? We could have a uh, We could have a little show match. If you like, we could cast it in between the FFAs, which I think would be fun. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure Quill is like Conk 2 or Conk 3, right? I think it'd be fun. Yeah, we'll see. I think doing like a casted Duel of Fates could be fun. I don't know if anybody wants to help arrange that and see who's around the Discord that could put up a fight. Uravity versus Quill. Time is now. All right, Delay should be going soon and we'll be getting it. Yeah, very solid group of players. Folks who've won many of our uh, FFA tournaments we've had and... Some new challengers have arisen as well. <laughs> Spiegel on Chinese is going to be an absolute drain. Yeah. 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 I would imagine it's uh, it's some sort of uh, Korean language up on the top right. Could be wrong though. Dustin says, Turn, I wasn't interested in AoE until I started watching you play it during Total War's Dry Spell. It's really fun, dude. It's a great game. There's a, there's a lot of great games though lately. Dune Spice Wars I've been pretty addicted to. And what's great about that is I only need one hand to play that game. So I can play that one pretty much no problem. Um, Age of Empires is really like high APM. Like you need to be on point. Yeah, Gunhound, it's up. It's up to you, Gunhound. See if anyone's interested, um, and we can we can maybe do that for the next game, and then do another one after that, another FFA. So, all right, guys, loading into the map. Let's take a look at our mighty champion spawning in one of the better spots on the map. Is going to be Sai. Oh, this is just like a full chub French spawn. Look at that, you got like a French corner spawn. Um, you have like a natural water barrier, which is gonna prevent you from being flanked. You could easily spam like five or six layers of walls right here and just have like a super obnoxious place to try and get by, which is gonna be really good. Yeah, so that's very, very good for Sai. Spawning to the Southwest, it is gonna be prime, certainly not in the prime spot here on this map. Um, did we have players dropping? Oh no, what did we have, like disconnects there or something? That's really weird. Well, hopefully they rehost and we can get this going. It looks like somebody may have dropped and they did like a restart or something. Yeah, that is what it is. We'll uh, we'll get another game going. But that was a, a god tier spawn for those. So Ezra can do their best to get these same players back. But um, in the future, if only one player crashes, we're going to continue games. So if you're hosting and just one player crashes, we're going to continue. Just because, you know, 
Otherwise, what ends up happening is the lobby gets remade, and then most people who were there before don't get back in, and it's uh, you know it's kind of anarchy. So, all right, cool. So if you're remaking it, Ezra, let me see, and we can go from there. All right, looking, looking. I'm not seeing Ezra's lobby. Perhaps remaking the game. And uh, all right. Well, hopefully they can get the same people back in. That's what that's what I hope for. So. We'll hang tight for a second. But yeah, in the future, if only one person crashes, just just keep going through the game. No, you don't need to restart it. Because it's too hard to reorganize and get all the same people back in. Yeah, I don't know how many conch players we had in there. Are you going to be streaming or casting some 1v1 ladders? Yeah, when the expansion comes out, I'll probably be doing some 1v1 streams. I'd like to see if I can get back to Conqueror again. That'd be fun. Um, I feel like the game's changed a lot since I was able to get it. But um, overall, we'll see. We will see. Uh, Anthony, uh, shoot me a message in Discord, man. We'll get you involved in. Uh, you can you can host the next one or something. Just uh, shoot me a uh, shoot me a message. It's easier to coordinate if you're in the Discord community. All right. So looks like they're starting. And again, um, yeah, don't restart if it's just one crash. All right. So looking down here, we got to find this, and it looks like we're back in the match. All right. That's strange. That's strange, Anthony. Well, shoot me a message in Discord. We'll get it. We'll get it. You scored away from the next game. We can have you host the next one. All right. Dark Hunter is on Ottomans. Prime on Abbasid. Rebus on Abbasid. Dandy Dragon on Mongols. Um, I think it's just ASD, Smeagol, Davok, and Sai on the Bruce as well. Good times. Good times, man. Let's get it. Hey, from Australia. Yeah, I know. The one of the few time zones that appreciates these uh, these these timing of these streams. Yeah, I'm excited to get back into 1v1s. I just got to get my hand health better and then um, I can I can get back into it. Because, you know, the left hand is very important in Age of Empires for hockeys and macro and control groups and all that stuff. So we will see. Do I remember the exact stream in which Schmeagle got his nickname? No, I don't actually. I mean, it was a while ago, though. Would have been months and months ago, maybe even closer to a year. He's been Smeagol for a long time now, guys. He's been Smeagol for an absolute long time. Uh, Gunhound's here in chat. Gunhound can drop links to the Discord. Yep, there it is. Thank you, Gunhound. Greatly appreciate it. And we'll get you. No worries, Anthony. Yeah. Shoot, you got to shoot me a message in Discord. Join our community. And then from there, we'll get you, we'll be able to more easily get you involved in games because you're on my friends list and, you know, it's easier to message you and things like that. So, all right, starting up in 10 seconds. Thank you guys for your patience. Here we go. And it looks like some players switched sieves. I think one or two people did switch. A very, very brave Abbasid player right there. Rebus is going to be on the Abbasid. All right. So here we are. A very different map layout. Not as many, um, in some ways, this map, yeah, not as many oppressive positions. But it still looks like, ironically, um, Sai, I believe, was our French player last game. But here, it is going to be Roos up in the corner. And this is a pretty good spot. You just, if you really wanted to be meticulous about this, you could... Um, you can set up a lumber camp here, lumberjack like a portion of this away, but you have to be very careful with your macro here. And then you set up your, not your macro, but like how deeply you cut into the trees. And then you could put a wonder here and have like a natural ch uh, tree choke point, which like, you know, that would be really good. I mean, Trebs could hit it from down here maybe, but it's very hard to get trebuchets in position in like a full on siege. It's very, very tough. All right, guys. So we got spot Sai, uh, Sakura Zaka. Sakura Zaka, I think that's how you say that. Spawning on the north side of the map into the west and south. It is going to be Rebus on the Abbasid with the dreaded two landmarks. Over to the far southwest corner, it is going to be the Dreadlord Smeagol playing the Chinese, going for a very standard opening where you basically get your mill, get your taxation system going. And, uh, you know, look at him. He's like, he's, he's dancing around here. This is uh, historically accurate. It's like Chinese officials doing a little bit of a shuffle while they uh, rub their hands together and take the money from the peasants. To the south, we do have Prime, and it is going to be a second Abbasid player. Do we have two Abbasids? We do, actually. Two Abbasid players. Okay, Abbasids do certainly do some things very well. Uh, they have a very dynamic, uh, I guess, just gameplay in general. Ghulams are incredibly good. They do have good trade. They have very good food eco as well. Um, their gathering rate is just solid if you can get those Golden Ages going. But man, oh man, I can tell you, in uh, FFA, it is extremely scary playing Abbasid. Like, the Abbasid player has two landmarks right next to each other, okay? If your base gets compromised by like four or five bombard cannons, you lose one fight in the late game in your base and they're like close, boom, you're done. So you gotta be very careful with that. Now to the south side, it's gonna be Davok on the HRE. HRE is certainly quite cool. We got Friar Tuck over here dropping some uh, holy chants here on the villagers. 
and to the northeast it is going to be our korean champion here playing chinese as well so he's got his mill he's got his village set up and uh yeah just going to be going for that uh quick quick feudal age i would imagine over to the east side dandy dragon dandy dragon the usual i've seen dandy playing quite a bit of french lately which is cool uh not french excuse me mongols uh, Dandy was often known for playing French and playing very, very uh, heavy-duty wonder defenses with Guildhall Stone. But it looks like uh, Dandy might be changing up the game plan a little bit with the Mongols here. And Mongols are another great FFA sieve. Uh, I would say much better in FFA than they are in 1v1. Mongols certainly feel a little bit on the weaker side of the spectrum in 1v1. But in FFA is where Mongols really shine. Um, for example, if somebody gets taken out. You can go to their base and you can basically just farm all their dead buildings. Uh, you lose a battle, you lose an engagement, you can relocate your entire base and flee across the map and come back. And another really, really underrated thing about the Mongols, and I don't know what he's doing with the TC positioning here. Um, I guess he could have gone, yeah, he's got the food up here. I suppose he's just trying to be close to the trees here, I think. But he could have moved the TC right next to the gold to make sure that he was fine. But Mongols, when they build their wonders, if you take a look, their wonders don't require any stone, which means the Mongol players... When everybody else is desperately trading for stone to try and wonder, Mongol players can just pretty much wonder nonstop, assuming they have good trade or other good sources of uh, income, right? It's very powerful. And the last player, but certainly not least, is going to be Dark Hunter Ezra on the Ottomans, going for the twin Minaret Madras here. Axes and Mill, grows berry bushes. Good for early aggression. Um, but yeah, Ottomans are good. I mean, they're very, very powerful. The Ottoman late game military is probably one of the best in the entire game. I mean, I think Ottomans, China would probably be two of the contenders for best late game armies. China, of course, is, you know, has Grenadiers, Fire Lancers, Palace Guard are really good for diving, extreme mobility, really good artillery. Um, but Ottomans just get the huge, just giant erect bombard cannons and they can just do so much nasty work. Like, I, I, who was I playing against? Yeah, it was, it was an FFA game like a week or two ago and it was me, me and Quill were the last people alive. And I was trying to hold the wonder, but he just had this like Ottoman doom stack that was just like kept pushing down my armies over and over. And we would like kill them, but by the time we killed them, we had invested so much in desperately diving them and bled so much attrition that we really paid the price there. So yeah, it should be fun. Let us know your predictions, by the way. Who are you rooting for in chat? Again, we have Dark Hunter, Ezra, Day of Oc, Dandy Dragon, Reba, Sai, Spiegel, Prime. And again, I think this is just ASD in Korean. I am not sure. I have no idea. But, you know, he can be our mysterious champion with a, you know, a shrouded background, maybe a little bit of a moral ambiguity. Who knows? You know, he's a mysterious man. And we will find out today how he plays. So Smeagol, already splitting up his landmarks. Very good play in FFA. In 1v1, it's a little bit riskier because you can lose, you know, a valuable you know, asset landmark and it can be harder to reclaim it. But in FFA games, splitting up your landmarks, especially... When you're playing a sieve like China is very, very smart. And this is also great because it secures a little bit of middle. So you got this, you got this, you got two gold nodes basically within range of the barbecue of the sun. You know, the ones near your base are going to be a little bit... Oh my, oh my god, wait a second, wait a second. What's going on here, guys? Oh god, oh no, look at Smeagol's base already. So Smeagol has an impassable base. Oh, this is such filth. So this entire like point up here is impassable. Like you can't go past any of this. None of this whatsoever. Um, this is also fully blocked as well, unless somebody lumberjacks through. And Spiegel also has a natural mountain range. Oh my god, this is the dirtiest base ever. You could lumberjack through, but Spiegel's going to be able to wall those. All right. Uh, I would probably already put some money on Spiegel for this game, just based on how disgusting his spawn point is. And when he realizes how disgusting it is, um, that is going to be something. Now, this is also just a huge power play as well. Okay, we do have something here that could be very good. Not the Narwhal. Oh my god, thank you for the hundred bucks. Thanks for all the great content over the years. I blame you for getting me started in mini painting. It's so fun. Thanks for all that, and I hope your hand feels better. Thank you, man. I'm working on it. And hey, even if my hand, you know, doesn't get back to normal, I'm going to be able to just cast games. So all is good. Thank you so much, Narwhal. I really, really appreciate it. You are a gem, and uh, thank you for supporting the family. It means a lot. It means a lot, my friend. Uh, up here, we do have another opportunity. This is a great wonder spot, too. So if uh, Green wants to get up here, Sai could place a wonder down right here. Uh, there's no way to get up, and uh, it would have to be like up and around this way. So there's a couple of really, really disgusting wonder points on this map. And again, Narwhal, one last time, thank you so much for that donation. I really appreciate it, brother, and uh, hopefully you enjoy the game. All right, Kashyyyk's coming out. Looks like Dandy Dragon's going to be getting aggressive, which is very weird. Oh my god, Dandy Dragon already pumping out four Lancers, which means heavy feudal aggression, which Mongols isn't a bad idea, because you get resources if you're successful in your feudal, feudal aggression. And it looks like they're going to be going after the Chinese player. Yeah, so a little bit of uh, historical stuff right here. Okay, so we got some historical reenactments as the Mongols raid the Chinese. 
and it looks like the Mongols going to be coming down with the Kashyyyks. The Barbican of the Sun, in this case, not going to be super helpful. It's not, it's securing a choke point, um, but the Chinese base is pretty vulnerable to raiding, and it looks like they're going full greed to Song Dynasty. Uh, as a matter of fact, we don't even have any uh, barracks yet, so there's no reaction to these cavalry, so things are going to get pretty messy indeed. Turn that game sound up so I can hear a little bit as well. So yeah, a couple nasty wonder spots here. Um, Rebus is going to be setting up a bit of a wall off. So we do see an early wall, which is usually indicative of some heavy macroing, right? Just going to be booming and going for multiple TCs and just hoping that the walls will be enough of a deterrent. Um, also, the only water on the entire map does go to Rebus. So Rebus is going to be ahead of some other players for sure if they're the only ones who have access to this water here. Now, the question is, how quickly is Gollum going to be realizing that he has a god tier spot? He'll probably realize pretty quickly. Um, and the aggression over here, we do see the uh, the old raiding from Dandy Dragon. So Dandy Dragon looks like he's going to move in. Yeah, is he going to is he going to push? I don't know. He's got four Kashiks and a Khan. I mean, that's a fair amount of investment early. So if you're not going to do anything with that, no, it looks like maybe just trade. All right, so we could see an early trade economy from Dandy Dragon. The silver tree should be moved up to the Uvu, so you can double produce traders and go hit the middle. Trading early, though, can be a little bit precarious. Uh, you know, Obviously, you're going to put a bit of a target on your back. Sometimes people will come after you. So, yeah, it could be scary. Kashyyyk's and the hardened con. He is not a soft con. He is a hard con. This, no, no flaccid action here with this man. Is there going to be another TC coming? So, looking at Teal's resources. Teal's going for the dreaded triple song, song TC. I don't know why. I have a creeping feeling that this Teal player is pretty good. Um... We'll have to see. Yeah, there's going to be another TC being dropped. Dandy Dragon going all the way to the corner of the map, which is very interesting. And is he going to be able to get through there? Oh, you can get through the tree line. Okay, vulnerability has been discovered. And he's going after Deovok. He literally goes all the way across the map to raid Deovok here. And absolutely brutal raid. I mean, a lot of villagers are going to go down here. Probably at least three. And from there, you know, this building's going to get torched, which is going to be giving bounty. And Deovok is immediately going to be responding with Spearmen. We do see Spearmen coming out. But he does not even have the feudal upgrade yet, so those spearmen are going to be very soft. And overall, uh, they're just gonna they're gonna have pay the troll toll down here, so to say the least. Um, up on the north side of the map, all is calm in the Rus Empire. Rus have a really good wonder spot as well. We do see that they have the trade posts in the corner of the market, preemptively preparing for maybe some very close trade. I mean, you could go to the middle here, but yeah, nasty raid here from Dandy. Coming down, trying to pillage some resources. I wonder if they're going to keep going. We do have the Regnets coming up, so very good play here by Davok. That's a very fast castle. I mean, well, I guess it's about nine minutes, so it's not as fast as I thought. But it's still a pretty quick castle um, compared to a lot of the other players. It is the first castle age in the game. If you're really, really going like turbo fast castle with HRE, you can uh, get the... Oh no, another raid. This is going to be setting the HRE back so hard. These raids and they're just not having any food. Um, we do have the spearmen coming over to protect them now. And the four spearmen should be able to fight off these Kashyyyks. Although with the con and with really good micro, a uh, dandy dragon would be able to come down and probably win that fight. Um, simply because, you know, well, I guess these are Kashyyyks. They're not as tanky as knights, but it is what it is. Looking around the map, all is calm. No other conflict other than the great Khan, Dandy Dragon, just running about and doing some raiding and uh, looking for free resources wherever they can. Is the HRE going to be getting any relics is the question. Um, I don't think so, man. This HRE player is in a really rough spot. We already see a Regnant's Cathedral, right? Which is normally great, but there's one relic nearby. That's it. Only one relic. The other relics are here, 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 and yeah, like over on the other side. Uh, there's a free relic up here for the uh, Chinese player on the north side, but the HRE, if they're lucky, is going to be on just one relic, and that's very unfortunate. HRE is, is a good Civ in FFA, I would say. They are very good at wonder defenses. You build the L's back, and then you surround it with keeps, and L's back palace also reduces the damage, if I'm not mistaken, that they, the wonder takes. So you plop it down, and HRE has emergency repairs. I was actually able to win a game on one of the last streams with HRE because I had emergency repairs, on my wonder and it did a ton of hp so you can see there's some cool tricks hre can do here but looks like the mongols are heading back to their lands a successful raid not too much but they took down some villagers and got a little bit of bouncy i don't know if it justifies the cost but overall we'll see so now trade is coming out mongolian trade is very very good they can of course get trade upgrades later on the stone commerce where they produce 20 percent of stone in their trades uh, which is great you know allows you to spam cannon towers and mongols have gotten this oh man this is a great spot by the way too although the mongols uh, trebuchets might be able to hit a wonder from here i'm not sure the mongols also have a really nice wonder spot this is like natural 
a palisade up in the hills is going to be diminishing pressure. And Mongols got an update recently where their towers can basically be made into the equivalent of stone towers. Wait, wait a second. Wait a second. I got confused. Check this out. So I just looked at the mini map for a second. And I was like, Smeagol, why is there an orange landmark up here? You know? So Smeagol snuck one worker all the way up to size base, like a little gremlin, like a skaven. And he has a landmark in size base and Sai does not even know about this. Oh my god, dude. That is like the trolliest thing I've ever seen. Look at this. This, <laughs> this is so annoying, this type of behavior. And he doesn't even know it's there. I, I really, really, really hope that Smeagol builds a stone wall here and just makes like a mini base up here and like start spamming out rams and different things like that. So, hey, how's it going, Pwn? Hope you're doing well, man. So down to the south, Smeagol with the dreaded uh, proxy landmark in his opponent's base. Looks like he's going to be building multiple TCs to get his economy going. And Smeagol even has a couple lumber. What is he doing? Oh my god. So Smeagol is lumberjacking into the trees. He's got his lumber camp here. He's chopping into the wood line to try and maybe build a landmark back here? I have no idea, dude. The true rat tactics. Yeah, I know. He, he puts all the other gremlins to shame. So HRE, okay, HRE managed to get three relics, very impressive. They must have preemptively had their uh, dudes in position up there in the middle, and I didn't see them because the map's a little bit hard to see kind of certain colors here and there, but yeah, this is uh, this is good. If you get three relics with HRE and Regnets, I would say you're in pretty good shape. Like, you're gonna be feeling good. Up in the north, taking a look at Dark Hunter Ezra. Ezra does have the Mehmed Imperial Armory, which is gonna be making Mangadels right now. Really, really good military school presence, and honestly, is looking pretty good. Um, is on multiple TCs, and typically in FFA games, I would say you usually almost every Civ except Mongols um, and sometimes HRE uh, in Delhi wants to go to TC. It's just very standard. It's very strong, and I'll explain the reasons why the other ones don't necessarily do that. So if you're playing uh, Mongols, sometimes going. Um, going for like heavy trade as opposed to the TC because of the wood cost of the TC being so high. So you can go heavy trade, fast castle, get aggression and you know get bounties for killing people's bases. For HRE, sometimes you want to skip the 2TC and go fast castle to guarantee you get relic control. Because if you go 2TC sometimes and you don't have good, and you lose out on the relics, um, you can straight up lose the game, right? So that's uh, pretty big. And also for Delhi, I think the most effective way to play Delhi hands down in FFA is to basically go fast castle, get a ton of stone, build multiple keeps, secure the relics, and then produce villagers out of your keeps once they get their upgrade. That that's my two cents. Pretty much everybody else is going to be going for um, is going to be going for the other stuff. Hey, sorry to hear that, Pwn man. If you want to uh, hang out and chat afterwards, man, I'll be around. Sorry to hear that, brother. Um, really sorry to hear that. Uh, so the Regnant's Cathedral down here does have the tithe barns. Uh, probably in the works. I would imagine that's going to be down on the uh, on the uh, on the, the spectrum there for those bad boys. No aggression yet. Uh, Abbasid setting up walls here, so we do have the dreaded stone walls. Being, uh, yeah, securing the land certainly very necessary for the Abbasid. Like I said, having only two landmarks, you have to be extra conservative and careful with how you deploy and how you play and all that sort of good stuff. So we will see. Spiegel with the dreaded proxy up here, and it looks like this. okay. Size discovered this. Now, what do you guys think the reaction is going to be? What do you guys think it's going to be? Do you think there's going to be an incursion coming in? Are the Rus going to be unleashing their full fury? I think there's going to be some aggression coming down here from Prime. I think that Prime is going to be... Uh-oh, the Ramsteining, the Duhast! Let's get that going, man. It's, it's time. The uh, battering rams are going to be coming to show the uh, the old uh, medieval Germans their own uh, Ramstein action. That's going to be scary. I mean, Ghulams are pretty damn good. And uh, they, of course, have good stats. And we do have the dreaded crossbowmen with the anti-heavy. HRE isn't defenseless. They have their men-at-arms. They don't have the mace upgrades yet, do they? No, they don't. They really need the mace upgrades to give them the advantage here. And they're going to be trying to take this fight, but I think the Abbasids will probably win this depending on how the micro goes. If the crossbows scoot and shoot and micro properly, they should win it. The Ghulams are going to be able to hold their own. The HRE doesn't really have any advantage yet because they don't have the mace upgrade. Okay, the mace upgrade looks like it just came in. Going to be giving them a bonus for his heavy. They need to garrison in this TC as well. And it looks like it is the case, but the Abbasid are going pedal to the metal, dude. Absolute pedal to the metal. So we do see the battering rams hustling across. And overall, this could be the end of the Holy Roman Empire. He didn't um, put enough respect on the name of his Abbasid neighbor. And Prime is going to be coming in like a wrecking ball, which is a great play. And here's another tip I have for you guys. If you're playing FFA and you're one of the players who spawns where red is, where purple is, where yellow is, or where teal, you're not in a corner 
you almost always want to get aggressive like relatively early and take out one of the people in the corner and then build your imperial age landmark in that corner okay now the abbasid can't do that because they only have two landmarks but that will keep you from being sandwiched and dying also you 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 usually need to be the aggressor so the hre is going to be doing a bit of a desperation hold here building barracks and just fighting under the tc the TC is going to do basically no damage. The Ghulams uh, do have a ranged armor upgrade, two of them as a matter of fact. And this is going to be the end of the road, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to be seeing the fall of the Holy Roman Empire. Uh, don't worry, they'll be back. And uh, that's going to be probably it. Yeah, we got the Regnant's Cathedral over there in the corner, but he's basically dead in the water. The only thing the HRE can really do now is maybe try and migrate and build an Imperial Age landmark somewhere. Um, Davok has no food whatsoever. So I don't think that's going to be happening. It looks like he's really hurting on resources. And it's just setting up barracks here, which isn't going to be able to do too much. Orange on the other side. Smeagol just cackling all the way to the bank. And look at that. The Spaskaya Tower. <laughs> okay. So the reason why Spaskaya Tower is going down here is to play the wonder later. Obviously, Green, Sai knows that this is a good wonder spot. So it's going to be setting this up to prepare for later. Whoa, low, low attempts. It looks like the priest tried to shout some things about the Bible, but the old... Uh, Ulams did not care to hear it, and they are going to be taking these bad boys down. And it looks like the first champion in today's game is going to be falling. It was not a bad start for the HRE. I mean, securing four relics, but you, like, yeah, man, yeah, just the lack of information as to what his opponent was doing ended up costing him the game. And honestly, Abbasids are really hard to stop. Once they get their food eco going, they get a couple Golden Ages rocking it. Let's see what his Golden Age looks like right now. Are we able to see this? Yeah, we can uh, click here. Currently in Golden Age 1, um, probably will be reaching too soon. He's at 19. On the other side, Spiegel looks like he's like poking in there, but not looking to, you know, go all out in war. Just a couple crossbows kind of hanging down there. Spaskaya Palace is going to be clearing these out, and it uh, looks like there's going to be a town center getting plopped down here as well, as the Imperial Academy will be falling shortly. No other heavy duty fighting, though, mostly just skirmishes and small border conflicts and all this kind of stuff like that, so. Yep, looks like the HRE is toast though, and this is a huge win for the Abbasid. If the Abbasid, unfortunately that bug is probably still in play, where if the uh, HRE player leaves the game before the Regnant's Cathedral is destroyed, it will probably trap the relics in there, so could be a little bit problematic, but even still, um, Prime should go over there and uh, yeah, try and get these relics, because Abbasid you know, do have good trading infrastructure, they can get good trade with the trade wing and all those sweet upgrades here. They can get trade and trade chips return to secondary resource. They can get armor to make their traders more durable. And the Spice Roads increases the gold uh, by 30%. So yeah, Abbasid trade is really, really top tier. But if you can get the relics, that's really going to be securing you quite a bit. And uh, Deavok, I think, is just toast. Um, if you wanted to be really scrappy, Deavok could try and pull some relics, or not relics, but villagers, and repair these landmarks in a bit of desperation. But I think just going out on your shield at this point probably is going to be your best bet. Um, Deavok doesn't really look to have too much. And from here, this would be a good wonder spot for the Abbasid later in the game. We'll have to see how this happens, so. We will have to see. Somebody in chat asking, what's my favorite Loyalist Space Brain chapter? I don't know. I you know, I really do like the Salamanders. I think Salamanders are really cool. Like I like how they're more empathetic and altruistic and you know, that kind of stuff. It brings a little humanity to the Space Brains, which I find interesting. Um Alright, so first player has fallen here, and we do see old Davok has paid the troll toll. GG well played. Davok, of course, has been playing Dune Spice Wars on our streams. Very cool to see them in action here as well. A man of many talents, for sure. Spiegel's Imperial Academy is going to be falling, but overall, Spiegel looks to be in good shape, setting up keeps in the hills to secure these nasty choke points. Precious and getting the stone outcroppings all is well in the lands. Huge stone walls going down from our Korean champion in the middle of the map. So going to be getting a big, big secure on this trade post here, which is very strong because from there, you set up markets like probably down here, we're like right here in this like choke point and you're going to be able to get probably trade for like 70 or 80 different things like that and uh, have a good old time. Over on the other side, we do see the Ghulams now looking to go to battle with Smeagol. I wouldn't be surprised to see this. Prime just absolutely steamrolled there and now is going to be getting all these relics I would imagine. But yeah, this would be a good idea. It seems like the Abbasid have a really good eco. I mean, look at the food economy, almost 3000 food a minute. Nuts. And their gold isn't amazing, but it's good enough to support like a standard conflict. So I would like to see the Abbasid go hard in the paint and try and take out Smeagol. Smeagol is not a neighbor that you want to have, and you also don't want to be suffering, um, you know, late game China. Like, if you can get China before they get Imperial, then you're, like, in good shape. That's going to be very, very good. Looks like Prime is heading up to the Imperial Age as well as we look on the other side. Uh, no conflicts. Dandy Dragon just kind of doing its thing. Um, although in the middle, okay, a little bit of a skirmish over resources. We do see purple Dark Hunter Ezra. Ezra is very tyrannical in FFA. 
Like, there's people who are very good, but they don't necessarily play like a Tyrant playstyle. Like, I would say Spiegel is one of the best FFA players in our community, but he doesn't play like a Tyrant. The way he plays is more scheming and cunning and like just long-term plans. But Ezra is also one of our top players in our FFA community, but he plays like a Tyrant. He plays like a bully. Like, there's different playstyles for sure. I would say I probably lean more into the bully side of things, where I pretty much always go after one of my neighbors early and like that kind of like castle age aggression. But um, yeah, it's really cool to see our community grow and see all the unique play styles that develop, right? And these personalities, and some people are defensive wonder players. Um, some people like to really focus on trade. It's very fun for sure. It's very fun. And by the way, shout out to Davok, our HRE player, because he didn't leave the game. Um, he stayed in the game to make sure that the HRE landmark didn't get bugged, most likely. Oh, look at the Chinese player coming in. He noticed it, and the Chinese player comes in and jacks two of the relics. Oh, that's so troll. Guys, we got a foot race. We need the cinematic camera. Where is it? Oh, well, screw it. It's too late. These guys are moving in. We got the Imam and the Monk rushing for the last relic. Big plays. Uh-oh. Is he not going to grab it? The Chinese player is going to get it. Oh, my God. He missed it. He fumbled the football, ladies and gentlemen. He fumbled the football. Oh, that hurts. Poor Prime. He worked super hard to take down the HRE player, right? And then the HRE player just, you know, the Chinese player comes in and ends up getting the relics. Look at this. Spear away for Smeagol. Oh, Spiegel might know that he's in trouble here, guys. And look at that. He's already relocating. He's such a goblin, dude. He's such a goblin. So Kironimus says, I'm new to Age of Empires, but it looks like nothing happens as much in Age 1 or 2. So the thing that is Kironimus, uh, in 1v1 games, a ton happens in Age 2. But in FFA, it's more of a long-form game format where you build, you want to build up an empire. It's, it's very different. <laughs> what a steal by Teal, I know. This, uh, this Korean gentleman is no joke, dude. Oh god, he's massing Fire Lancers! Oh, some bases are gonna die. Smeagol could be in big trouble, though. Like, uh, the Chinese defenders are here, but they're looking a little bit, like, I don't know, like, they don't have a whole lot. You have that keep up, and man, this Abbasid player, Prime is very aggressive. I love, I love Prime's playstyle. I love that, like, Castle Age aggression. It's really fun. It, it's, uh, it's, it's, it definitely is, like, a good counterbalance to people who like to turtle, so. Here it comes, big aggression from the crossbows, and Spiegel's probably going to be able to hold this. As long as Spiegel micros well and protects his nest of bees, he's going to crush these crossbows, and you can immediately see the crossbows are paying the troll toll going down pretty quickly. But is Prime going to be continuing? He does have all of his ghouloms and crossbows. And the Chinese player here, uh, looking very scary. I mean, guys, this Chinese economy is going to be nasty. He's got the granaries pretty much fully operational. He just stole a bunch of relics. Smeagol setting up the spirit way in the corner is one of my favorite things ever. Knowing that he's in a little bit of danger. Like, because he could lose his fight. Prime is clearly a very good player. Uh, so it, it's kind of confusing, right? Those Ghulams, their shields look like they're the same color as Smeagol's army. It's a, it's a little bit weird. I think Fire Lancer massing is one of my favorite things ever for China. It's so funny when it works. When you just see them rush in and like... I've been on the receiving end of mass, receiving end of mass fire lancers many times, and that sheer feeling of like panic when they arrive in your base and you're not prepared, and the like adrenaline rush of having to deal with it is super fun. It, it, it's very very good. All right, so big FFA pressure coming in. Yes, yes. Sacred site in the middle being taken. How many sacred sites do we have? Is this a single sacred site? No, it's not. It looks like yellow has the other one, and the sacred site is going to be taken by yellow as well. Uh, Rebus just trading. So Rebus just kind of trading in the middle a little bit. We'll, we'll catch up on the players we haven't seen in action too much. Um, it looks like, oh god. Oh, Ezra creating a border skirmish with the Roos. Oh, this is going to be Gotham's reckoning, guys. Ezra's going to come in like Bane and Batman and just drop him over his knee, dude. Oh no, this Roos, Roos player is not prepared. He's got like a couple Streltsy and Horsemen and then like I just see a great Bombards, Artillery, Sipahi, Janissaries. That's going to be nasty. So big pressure and Ramstein coming in as well. And so far Smeagol's holding pretty well. I mean Smeagol is a very scrappy player. Probably, I would say, I would say, I don't know. How does Smeagol play in 1v1s? And for any of you guys who hang out in our Discord, has he ever gotten Conqueror before? I would wager he is. Like if Smeagol applied himself to the same degree which he does to multiplayer, I would say he's a Conqueror level player. At least Conqueror 1 or, you know, uh, some, somewhere in that ballpark. But yeah, he's, he's, he's pretty scrappy. Um, down here we do see the second uh, base for Smeagol being set up. Spirit Way is here. And China is now Imperial Age, but so too are the Abbasid. It looks like the Abbasid are being pushed back a little bit. Smeagol might find a way to get some momentum here. The Abbasid need to consolidate their forces and get some big momentum in uh, before they uh, get that pushing going. But yeah, the Reckoning is about to happen. Oh my god, this is so hard to deal with. Yeah, he's Conqueror. Makes sense. I would have suspected as much. 
just seeing him play. And I played against him a lot, and it's always very... It feels like you're playing a high-level player, so... All right. So where are the Fire Lancer raids going to go? Do we see them in action? I'm looking around. I really don't want to miss it. Nope. Looks like he's just kind of chilling out. You know, I can respect his play style. He's resting his hands. He's taking it easy. And he's just going to Fire Lancer. Probably red. Red is the most vulnerable. He's a Bassid, so you just need to kill two landmarks with your Fire Lancers. And, uh, you know, you can you can end the game pretty, uh, pretty brutally here. Dude, Prime... Look at this, guys. Prime is basically treating Smeagol like he's a wonder. He is like setting up forward infrastructure. He's building like artillery in the front. <laughs> He's spamming rams. Smeagol is being treated as a wonder, which I love. But nonetheless, yeah, Smeagol does have a dead base down here and people aren't really gonna suspect this, which I think is good. I think this is quite good indeed. Over to the east side, we do have big raiding coming. A dandy dragon looking like he might wanna move in and fight the Chinese player, which wouldn't be a bad idea. He'd definitely win. Fire Lancers aren't that good in straight up fighting and the Fully upgraded Kashyyyk's going to be quite good. Yep, Dandy Dragon's going to be moving, but this could unleash the fury of China. China's been kind of like a crouching tiger hidden dragon over here, but, um, you know, the thing is, is if the Mongols attack, China could exact some serious vengeance, depending on how good his micro is. We'll have to see. Yeah, the Fire Lancers... Oh, man. Dandy Dragon just unknowingly saved Prime. The Fire Lancers were about to move out in big numbers over to Prime's base, but now uh, he's responding to the threat on his other wall here. So he sees that the Mongols are looking to push... And, uh, yeah, it's getting real crazy. In the meantime, Dark Hunter Ezra just doing nasty, nasty Ottoman pushing. And the thing is, like, you, the, unless you have culverins, you can't really deal with Great Bombards. Like, Great Bombards just one-shot Springalds. You, when I was playing against Quill in that 1v1 FFA match, um, I needed, like, eight or nine Springalds to effectively get through them. And maybe if the Roost have the range upgrade from the High Armory, but they went Spaskaya, so I, I don't see that happening. Yeah, I don't see that happening at all. Smeagol getting pushed once again, man. The Ambassador, just relentless here. They're pushing in just to the nail to take down old Smeagol. But, you know, Smeagol's prepared for this. He's got landmarks all over the map, and uh, he will recover. I mean, Smeagol can definitely recover down here. He's going to be able to get a lot of villagers going. But it looks like the uh, Wonder Defense, uh, Smeagol being the Wonder, is not going super well. Villagers being pulled, and we do see the Culverin is now in place to snipe the Chinese artillery. And, yeah, Ambassador insane. Once they get that momentum, that forward momentum of pushing... It's so brutal to stop. So we do see a, a villager dive, which is going to be basically just mass casualties. I don't think they're going to get anything. Looks like they're going after Rams. And I'm pretty convinced Smeagol has lost his fight. Um, he's going to be getting pushed by Prime here. Prime showing one of the big strengths of Abbasid, right? Which is uh, their pushing power. Abbasid have crazy castle age pushing power. Ghulams are just super good. They have field artillery that they can do right away. So they can build Rams in the front lines if they want to. They can also build Mangonels and Springalds. Uh, and their food production is just nuts. Like, Prime, I guarantee you, is crushing everybody on food. He's currently getting 3,600 food. There's no way. Like, he can just keep making units, like, so fast. Whereas if you look at Smeagol, Smeagol is currently getting 2,100. But that's massively dwarfed by the power of uh, Prime here. So Smeagol's only landmark is going to be him in the corner here. Look at that. Smeagol already knows he's losing this and is preparing. It's time, dude. It's time. So it looks like the Korean player has gotten all of his palace guard out, and they're going to be swarming it immediately. Look at that. Danny Dragon is running for the hills. He's like, screw this shit. I'm going home, dude. Where are the Fire Lancers, though? Did he delete the Fire Lancers? I hope he didn't. I want, I want the Fire Lancers. Give it to me, precious. Uh, we could see the Chinese now go up and take down the Mongols. Maybe. The Mongol player, Danny Dragon, um, doesn't appear to have any good trade, really. Just like gold nodes. So isn't really future-proofed for conflict. Over here, it looks like it's a complete disaster. Spiegel's base just in absolute shambles, ladies and gentlemen. Absolute shambles. Maybe one day I can play a Bassets. Dude, Prime is making a Bassets look like a terror. Like, Spiegel didn't fight anyone, right? But Prime took down the HRE, and then, despite all that, he still came over here and was able to take down Spiegel's base as well, which is brutal. And he's going to steamroll the hell out of this base as well. It's true, Pwn. 1v1 team games aren't, aren't as fun. I'm definitely craving some, some... I really want to play tonight, but my hands are messed up. But I, I want to play Spice Wars, too. I've, I've got the itch. Yeah, this is crazy. And over here, we do see the Roost valiantly holding. I, I love this by Sai. Sai is a very solid player as well, but you're playing, like, a fully erect Ottoman Bombard stack that is just going to keep getting worse and worse. And uh, I think it's one of the most disgusting comps in the game in terms of 1v1, like, duels, is great Bombards with Janissaries protecting and repairing them. And then, like, okay, how do you kill artillery outside of anti-artillery artillery? artillery? You dive it with cavalry. Well, Janissaries just dunk on cavalry. Like, they do a ton of damage. So if you have Spears, Janissaries, Great Bombards, it's just, like, such a brutal army comp. Although Ezra isn't macroing super hard here. I don't know where he should be having more units here for sure. But 
Even still, a uh, nice defense here by Sai, but he's losing his base to the Ram. So even though he's like moving forward and, and doing a good job, uh, you know, holding to the best of his abilities, um, the Rams are still getting deeper and deeper in his base, and he is going to be paying the troll toll. Now, uh, the Chinese player here, just with a fair amount of artillery, looks like they're just going to be playing kind of defensively, Dandy Dragon reaching the Imperial Age. But so far, this has been a really good game so far. We've had some good battles, and it's certainly very good to... Um, it's very good to get a different perspective than just watching me play too i think it's cool to see what's going on and like the big like sneaky plays like these are things that we would totally miss if i'd been playing in this game right i mean they're both fun i think it's both fun both perspectives all right so a little bit of dueling going down here what the hell the other abbasid players coming in to pile in on spiegel <laughs> oh the other abbasid player killed spiegel's landmark and this is a bit of a problem your reputation can follow you you know like once you get perceived as like a big threat and you're one of the biggest threats in the community, people will often go after you, you know, and you can you can pay the price. Um, you know, we had FFA tournaments a couple months ago. I can't remember when, but we had, like, some pro players join. And, uh, you know, like, people who are legitimate 1v1, like, pro Age of Empires players, like, really high-level guys. And they would get super salty when they would get 2v1 or 3v1 in an FFA game when they're, like, super far ahead of everybody out macroing them. Like, oh, my God, you guys are just targeting the pros. Tar well, yeah, no shit, of course. Like, you're a huge threat. Like, that's how it works. It's like in Commander and Magic the Gathering, you're not going to, like, when a guy is, like, massively ahead of everyone, you're not going to just, like, leave him alone. You know, it's, uh, it's, just, it's just how it goes. All right. So, Smeagol in the bottom corner. Uh, looks like he's going to get back online. He'll be back, and I would imagine he'll probably go Fire Lancer Cheese. Yep, yep. Smeagol's Vengeance is here, guys. He's going to be going for the Fire Lancers. I love it. I love it. It's just the, the haggard desperation plays is so funny. He's going to need to get his farm set up, and he does have a granary down here, so he's going to get his janky economy going. Meanwhile, the Bruce player up in the top is going to be falling, and that is going to be it. So we do have the Elite Janissaries. Yeah, when we had the um, when we had the tournaments, though, the pro players were the biggest divas. They were just such divas. Like, I would get personal DMs afterwards of, like from a couple of them being like, oh, I was being like focused in these games, and it's not fair. And um, Yeah, no, there's some fun pros for sure, but then there was, there was some salty ones. <laughs> 100%. To be fair, though, when you're like a high-level, quote-unquote, pro gamer, losing is not something that they take very well, a lot of them, in my experience. All right. So heading to the other corner here, we do got Rams going after the farms, just crushing the last of Smeagol's base. Landmarks are going to be uprooted. Smeagol does have his pagoda in the corner, and, like, he's hiding all of his villagers. God, he is such a goblin, the way he plays. He's just such an absolute goblin. Um, so granaries, yep, everything's looking fine here. And to the other side, it looks like, uh, yeah, this Chinese player just chilling. Oh, is this the Great Wall? Look at this. What is he doing? So the Chinese player, oh, this is really interesting. So check this out. He's building, like, gatehouses progressively to the Mongol base, okay? And what he probably does with this, I would wager, is he takes his hand cannoneers and he moves them up on top and has, like, mini gunning posts, which is really cool. T-Rex push-ups, dude. Hope the push-ups are going well for the mighty T-Rex arms. Thank you for the hundred. All glory to the rats gnawing at the ankles of the giants. All day, every day, man. Yeah, FFA is a great equalizer for sure. Typically, the best players will win, but it gives chances for people like... I've seen FFA games in which there's been like, let's say, maybe four or five Conqueror players, and there's been... I've seen a Platinum player and Diamond player win um, just by... Maybe they can't micro as well or macro as well, but their decision-making can win them games too, which is really, really cool. That's why I think it's such a fun format. Typically, the Conqueror players will still win, you know, 80-90% of the time, but um, it's cool to have that variance for sure. All right. So the battle is on, ladies and gentlemen, and look at around here. We have the Rams pushing in. spiegel has been discovered. Oh, my God, dude. Look at this. Look at the Rams moving in. Oh, no. There's no hiding for this man. He's trapped. Smeagol is being uprooted like the gremlin he is. And I would wager that Red is going to be coming in for the killing blow. But look, Spiegel, Spiegel uh, is going to come repair his landmarks now. He's so annoying, dude. But Yellow is clearing him out too, dude. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> the Bastard dynasties are just hunting him down. Yeah, so Red's coming in and torching his bases. And um, it looks like he's going to be in a little bit of danger here. Uh, the Roos on the top, as expected, just completely steamrolled by Ezra. Uh, but the Chad Sky of Palace up in the hills. Oh, he doesn't know it's there. So looking at Ezra's vision, does he not know? Oh, he didn't scout that. Oh, man. That's big. Oh, okay, maybe he's going to discover it if he gets a little bit closer and then the Chad Sky shoots him. But Ezra doesn't actually know that the Roos have this up here, I don't think. Wow, okay. That's actually something to keep notes of. So the Roos player might end up living here. We'll have to see. 
We will have to see. Moving across, we got camel riders and spears and all of them hunting down the last of Smeagol's rat base. And in the corner, looks like he is pretty much just on fire here as the rams of the Abbasid search for blood. And yeah, this is this is what you need to do, man. What you need to do. You basically just need to hunt these bad boys down and uh, make sure they don't come back to bite you later on. Those rats will come back and they'll come in in greater numbers. Okay. They discovered it. They got through the walls and the Spaskaya Palace or power, tower, tower power is going to be going down. GG well played, Sai. Played a good game, but he had a very tough neighbor and it looks like nobody was really attacking him, honestly. It looks like Ezra wasn't in any other conflicts, so he was able to cackle pretty hard. But talk about, talk about China. Like, the Mongols literally roll up. They're like, okay, I'm just going to shoot one stone wall down. And then China just comes in like the fury, the fury of a thousand nations and just like starts like rapidly expanding and keep pushing them and all that sorts of stuff like this. That's just wild, dude. Absolutely wild. Smeagol's going to be alive, though, I think barely. Does he have any landmarks being rebuilt? Oh, <laughs> look at that. Oh, Smeagol's last stand in the corner. All of his villagers have been caught. I think people are like learning his playstyle. They're learning like to think like him, right? They, they would know where he's hiding his, his rat landmarks. To be completely honest, I thought Smeagol was going to come back. I thought he would survive in this corner, but it looks like Red scouted him and uh, ended up hunting him down here. So, uh, where's... Oh, he's got his Imperial Palace here. It looks like Yellow does not see this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> look guys, look, the one spot Yellow hasn't scouted. The Imperial Palace. Oh my god, that's so funny. Smeagol currently sitting on 51 villagers, which he has hiding behind the walls, but they're about to get massacred, so... Yeah, that's 34 of them. Um, I believe there's still some villagers running around the map somewhere. He still has, still has a bit lurking. So what are the Ottomans going to be doing? It looks like they're walling something here. Yeah, the Ottomans are creating a great wall. Okay. I think they're going to... Uh, they don't have enough space. They could play Wonder up here. Yeah, they could destroy all these buildings and play Wonder. For sure. I love how Smeagol just has like a random ass landmark down here. He has the Imperial Academy just like AFK up in the uh, top here. Dandy Dragon's base here. Looking to be in trouble. Mongols are going to pack up their shit and probably move, I would wager. Is this their main TC? Uh, they do have the step read out there, so they should be okay to escape. But overall, it looks like the Chinese player uh, has been able to overwhelm them. Dandy Dragon obviously wanted a Mongolian uh, corner wonder, so you can see all these nasty towers. And This is one of the best defenses you can do for sure. Towers, and then you spam spring alts in the towers, and it becomes an incredibly, incredibly tough position to push for sure. All right, looking around to the south side of the map, Smeagol's base continuing to be demolished. Uh, he still does have his last landmark, but I think it's been discovered. Oh, he's trying to repair the barbecue under the sun. He's got his villagers repairing the barbecue. And is the Imperial Palace going to be caught? No, it looks like the Imperial Palace is still there. Smeagol is so scrappy, dude. He's so scrappy. And there there might come a time where, you know, the other players get sick of hunting him and they start fighting one another and then he can come back, right? Which I think wouldn't be, uh, you know, beyond the realm of possibility. We'll have to see. Yeah, Rebus has been chilling for sure. He's got a nice economy going. He's got a good player score. Currently, his trading is not very good, though. He's only getting 21 per trade route, so it's a very short trade. Might not even be worth it at this point. Hard to say. Um, now, the next question is, what is Ezra going to do? Ez okay, Ezra is going to come steamroll the Mongols, which makes sense. You don't want Mongols setting up in your back, the back of your base and, you know, trolling you once you go wander. Like, you need to take those bad boys down for sure. So they're moving to the south side. Over to the west, we do see the Rams moving, and Smeagol does get his barbecue of the sun back up. Now, he does have his landmark here. Pretty much completely eviscerated in the corner. Oh my god, he's such a goblin, dude! He's such a goblin! Look at this! Still repairing landmarks. And why, now, why why is this happening? Why is Teal not taking these sacred sites from Red? It's very strange. I guess he's just super focused on killing the Mongols in the corner. Mongols, of course, have set up a pretty decent little Helm's Deep in the corner of the map. The White Stupa could be repaired. Um, any other landmarks that could be repaired? Honestly, the Mongolian economy is still more or less online. A lot of sheep, a lot of gold income. Might be able to build enough of a military to kind of hang in there. So, No more wood left. Smeagol's out of wood, and the Rams have discovered his landmark here. Uh, he does have his Imperial Palace, and the Barbecue of the Sun probably going to be demolished again. It is. So he's just hanging on, um, just barely hanging on. Smeagol's going to need to get some wood if he can, or else he's not going to be able to repair these landmarks and different things like that. So what is Dandy up to? Dandy Dragon is uh, still alive in the corner. The Chinese push is certainly gaining momentum. But the Kashyyyks, the elite Kashyyyks, I do not believe they have the biology upgrade, but even still, they should be able to fight off these rams since they do do a bonus to the rams. Dandy Dragon pushing back as well. So here they come. And uh, they're, they're poking away at the siege workshops and might be able to even make their way to the keep. Are we going to see the Fire Lancer cheese? Uh, where's the Chinese army? What are they even doing? The Chinese player, I think, is so heavy in eco that he doesn't have much of an army. Let's see. 
Yeah, why is why is he not maxed out on army? Like, there's no excuse for that. Um, unless he's purposely trying to build up trading. Because Dandy's going to be able to push him back here if he doesn't build up me. Okay, okay, this is why. Sai is playing some really big politics in chat. Okay, I like that. I respect that. There you go. Cool. Well, Sai's out of the game now. So typically, we don't... Um, when somebody dies, it's not like we, we, we should have a rule against it where you can't if you're out of the game You can't give info on the map if you're spectating afterwards. Hopefully that's not the case right now um, But nonetheless, yeah, this is what's going on So I was wondering why China stopped suddenly going after the Mongols and it's because there's just a massive erect Ottoman army coming down here. We got three great bombards. Look how like glorious that army looks You got the Janissary spears and then the the Metters in the back Beating the drums clearing out the Chinese walls taking map control Brutal, brutal stuff. Um, I'm surprised Ezra didn't go kill the Abbasid here. I thought that would be kind of his next game plan, but it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. Rebus was dead silent. Nobody knew what he was up to. Oh, oh, he's being an in-game correspondent. Great, thank you. So yeah, Sai, you can let 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 us know some politics. If uh, anything does end up coming up here, that would be great. Yeah, so China is certainly sweating bullets here, getting ready to meet them in battle. But like this Ottoman Doomstack is just going to be brutal. Nice micro though. He trades the Spring Alt for a great bombard, which is good. Yeah, okay, good micro here by our uh, by our mighty Chinese player. He's scooting and shooting with the Spring Alds and trading one for one, which is extremely cost effective. And aside from that, the Chinese army should be pretty good. Palace Guard and uh, Palace Guard will do okay. And, and of course, there's the other guns as well. Good micro. He takes down all the Ottoman Great Bombards. There's one left. The Janissaries need to repair those things. And yeah, really, really good control by our uh, Chinese player here. Great micro. And now he's going to be able to fight size or not size army, but um, Ezra's army for sure. I mean, Ezra might still win this battle, but without the Great Bombards... There's not going to be a ton of momentum, right? Nothing too crazy is going to go down. Spring Alds look like they're pretty much being canned here. And yeah, relatively even trade between those two players. Now, who is going to be the Kingmaker, guys? Who is going to be the Kingmaker? It's going to be perhaps the dreaded Dandy Dragon. Dandy Dragon could start ramming into the Chinese base, and then that would give Ezra a huge, huge leg up on the uh, Chinese. We'll have to see. Smeagol is somehow still in this game, which is just, just nuts. He's still alive. Like... The fact that they didn't discover the Imperial Palace is obviously why he's alive. It's funny, the little things, right? This landmark in the corner is Toast, and uh, Smeagol's just going to be trying to get his economy back online. We do see the red player, Prime, looking around, uh, probably trying to set up towers to make sure Smeagol doesn't rebuild. Yep, that looks like it's going to be the case. Smeagol building houses in the corner. Absolutely hilarious. He's desperately trying to root him out. He's desperately trying to root him out right now. TC being rebuilt, just pure memes, dude. Pure memes. Yeah, most of the corner players have been squished, which is good. You should kill the corner players first. They have the biggest chance of winning with Wonder, so you need to you need to make them pay the price. Dandy Dragon didn't hear no bell. He's got Rams moving into the Chinese base, but here we do have the Elite Palace Guard going to be moving out. And I wonder what Dark Hunter Ezra is going to be doing here. Where is he going to go? There's threats from a multitude of directions. Red needs to find a way to get some trade, because Red's going to run out of gold. Yep, see, Red's already out of gold, guys. It's brutal. Um, there are several gold nodes over here. I think there might be some left in the middle of the map. Not much. Yeah, Red needs to get some trade online. And, like, it's very possible. If Red sets up trade in the, the corner of Smeagol's base and just trades across to the middle here, like, knocks down this wall, that's money. Okay, Red is trading, but it's only 38 gold. The trade route isn't amazing. It, it's not, like, terrible or useless, but it's, it's certainly not good. Smeagol's villagers being hunted by Prime. Prime really making sure Smeagol doesn't come back. Trying his best to, at least. You never know. You can only keep the Smeagol down for so long. Oh my god, look at this goblin, dude. He got he got his landmark back up here, the Imperial Academy. And he's building houses here and a market. <laughs> he's such a rat, dude. Oh, he's such a rat. I love it. So Dandy Dragon's looking a little bit beat up here. He does have his Kashyyyk army. Kashyyyks will normally trade very well into the Palace Guard type unit. It's not very well, but good enough. Um, but they're not fully upgraded. Yeah, he he's doesn't have the max range upgrades, nor does he have the bloodlines upgrade. And it looks like he's going to be running into the Chinese base and trying to get some raiding. Takes down quite a few villagers right there. And now he's going to be moving through the wall and uh, getting a raid into the Chinese lands. China trading, but it's not a crazy trade route. It's only 60 round trip, which is okay. It's, it's passable. You know, it's not like the dreaded, you know, 10, 10, 15, 20, something like that. But yeah, whenever I watch Spiegel play, I feel like I'm watching one of those like Discovery Channel, like animal documentaries. You know, you'll see like some really small animal in the wild, like fighting a huge predator, but like just scrapping tooth and nail to live and it just gets away and it's like, holy shit, that animal is metal as hell. It's kind of like that with him, I would say. Um, and I think Red might know where this, yep, Red sees the landmark. He sees it. Um, th yeah, he's building towers. Oh my God, Spiegel's building the Great Wall Gatehouse with only two villagers though. He's going to get it. You know why? Because he has the Imperial Academy repaired. Dude, 
He is trolling so hard right now. Only politics I can give you now is that I left the game in a non-aggression between Dandy and Ezra. Dandy trying to rally troops against China. Smeagol quiet and playing possum. Yeah. Dear God, dude. Oh, look at this. Trade disruption going down. The Mongols trying to disrupt uh, trade from both Red as well as the Chinese. wonder if anybody's getting close to a wonder situation. I feel as if the Ottomans... Let's see what his bank looks like. Ezra's gold bank sucks. Yeah, he doesn't have any sort of trade, which is interesting. Ottomans usually a pretty powerhouse in the trade department. Why is he letting the Mongols live here too? Hmm. Dandy and Ezra's pact screwed me, so they can... <laughs> they had a pact? I don't think they've had a pact forever, though. I, the pact is a recent thing from... But I can tell. Yeah, I mean, he's knocking down some of these uh, these pastures here. China's definitely scary, though. They have good trade. Um, meanwhile, on the other side, we do have Prime setting up shop. Prime looking pretty good. Looking Prime, as you could say. Trading, getting 50 gold a pop. So it looks like the trade routes have been solidified a little bit. So uh, maybe they're going cross-map now. Smeagol is destroyed. Oh, somebody got his landmark over here. Okay. So somebody killed Smeagol's landmark there. Interesting. Oh, it must not have been fully repaired. He didn't fully rebuild his top landmark. Oh, no. That's what it was. Okay. Wild stuff. Yellow looks like he's going to be marching to war against Ezra. And Yellow's relatively strong. He's got a big military. But the question is, is he going to be able to macro? He needs to get trade going. Looks like he's taking some resources on the south side, some tree lines. And the sacred site, probably going to be decapped. But Ezra's going to come over. No, Ezra's busy fighting the Chinese. So it looks like Rebus might be the great equalizer to make it more of a fair situation so it's not so much of a, you know, a 2v1 on the other side. Or maybe he just wants to secure his trade. Who knows? Who knows? So in the top, Dandy Dragon. Yep, Dandy Dragon has the upgrade, ladies and gentlemen. So the Mongols now basically have the equivalent of Stone Towers. But the thing they don't have is enough resources to probably wonder. I can see the Mongols pulling out a wonder victory at some point. I think it could happen. I think it could happen. Depending on how the dynamics of this game go. Dark Hunter Ezra going to be moving across. I think if you're Ezra, you let you let the Chinese and the Mongols fight. You tell Dandy Dragon, hey, I'm on your side. I'm not going to attack you. So then Dandy Dragon will just keep suffering and fighting against against the uh, the Chinese here, right? And then you use that time to try and take war to the Ottomans, or excuse me, to the Abbasid, who only have two landmarks. So you can just snipe them out pretty quickly, right? Like the landmarks are here and here. They're not like... If you get in there, you can give him the business. And it looks like Ezra is going to be doing just that. Um, he sets up shop, he's moving across, and it is going to be time. So we got the Great Bombards, the Janissaries here. Obviously, we have our Abbasid player who's going to be trying to secure trade. Pretty good trade now. It's a 100 round trip, and it also is returning wood, which is very useful. Uh, Prime's gold economy, not terrible. He does have really good food, though. My goodness, that food is serious. And Ezra is about to unleash just, just the pure, pure brutal warfare here. You could see he's setting up his economy, and not his economy, but his military production. He did forget to get the Master Smiths. A couple artillery pieces going to pay the troll toll. And Rebus, um, I don't know where Rebus's army is. Looks like it was to the south and is going to be heading up this way, this way as well. Rebus played the noob card in the pregame lobby, so everyone let him be. Nice, clever. I like that, you know. You got to use whatever advantages you can. And uh, that is one of them, I suppose. So now, th this is working out basically just how we articulated, right? We see the Chinese and the Mongols having pretty much a, you know, blood feud here, a bit of a stalemate of sorts. The China could probably win the fight if they went all in. Um, the Ambassador happily trading here, the Chinese happily trading. The tra Chinese trader, not quite as good, but they do still have gold nodes, so they're not like really struggling as much there as well. Sacred Sites, pretty well distributed. Red has one, purple has the other, and this one um, probably should be taken by the Chinese if you want to get those free resources. And now we've got a big fight. You're going to learn the power of Great Bombards and Janissary combo, unless the Mangonels can get in and kill the big blobs of Janissaries. So the fighting is on. Great Bombards need to start sniping the Mangonels. Oh, big mango shots, big damage, but Ezra does split up. And it is some heavy duty fighting, ladies and gentlemen. His handgunners on both sides going at it. Janissaries, of course, do a little bit less damage overall, but do get that bonus for his cavalry, which makes them slightly different. Mangonels allowing, uh, being allowed to fire for a lot of the fight do kind of equalize the fight a little bit, but the Ottoman steamroller ends up prevailing. Great Bombards basically are just so freakishly powerful. The fact that they one-shot one shot enemy artillery is just so nasty. Uh, culverins, culverins, culverins is definitely one of the best answers you have against those bad boys. So overall, a pretty attrition heavy fight. Both sides took heavy casualties, and now we're going to be testing the, yep, culverins. So how good is the micro of Rebus going to be? This is it, because the culverins should win the fight. If you have like three or four culverins, you could just annihilate Great Bombards. They have better range, and they just like take them apart pretty quickly. So yeah, we'll see how the micro is for these mighty players. 
So Purple is pushing in with the Sipa Heat. He's got the big supply lines. I played against Ezra many times and had many horrific wars of attrition, so I am certainly uh, used to the play style of that. Janissaries and Archers getting in position. Janissaries tearing apart the Cavalry. Great Bombard's pulling back right now. Ezra going to be moving in, and the Culverins, yeah, you can see they just dunk on those Bombard Cannons. And they also are tanky enough to survive a shot from a Great Bombard, and boom. Both Great Bombards are gone, but Culverins are really expensive. You need to get them back. You need to sacrifice your army to protect these Culverins. If those Culverins go down, it's going to just give up a ton of agency in terms of the artillery duel, right? Also, the trade is being diminished a little bit. Culverins need to keep running. And typically, if you have Culverins, you're going to want to have some repairs with them as well. Uh, what are the Mongols up to? I think the Mongols are just going to try and corner Wonder here, guys. Looking at Dandy Dragon's resources, he is nowhere near it. He's very poor. I guess he's been having to fight the Chinese perpetually, so that's going to slow him down. But it looks like we could have a horrific war of attrition going down here. So there they go. And uh, yeah, looks like the war is slightly favoring. Ooh, it's hard to say. But I think that Ezra will probably start to pull ahead. Uh, it seems like he's got a bigger war machine online. Like overall, though, it is good macro from the Abbasid. But Rebus is... Wow, Rebus sitting on 31,000 gold. Dear God, he could wonder. Okay, never mind. That bank is just insane. But, I mean, he's going to work through it pretty quickly here. Ezra currently does not really have gold income, so, like, yeah, that the this could be a, a... Depending on how good of a player Rebus is. Because I know Ezra is pretty much a Conqueror tier player. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that gold could do some good work. Ram's moving in. A lot of Camel Riders and Camel Rider Archers. And it looks like the Ottoman army is being pushed back. It's on the run. Culverins, at this point, you should be sniping Battering Rams. They do bonus for Siege Equipment, and it looks like they are. Horsemen coming out to intercept them. And this is a very, very good fight here. I'm pretty impressed. Ezra's bank is good also, but not in terms of gold. So he's going to be making mostly archer and horseman-based armies. And if the old um, if the old Abbasid here want to invest in good proper siege equipment, they could for sure make progress and like push all this back. Um, but we'll have to see how the control is here. Armies pulling back and rallying, and it looks like the Abbasid do have a good siege ball. On the other side, the Chinese are really, really have a hard on to finish them off here. Absolutely. So we do have the siege workshops. And, uh, yeah, that's usually a sign that there's going to be some Dewhostin coming. Dandy Dragon with 18 rams of his own. Jesus, that's a, that's a hell of a lot of rams. Red, in the meantime, it looks like he's going to be pushing yellow or maybe just trying to secure part of the map. I'm not sure. Um, yellow, if I were yellow, I would probably make an alliance. Like, yellow needs the politic. Um, yellow needs to just be like, hey, my Abbasid brother, I need your help against the oppressive Ottomans and, and Dark Hunter Ezra. You need to use, like, you know, you know, propaganda, like, oh, he's got control of the middle of the map. Uh, he's got the trade post secured. I'm trapped in my base. I'm starving. You need to you need to use some of that propaganda, obviously. Propaganda is extremely efficient in this game, so. In the old FFA. Mo seasoned players often won't buy into it. They'll kind of know what's going on. Um, it's interesting. The reputation you develop as a player in the community is going to, like, you know, is going to dictate how effective your politics are. If you're somebody who's honest all the time, um, you know, People are going to, uh, you know, usually trust what you say. But again, that one time you're, you're dishonest can be the time you sneak out a win, right? Pulling back here. Both players a bit of a stalemate. Looks like nobody wants to get in there and go fisticuffs. Yellow, very comfortable. Just sitting back here on their 30,000 gold. And yeah, honestly, if I were yellow, I would not be aggressive here. Knowing that I have that sort of a bank, I would just cackle and just sit back and sit on my wealth and let everybody kind of tire each other out to the point where there's only a couple people left. And then you slap down a giant wonder and you just laugh all the way to the bank, right? That is how you do it. You definitely need to see an upgrade on this wood line here. It's been uh, it's been starving for quite some time. And the red Abbasid player, for some reason, I don't know where, why Prime is going up here. Looks like Prime might have some sort of, um, like, an alliance, perhaps, with the Chinese player. Let's look at Red's bank. Red's sitting on an okay bank. The Chinese player is sitting on a very good bank. Actually, enough to go wonder right now. So he could slap down and wonder, but yeah, he's going to want to kill the Mongols first, I would wager. Hmm. All right. So here they come. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm pretty I'm, I'm pretty obvious for sure. Order of the Dragon HRE. I know, Ram, I'm super excited as well. It's going to be very fun, dude. I'm very hyped to play the expansion. I'm going to make a push for Conqueror again once uh, once it comes out. I'm going to see if I can still, still got it. It's going to be a lot of fun to kind of put that focus down and, and go from there. Yeah, yellow's the only one with water, but, like, it becomes less of an advantage in the late game. The water is, like, a big advantage early. But, yeah, obviously now, like, everybody's got their food economy and different things like that, so. All right. So, China's still pushing. Dandy Dragon is not hearing any bell whatsoever. He is just sitting in the corner, being an absolute troll. Oh, guys, there's about to be Mortal Kombat. 
Chinese villagers and the Mongol villagers who are going to be chopping through the tree lines. And uh, yeah, I would imagine, oh man, Dandy could come in here right now and actually cause a huge problem. If Dandy Dragon moved through the mountain pass, past the Chinese artillery position, came through, torched all the trade. Okay, the Chinese player sees it. And he's going to be setting up shop here and bringing his army over, I would imagine. China's still pushing. The Rams are on their way over. Here it comes. And uh, yeah, it looks like Dandy's going to be getting ready to go. It's, it's, it's time. Now, why is Red attacking the other Abbasid player? That's something I don't quite understand because like the other Abbasid player is clearly trapped in his base and doesn't have any trade. It seems like, I mean, yeah, he obviously wouldn't know that he has a huge bank, right? Like if you just looked at this from an outside perspective without having the omnipotent information we have, it would be pretty clear that, um, you know, there's there's some funny business going on over there. So let the Kashyyyk's feast. I know, well, no reaction from other either player, strangely enough, but okay, here comes the horseman. <clears throat> Gonna be sending him down to the woodworkers, which I think is a good call. You could do a big economic blow to China. And could we see China get pushed back here? Um, I don't think so. I mean, they have how heavy in the eco are they? Wow, 141 eco. No wonder their army's so small. And now China's gonna get its trade shut down here. They should have built a wall here as soon as they saw this, because um, now they're gonna get trolled pretty hard. Are these actual soldiers? Okay, these are actually Chinese soldiers here fighting. These are palace guard. Palace guard aren't really that good against cavalry, but. Yeah, you know, they're okay. Men at arms against horsemen is just kind of a whatever type of engagement. But yeah, more palace guard are going to be rushing across to try and stop this uh, flow of aggression here. Meanwhile, the rams of Dandy Dragon moving forward and the Chinese artillery semi AFK here. But we are going to be seeing the Chinese get pushed back once again. While yellow just kind of defends his frontier against red, there's got to be some weird, weird alliances going here. <clears throat> some strange alliances indeed. Okay, so fighting again, the Mangonels and Culverins. I mean, it seems like the Abbasid have some pretty good comp composition options here against the Ottomans, but I mean, Ezra's a really good player. He's going to figure out and adjust and not just spam the same thing. He's going to see what you're doing and lay out. Look at the big Sipahi surround. The Sipahi get here mowing down the Mangonels. That's going to be a huge gold sink for Yellow. He's going to have to spend <clears throat> probably several thousand gold to replenish that army, which, you know, is, is a pretty big win here for the Ottomans. And overall, yep, pretty much every single artillery piece goes down. Well played by Ezra. Really, really good dive right there. And that's a lesson as to why you always want to kind of protect your artillery with spears or have the opportunity to do that. So <clears throat> there you go. There you got it. On the other side, we have the duel of fates between the Chinese and the Mongols. A lot of weird, like, semi-blood feuds in this game for sure. We're down to five players now, so it's always a weird number. <clears throat> you end up with a lot of, like, 2v1s and 3v1s and things like that. Chinese trade shut down. I really like the fact that they have the Great Wall Gatehouse here. I think that's a really nice touch. Like, this is an area where you could be backdoored, so having this, like, big defensive landmark here, I think it's very, very solid. I feel like the Chinese player could have, like, if, if with a little bit of better micro, could have killed Dandy in the corner by now. I mean, but Dandy's not making it easy. The, a lot of these are probably cannon towers, although now it looks like a fair amount of them aren't upgraded, but he's probably got time. Dandy Dragon currently sitting on only 2,000 stone, so... Not going to be able to upgrade too many of those. Yeah, Dandy's honestly doing a great job fighting like back against his Chinese player, who clearly is stronger, uh, economically speaking, and he's he's you know putting the pressure on him, you know, keeping him at bay. The classic Ottoman attrition war. I know, I know. I feel I feel like Ezra just ends up in attrition situations for some reason. Red coming into backdoor as well, and you know, I understand this from Red too. Even though like yellow probably shouldn't be perceived as much of a threat with the information that I have, from his perspective, I understand it. The reason being is that if red can kill yellow, he's really going to be kind of alone on the side of the map and he could like really do some work in this corner, um, set up a wonder if he wants to. There's a lot of cool options that he can do. <clears throat> Ottomans on the other side hanging out. The Sipahi and the archers fending off the last of the traders. Yellow going into a defensive turtle position, which I think is very, very prudent for them. Multiple layers of walls here. Ezra has walled off his northern empire trying to take a piece of the pie here. Resources are going to start becoming kind of sparse, though. Like, a lot of the forests are getting lumberjacks through. You can see they're getting a little bit kind of barren. And, you know, people get really greedy on lumber when uh, battering ramps become the primary modality of warfare. So, this is, uh, yeah, this game, we've, we're about an hour in. We just hit an hour. So, usually our FFA games, I would say, go an hour and a half to two hours. It's kind of the standard, unless we're doing, like, a smaller map or something like that. So, after this game, um, we're going to do a 1v1 showcase match. And then we are going to follow up with a... Um, with a, another FFA game, which will probably be like a Thunderdome or something like that. Something like more aggressive or like an island, like an island map could be a lot of fun as well. Yeah, this is going to be a two hour game probably, I think. I, I, my guess would be an hour and 45 minutes based on what we're seeing right here. So fasten your seatbelts, get yourself a snack, enjoy some tea, a nice pivo, whatever you're into. And uh, we're going to have some good times together, guys. Hope you're all doing well.
Yeah, man, Dandy Dragon, it's funny because if you look at the history of Dandy Dragon in, in our community, Dandy is really known as a defensive wonder player. And clearly you can see, even though there's no wonder to defend, like this position is still being expertly defended. Like the, the horseman sniping of all the artillery pieces. And uh, yeah, it's, it's very, very good indeed. Very, very good indeed. All right, so yellow is being harried on both fronts. I feel like there's an unholy alliance against Rebus. And I don't think Rebus is a new player. Um, if he was saying that in the lobby, maybe he's newer to the FFA community, but I would say like he's playing he's playing pretty well, at least platinum level. And um, yeah, I mean, I would assume could even be higher, but yeah, I would say at the very least platinum. So Zezra is very, very strong. Yep, once again, Danny Dragon able to defend. And this is like the most annoying thing. When Mongols have mass cannon towers with Siege defending them, oh my God, it is just absolutely brutal stuff. Absolutely brutal stuff. So Elite Horseman getting down, diving all over the place. Villagers, you know, classic uh, Age of Empire stuff. The villagers are the ones who pay the troll toll. They're going to be getting cut to pieces. Huge conflict here, ladies and gentlemen. Big, big conflict is the Spears and Horsemen just pouring into one another, just getting absolutely crunk, in the words of the great prophet Little John. But even still, this is not a war that either side really wants. Um, let's look at the banks of both players. Ezra currently is uh, doing okay on gold. I don't even know how he's getting gold. It must be a little bit of trade. And he does have double sacred side as well. Bombard cannon going to be dove and taken down. So nothing really protecting that. And yeah, it seems like the Abbasid are winning these fights in perpetuity. The elite archers, of course, for the Abbasids are going to be better than their equivalents on the other, other side because of the composite bows upgrade. Unless it's not there anymore since the update. I'm pretty sure it still should be, but... If they can take away this trade post, if the Abbasids can secure that, that'd be really big. Okay, Red, Red is up to something, guys. He is up so, up to something. Yeah. So we see the stone walls going hard, and it, it makes it looks like he doesn't want to get aggressive anymore. Rather, oh yeah, oh baby, a triple. That's the stuff right there. So there is a neutral market here. Red is gonna just trade like the heathen kings of old right now. He's going to be sitting there with his goblet, his chalice, his Viking war drinking horn, and he is just going to be going balls deep on that trade, assuming nobody sees this. You can see, you know, keeps coming up, uh, just full securing of this market. That is big. That is a cross-map trade. And then you just have Wonder in this corner. Oh, that's so money, dude. That is so money. That's going to be filthy trade. The trader's going? Yep. Uh, no, not yet. No, they haven't been sent all the way across. But he needs to create a more you know, secure route here. Where is he currently trading right now? Yeah, it looks like he hasn't given orders to that. He needs to clear a path. He needs to like break some walls down. Like, yeah, cause the trade route, it, like this would be the most optimal to set up a gatehouse here. looks like there's a hole in the wall there. Um, yeah, the traders are now going and we'll see how much they get on the full route when they make their way across here. But that's gonna be really, really good. Now the fighting continues over here between Ezra and our Abbasid player. And this is exactly what Red wants. Red wants the other like nations to just drain themselves and, you know, eventually, you know, kill one another. So then he can just wander in the corner. That's that's very, very good. Nice rating here by Rebus. Rebus is showing the signs of a higher level player. Like he's not just investing purely in the haggard pushing. He's like rating while he's doing it, um, which is going to be taxing Ezra's micro and also potentially causing some disruption and the backfield. So, yeah, all is good. And man, I can't believe this fight is still going. <clears throat> I can't believe it. The Sipahi and the Chinese, not the Sipahi, but the horsemen and the Chinese just like having this just constant mortal combat. China should be really strong though. I mean, they have they have some respectable trade. It's 61, which isn't bad. And uh, like, how have they not squashed the Mongols yet? I don't know how. Like the Chinese player should have horsemen raiding and like palace guard, like torching all this land, like everything. Cause like he keeps pushing into the towers in the corner when clearly he could be raiding the economy elsewhere, right? Um, with full force. I think the problem for our Chinese player is he's too heavy in eco and his military is a little bit too small. So, oh yeah, these guys are going hard in the paint. This is like, this is some super sweaty, sweaty battling for sure. Okay, the marketplace is being traded with. Um, how come it's only 75? I feel like the trader is a little bit longer, but yeah, 69, that's what she said on those ones. Um, are they tra are they going all the way to the corner here? 78, is that really all you're getting? There you go. Okay, now they're getting 156. Oh baby, that's the good stuff. 156 gold and 40 wood. Dude, that is just sauced. Absolutely sauced. Chinese army obviously defeating the horsemen. And finally, the Chinese player doing a little bit of raiding, but he needs to take more up here. Like, honestly, if I were the Chinese player, maybe just like Fire Lancers. Um, the Mongol player is um, 
Where's his trade going? Oh, okay. He, he got even further trade here. That's kind of cheeky up in the high ground here, but it looks like the cannons can actually see them. So some of the Chinese traders are going to be paying the uh, troll toll. Yeah. All right. Mortal Kombat continuing here. Both sides just grinding their sausages together. I just imagine two mighty warriors swinging kill bosses in the air, clashing them like swords. Um, a couple archers in the keep as well as horsemen. I do that all the time. But yeah, Red just needs to sit back and relax. If, if you're Red, I, you just go semi-AFK and just... That's what I would do. I would just sit back, take it easy, you know, take in, breathe in the beauty of the environment. And uh, Red's bank isn't very good, though. He's got a lot of food, um, but not a lot of other resources. It looks like he just kind of got this online, so it's still relatively early on. But yeah, if you're Red, you don't want to be fighting anybody at this point. You just... You just do your thing. You just hang out, take it easy, and uh, let the other players duke it out in these 1v1s. The food bank's serious, though. He's got 100,000 food, so... He could honestly probably just stop harvesting food for a while and just put all those villagers on lumber, which would probably be smart to do. So, big horseman dive coming down, torching down and raiding the Chinese trade. China has got to be super frustrated by the Mongolian raiding again. A little bit of a historical recreation. You know, I'm sure China, you know, uh, China and Mongols have some history. Lumber being uh, taken apart. Lumber is going to become very sparse, especially for Ezra. Ooh, Ezra does have this big patch of lumber, but that's kind of it. When that tree patch goes, he could he could actually legit be out of resources. And yeah, he's losing these fights like slowly. He's kind of lo losing ground here. Um, Ezra might not have a lot of gold left. Let's see. It looks like he's not spending his gold. He's like purposely saving it. Um, he does have 500 a minute probably from relics and sacred sites, but um, overall he's not really spending gold. Like all of his units are cheap and you know, Ottomans can get away with that because military schools give you free good quality units. So you can do some great work with that. Holy shit, the Camel Lord! Look at this! Oh yeah, baby, that's a lot of camels, and they're gonna crush those Sipahi in combat. Camels are very cool creatures. Like, their ability to survive in harsh climates and just, you know, just awesome. Awesome beasts. So they're gonna be uh, cleaning up shop here, and it looks like the Ottomans are losing this fight slowly. They're being pushed back. They are being pushed back, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, once again, the Camel Rider Legion gonna continue moving forward. I like him running the artillery pieces. Because obviously Ezra is going to prepare a horseman raid. So yeah, just get the Dread Camel Legion and just keep farming and resource draining him here if you can. Um, yeah, I mean, it's obviously not doing bad. Are the camels just torching down buildings? They should definitely be fighting the armies. Looks like he's trying to torch things down right now, which doesn't... He should be fighting the enemy army. Um, okay, now he's going to be turning and fighting the troops, which is good. Red, in the meantime, let's stay on Red's perspective. And, um, and we can just see his bank build up. Currently, he's getting pretty good amount. Yeah, if you're red, you could honestly just cut all of your eco for traders here, because that's just so, so lucrative. Um, so incredibly lucrative. He, Oh my god, he's got 48 traders right now. Wow. That is absolutely savage. The camel's doing well. At this point, probably retreating with the camels would be prudent. Um, they're starting to lose a little bit of momentum. The Ottomans do have some great bombards out. And it looks like the Ghulam's going to be called in to uh, cut apart the battering rams. Purple's battering rams tried to do a little bit of a sneaky flank on that keep, but they have retreated. And yeah, honestly, those Camel Warriors are doing very, very good. Ghulams do have that unique ability to quick strike. Quickly deals a second hit after finishing an attack. So they have like a double strike type ability from uh, magic, basically. Overall, interesting fights. We basically have two 1v1s and then like a big cackling troll in the corner. And that's going to be Prime. He's getting 3,000 gold a minute and obviously is going to be getting wood. Really good switch there by uh, Prime as well. Cutting his food eco. He's at 100,000 food. <laughs> He's got 100,000 food, man. That's so savage. And he's going to be able to buy stone if he wants to also. So, yeah. I mean, just maintain that trade. You could see he's setting up preemptively for a wonder defense. He's building infrastructure all over, so he's going to be able to fight. Holy shit. Look at the macro this man is setting up. That is absolutely nuts. Yeah, he is maxed out on food, guys. He is maxed out on food. I'm really impressed with Yellow's play. Like, Ezra is a very strong opponent, and um, the fact that Yellow is moving in is good. He's, I mean, I would imagine that the Ottomans are going to be hemorrhaging resources right now. You can see their gold bank is now lowering. He's starting to make some better quality units. Culverins here are probably going to die to some cavalry diving, although it looks like Yellow is doing a slightly better job um, defending here. Like, he's, he's keeping his spears back now and making sure things don't get too crazy. And where are the reinforcements from the old uh, Abbasid? Yeah, looks like I don't see too many reinforcements coming out. The CP he might be able to get the job done. Move it in, getting flanked, and uh, this culverin position is going to pay the price. Now, Yellow's bank on gold is down to 20,000. He doesn't have any gold income, so all he's really working with is his bank. And his wood income is also very low, too. He needs to optimize his wood income. Uh, otherwise, he's just going to fall behind. I think he's losing villagers to this keeper, too, that red keep. Dude, red is just such a dark lord on the bottom of the map right now. Oh, my God. That trade, and the trade is also giving him wood, too, which is really cool. 
But going for a Wanderer with this many players alive would basically just be a GG situation. Um, it would just be too much, right? Because we got yellow, purple, blue, and teal, all of whom are pretty competent players. So if you try and do a 4v1 Wonder defense, you're going to lose 100%. You're, you're not going to have a good time. So China just, it, this is basically just like pure trolling. Like, it looks like Dandy Dragon is just raiding. I would imagine the Chinese player is just foaming with rage, trying to deal with this raiding. Because, like, he can't quite uproot the Mongols. Oh, it looks like he, he did torch down the corner, finally. Okay, China is finally doing what we were talking about and taking down the Mongolian side economies and keeping them from raiding. Okay. So this is like a desperation raid. He's, he's just going after farms, dude. What a troll. I mean, he's not going to do much. Like, it's a resource you can rebuild. Definitely just looking for pockets of villagers would be a little bit stronger for sure. Red is the, uh, yeah, Red is the king of old. He really is. He really is. He is uh, he's sitting quite comfortable on the other side. Looking around, ladies and gentlemen. What have we got? We got traders. 156 a pop. That is very erect trading. Hey, look at that. This war has been going on for like 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 30 minutes and they've made like 10 inches of progress. Also perhaps historically accurate, I would imagine. So walls getting knocked down here. You can see them getting popped in the face. This keep is here. It's been the bastion against the Ottoman Empire for a long time. Trying to get some trade going again, but does not look like that's going to happen. I don't know why Yellow is sending a battering ram here. Oh, he's trying to take down this keep. He's, he's tired of that keep killing his, <laughs> killing his poor wood villagers, which makes sense. Red lumberjacking away. Ezra going to be running out of resources because Danny Dragon basically took all of his wood. <laughs> so the only wood he has is like, I think like contested or it's like over here. Yeah, that's basically it. I love uh, Red's one village on food to keep him at 100k. I know it's pretty cool, isn't it? Pretty cool. So how's this Chinese warfare going here? The traders still have not been uh, reset up. He definitely is going to want to build those markets again so the traders can get operational. Looks like China has finally figured out how to deal with the Mongols. Instead of mashing his head into the cannons in the corner, he's taking down all the siege workshops and villagers, and Dandy Dragon probably is pretty much dead in the water eco-wise. Yep, he is. He's got 29 eco. And Dandy, you know, not going to be easy to kill, though. Like, this position is going to take a colossal amount of effort to move in. A colossal amount of effort. Yeah, the the uh, the diplomacy options, I've thought about that. Like, maybe us playing FFAs with... Um, with true diplomacy where you can make alliances and your units won't attack each other but part of me thinks it's way more fun when players have to plan together and it kind of captures the chaos of warfare you know I, I think it's more fun that way it makes getting teamed up on feel less bad when they can't when their units will attack each other if they're in your base um i personally am of that opinion although i do understand the other side it, it's been something i'd be interested to collect some feedback on on that for sure Dude, Dandy Dragon is just in purple space. He's just in Dark Hunter Ezra's base, just taking all of his wood, which is hilarious. That's what she said. And uh, it, it would be really funny, as a matter of fact, if Dandy came over here and just took that last wood patch here. It looks like a little bit of a border skirmish between red and uh, yellow. Obviously, red did not want to lose his, uh, his, his comfortable position here. Yellow looks like he's going to be able to hold back red for now. I, I don't think yellow wants to get drawn, or red wants to get drawn into any big conflicts. Currently, his bank is looking pretty hot. He's making 4,000 gold a minute, which is just absolutely ludicrous. Absolutely ludicrous. And yeah, it's a little bit of a border skirmish. Nothing serious. I don't think anybody's going to be pushing too hard. And what is Ezra doing right now? Ezra is just kind of sitting in the middle with a big army. And um, there's not too many choke points in the middle of the map for those bombards to be really oppressive. China and their uh, palace guard. Apparently, the ancient Chinese were world-renowned for running fast in heavy armor. As those palace guard are very, very fast. They obviously aren't as quick as horsemen, but the palace guard are very swift. Yep, in the corner of Dandy, he's channeling his inner Smeagol. He's, he's holding in the corner. Oh, look at that! Oh my god. You see, Dark Hunter Ezra, he's like, he's like the Baron Harkonnen from Dune. He's like, he'll pretend to be in an alliance with you, but in reality, he's just trying to like oppress you and set you back, you know? Like, he'll use you for his own devices, and then he'll, he'll toss you away. So you can see you can see how much that alliance between him and Danny Dragon meant. <laughs> He's just like massacring his villagers. I love it. Oh my god, it's just crazy. Speaking of, we had a really um, well. We have a little bit of downtime here, so some action. Well, we'll wait till this fights, and then we'll we'll do some story time. So red and yellow duking it out. We got the dreaded McDonald's fight. We're going to be seeing who is going to be the lord of the Ronald McDonald crew here, as the yellow and red armies fight on the southwest side of the map. And, uh, yeah, overall, I think, like, nobody's going to want to commit to this, really. Is Red really going to want to commit to a full-on war here? It kind of looks like it, actually. He's building siege workshops, so kind of makes me think that he's perhaps thinking about that. And Dandy Dragon just back in his corner. China, my favorite thing ever would be if China created a Great Wall. 
So I've done this in games before. I can't remember who it was. It was a long time ago, but we had a Mongol player who was just like packing up and moving all the time. And I managed to defeat them and push them into the corner. And I built a giant stone wall around their base and kept them trapped in there. I don't remember who that was, but they kept trying to escape and I literally spent the whole game keeping them in there. I can't remember who it was. God, that was a long time ago. But yeah, anyways, pertaining to story time, like we said, a little bit of downtime while the players macro up their armies. Uh, is that a neutral market? No, it doesn't look like it's like it's one of yellow markets. Yeah, so we were playing Dune Spice Wars last night, and um, Hadrius was playing the Baron Harkonnen, and I was playing um, Ekaz, and uh, Professor Pwn was playing Dune. It was the funniest shit. So I was going for a governorship victory, which is basically a wonder victory in that game, and uh, and Hadrius and Pwn uni united against me, so they made a non-aggression pact, and they moved to, to kill me, because I was about to win on the wonder victory, or the governorship. And Hadrius was like, yeah, well, let's go in at the same time, Pwn. Let's attack together. So Pwn sends all of his Fremen warriors in to do battle with my defenders on my, uh, my, my town hall, basically. My last, my wonder. And, uh, and, and then Baron Harkon and Hadrius literally nuked all of Pwn's Fremen just to get my army. He annihilated his ally just, just to... So he used Pwn's Fremen to lure me into contact with my full army, and then he nuked us both. It was the funniest shit. It was just complete Harkonnen betrayal. I was cackling so hard. It was it was really funny. But anyways, back to this game. Ottomans getting crazy, going after red. Oh, interesting. How the tides have turned. Yeah, look at this. Okay, so now we have the Ottoman war machine turning its full uh, gears onto Prime down here. Prime might be in a position where he needs to slam a wonder down. Uh-oh, look at this, guys. Look at this. We got the counterweight trebuchets moving up. Manganels at the ready also. And uh, yeah, I think they might know how scary red is. Although red could call... Red could call in the alliance with Teal. Be like, Teal, brother. Oh no, I think Teal has too much of a hard on against the Mongols. Like I think the Chinese player here has such a massive erection. Just wanting to kill blue. Like a power... I guess the, the, the expression you could say would be like a hate boner, right? He's just got like such a hatred boner for blue in the corner <laughs> that he, he's going to try and kill him here. But the McDonald's battle rages on and um, Red and the Ottomans going to be duking it out in the middle. It's kind of scary for Red actually. I don't think he could win a... Uh, I don't think he could win a 2v1. Like I think if Yellow and Purple push him right now before he gets the wonder up, um, he's going to be in some trouble. I mean, he does have a good bank, but not enough stone to go wonder. And currently looking at red, yeah, he's got a decent military, but he's going to get pushed back by both these players. Now, I'm really, really curious. I'm really curious how this is going to go. Oh, are you saying the Chinese player is Hunter? Is that true? Oh, is it Hunter from our Discord? That would explain the, the hate boner. <laughs> oh my god, the Rams are trying to get in there, dude. The Chinese soldiers are hiding in there. <laughs> Oh, so it is. Is it really a hate? Is it a is it a Discord uh, beef between these two players? Oh, that's so funny. I hope that's the case. That would be so hilarious. He's making progress this time, though. He's knocking down towers, for sure. And the Chinese soldier is able to take down these horsemen um, because currently Dandy Dragon isn't going to be able to rebuild. Oh, it's. Oh, it is Hunter. Okay, that makes more sense. I was wondering why he was hate bonering so hard. Yeah, like against against the Mongols in the corner in the corner. <laughs> Oh, man. Okay, so this is going to be interesting. Blue's probably going to die here after a couple more pushes. Um, you, we got a 1v1 Conqueror lined up for me. Hell yeah, dude. That's going to be fun. We'll do a Blood Feud. Um, Gunhound, have them decide on a map if they could. So find a map that's agreeable to both of them. Um, preferably a normal map, not like a meme map. And we can go from there. Okay. Hate bonering is a pretty funny expression. I don't know if we've used that much on the channel, but it's certainly very apt. In like Total War tournaments, it's not so much the case because normally it's just like a 1v1 most of the time, but like in FFA, it really is captured when you are irrationally like hateful towards one opponent, you know? We've called it blood feuds in the past, but overall, yeah, Red is gonna maybe have to fall back and hunker down because they're just in too many fights. Like trying to fight both these players here, 2v1 is gonna be incredibly brutal. Um, Dandy Dragon's still holding here. He's still hanging in there. And it looks like the Rams and Palace Guard are pushing up. Some loose skirmishing and raiding all over the realm. And uh, yeah, Yellow just pushing in. Nice trebuchet play, slowly pushing back defenses. Red using their massive bank to try and fight back on two fronts. It looks like Blue's gonna be trying to... Oh, Blue lured, look at that. Blue lured some of, uh, some of the Chinese players' assets here to attack Red. That's actually pretty funny. Yeah. 
Danny's certainly a scrapper, but I mean, his, his, he's not long for this world. He's only got a couple of cannon towers left and basically he has no economy whatsoever. You know, just none. It's just, uh, it's looking to be pretty bleak here. All right, guys. Sipa he moving up. Hand cannon ears. Cruising for a bruising. Big trebuchet action from downtown. Gonna keep nuking these bad boys. Man, how excited are you guys? We got a couple weeks from now, and we're gonna be getting uh, we're gonna be getting Japan in these FFA games, the Byzantines. It's gonna be so much fun stuff. It'll be really neat to see those civs in action. All right, all right. Well, the fighting rages on, and the counterweight trebuchets still making good progress. Yellow is certainly putting a big dent in this. And oh my God, if Yellow sees the neutral market and kills it, that's gonna set Red back so far. Because Red's gonna lose their their gravy train, but Red's doing a good job holding. It looks like Ezra is regrouping here in the middle. Meanwhile, Red is going to be trying to hold it down here, setting up a lot more infrastructure to be able to fight this off, but currently doesn't have the production to really hold back the momentum. The neutral market is still standing firm, guys. It's still standing firm. I'm, I'm surprised it hasn't been destroyed. As a matter of fact, it's still yielding profits here up until the bitter end. Yeah, absolutely crazy. And it has 56 traders on it. So Red trying to defend, getting some wear down on these units. The hand cannon here is coming out. Yellow doesn't look to be pouring in too much. It's very, like, casual. Like, the, the the degree with which he was fighting Ezra was certainly more of, like, a blood feud type fight. He's just kind of, like, casually pushing red here. It doesn't look all in. Yeah, it doesn't look all in. Sounds good. I told Kill he could host the final FFA if he does it. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Sounds good to me. All right, we got it. We got a deal. We got a deal, you son of a gun. It's on. All right. So, it looks like the hate boner has finally become fully erect. And we do see the end of the Mongols in the corner. Um, they do have their Kashyyyks, which have finally been fully upgraded. But the Battering Grams have cleared out the last of the towers. Now, Dandy Dragon, let's take inventory of landmarks, okay? We have one, two, um, and then I think the other ones are trying to run here somewhere. So we see two landmarks. Is there any in the corner? I'm looking around the minimap to see if we can find any blue landmarks. I only see two at the moment. I think there's a destroyed one. Yeah, the White Stupa, I believe, is destroyed up here. Perhaps it is. Yeah, I don't know. It's hard to see. I think he might be hiding him somewhere. Always a little bit of a tricksy hobbit. Yep, but the, the, the blood feud is over. The blood feud is over. Oh, we're finally going to get a last samurai charge. That's right. Yeah, it's actually going to happen. So he deletes a lot of the rams, but not before taking out the Mongol base. He's got his palace guard chasing, horsemen coming in from all directions. The McDonald's uh, civil war still going down here. And the market, I, I can't help but wonder if yellow is keeping the market alive for the reason of um, trading himself at some point. Or maybe he just didn't notice it. It's kind of an inconspicuous thing there when you're really like caught up in combat. Defensive keep going down for yellow. Currently yellow's bank is at 8,000, so he still does have enough to wonder, but not by much. I mean, he would have to buy a little bit of stone. The Ottomans in the middle looking to push, and red is uh, in a 2v1. Yeah, he's in a hard 2v1 here. I mean, these are good players you're fighting too. It ain't gonna be easy. Ezra does have a good bank as well, but um, I do think Dandy Dragon is basically out of this game. So what's gonna be really interesting is seeing what Hunter ends up doing. What our Chinese player, so apparently it's uh, one of the lads from our Discord. Um, is Hunter gonna, like, who's he gonna go after? Is he gonna go after Red? Is Hunter gonna Fire Lancer backstab someone? I would love to see that, that'd be so funny. Um, I don't know. Oh wow, look at that, a big stone node still available this late in the game. Also, we have a Wonder in the corner, which hasn't been taken by anybody. There's a couple, kind of sparse resources all over the place. So 7,000 and the White Stupa is down and Dandy Dragon has been defeated, ladies and gentlemen. So there was his last line mark. Question from chat, why did everybody turn on red? I think that somebody became aware that he was trading across the map and just was getting being left alone. So they're like, let's take care of him because he has the entire bottom of the map to himself. I suspect that's what's going down here. But now, what is Hunter gonna do? Is the question. Is Hunter gonna take this Mongol corner and build a wonder? That would be a really good call. Just like, you know, just build a you know big Chinese uh, wall network back here with a bunch of keeps, although I don't know. Yeah, he does have stone here too. I mean he totally could. Looks like elite fire lancers are being made, and he's gonna get a fire lancer legion and probably try and landmark snipe Ezra, would be my guess. Um, Ezra's landmarks will take inventory, so um, that is a TC. So we got one, two, three, and then I believe it was the Istanbul Observatory over here. It's a pretty cool landmark. Um, yeah, it's very rad. So, very neat indeed. So yeah, this is good. I mean, this is a powerful combo too, especially for pumping out mass battering rams. Yeah, I mean, a Fire Lancer snipe from, from Hunter, from our Chinese player, could be very, very good. Dandy Dragon says, Teal lied every second of the game. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he really had it out for you, man. He really had it out for you. So yeah, Red is continuing to get pushed. The neutral market is still being uh, left alive. 
There's a keep kind of holding it down here. And um, I'm surprised, yeah. If I were Red, I'd be playing some hard politics right now, being like trying to, I mean, because Red is actually defeating and pushing back Ezra. It looks like in the center. But you gotta, you would have to play some hard politics and try and find allies somewhere, whether it be Hunter. Hunter's got these Fire Lancers. Where are they going to go? Are they going to go after Red's base? It's 64 Fire Lancers. I mean, that is, um, that is really, really brutal. Yeah, Dandy, you had a really good defense, considering you were kind of behind for a while. You, you had a great defense. Yeah, Red, I mean, slapping down a Wonder is rough right now for Red. Because if you do, it's like, you might have a slim chance of winning. But the problem is everybody's already, like, on your gates, like, in full war mode with you. Usually the Wonders will have an advantage because people aren't, like, prepared with infrastructure to do battle with you yet. But in this case, it seems like they're just prepared with full erections, you know? So it's going to be tough. Uh, all right, so here it comes. We got the dreaded Legion of the Elite Fire Lancers. And uh, are they going to go snipe? Oh, please, please go for a snipe. Come on. Come on. Snipe somebody's, snipe somebody's stuff. Give us something exciting here, baby. Let's go. Wow, man. China's sitting on a huge bank, though. So whatever they've been doing this game has been working. And yeah, some people are, some people are like that, Dandy. Some people like to just do you know, evil politics and just you know, lie and scheme and spread disinformation. Because as we all know, in real life, that's quite effective, right? Disinformation is one of the most powerful weapons in the modern age. And I suspect it's good here in Age of Empires as well as the Fire Lancers uh, sitting at the ready. I would imagine there's some political stuff going on here. I would imagine that he's like maybe talking, trying to work some alliances out. Red uh, has lost his market. Okay, so Red's gravy train is over. So now if you're Red, you need to use that as a tool and be like, hey, I don't have trade. Uh, I'm an Abbasid player. Like, unite against me against the Ottoman, you know, trade engine. You know, whatever. You need to, you need to be doing something like that. You need to be doing something like that. Great Wall Gatehouse never got finished by Smeagol in the early game. Red holding the middle. And where is the Fire Lancer Lord going to be going? I hope he goes in flanks. I really, really hope he does. All right, so heading up here. The elite Fire Lancers are cruising for a bruising. And, uh, yeah, they could go in and do some base sniping. I mean, is there a way in here? It doesn't look like it there. It looks like Ezra is more... Uh-oh, never mind. There's an opening. I don't know if he would find that quickly, though. We'll have to see. Fire Lancer is moving to the back of the base, doing God knows what. And again, he could just play passive and let the other people fight right now. He could, for sure. Over to the west side, we do have the big McDonald's fight. Yellow moving in against red. If you're red at this point, you can let this base go. Like, you don't need to fight here. I mean, you can if you want to, but you could just let them have it. I mean, there's nothing over here to even worth fighting over for yellow, other than just objectively trying to kill red. So you could do that. Now, looking to the other side, red in the middle, fighting on two fronts. Traders are... They found another trade post. Okay, so it looks like they're going to be doing some neutral trading in the middle, probably at this trade site here. So they're going to be drifting across. It looks like there's a couple people trading there. China is going to be trying to set up trade there as well. Fire Lancers in the meantime, growing in numbers. We do have 77 Fire Lancers. So there's going to be some, some nasty sniping going down for sure. There's going to be some very nasty sniping. And there it goes, baby. They're moving on up. Yes, yes, the Rams and the Ghulams. Very good play by Red this game. He took out two players by himself. He killed Smeagol. He also took out um, the Holy Roman player Davok early on. Two good players. And then from there, he's also fighting a 2v1 fight and happening to trade well in several of those points, which is super impressive. Um, currently looking at Red's bank, Prime. He's not got a good bank. Yeah, it looks like Prime, oh man, he's been, yeah, he's been cutting his eco to uh, to try and probably fight with military here. That's tough. That's very tough. McDonald's Civil War continues. Yellow just going full, just full push down here, really. Yeah, his eco is, uh, yeah, wood's running out too. A lot of people are running out of wood. See, this wood is almost completely gone. I mean, wood on the map is, yeah, there's like not much left. There's a couple sparse little patches in the south, which are going to be fought over pretty heavily. Pretty heavily indeed. All right. So once again, hand cannoneers and the elite Ghulams holding the line over in the middle of the map. We do see some uh, fallback here from the Ottomans. And now we are in a situation where we have four pretty powerful players. Walls being set up en masse by China. So China is going to be trying to wall off their parts of the map. It looks like that should be fully walled off here. And I'm not sure what the Fire Lancers are going to do. I would love to see some landmark sniping, especially against Abbasid. That's so strong. Like, the Abbasid player could be killed super easily. If, if they built, like, three bombards right here, knock this down, and just run in with 70 Fire Lancers, and GG, Red's gone. GG, Red is gone. Smeagol's market started a civil war. It did. It did. They were fighting over it. It, it made Red a very rich man for a long time, but he is, uh, 
He's kind of in the pits now a little bit. I mean, he's got some okay mid trading, but he just hemorrhaged resources fighting on two fronts for a long time. More trebuchets on their way up. Not sure what they're doing here. Could easily be sniped if the opponent's paying attention. War Palisades going down to uh, give a screen to the artillery, it looks like. And yeah, Red's trading. Pretty good trade too. 70 a pop, so 70, 140 round trip, 34 wood round trip. Very respectable. Uh, I'm most, I'm super excited for both Byzantines as well as Japan. I mean, both are going to be super fun to play, so I'm mega, mega hyped for both of those, I would say. North side of the map, we got traders hustling back and forth, and oh, he, see, he, he must have saw the Fire Lancers earlier. So look at that. He's getting stone walls around his Istanbul Observatory. I love it. Oh, that's so funny. And that's that's a really good awareness because obviously the Fire Lancers were on his border and it, they are very visible. So you're going to be able to kind of see this funny business going on here. So yeah, he's going to make sure that the Istanbul Observatory is secure and all is good in the realm while the McDonald Civil War uh, is continuing to rage on. Gulam's moving out, cannons. Looks like Red is going to be taking this time to try and kill Yellow, which is a good idea. Who knows if they'll be able to do it. Um, he does have decent infrastructure here. He's got, you know, troops coming out in perpetuity for the most part. A little bit of flanking action, but they are able to block up those horsemen, so the horsemen not able to get to those cannons. And yeah, Red is bringing out the big guns. There's some heavy, heavy artillery here. And some of the horsemen do make it onto the bombard cannons. Very unfortunate stuff, and now they're going to be moving forward, but the horsemen diving very good. At the very least, you try and knock down this keep if you can. Red might be able to win this fight. Looks like they will, but at the cost of all those Bombard Cannons, maybe a couple Manganels are going to end up surviving that one, but we will have to see. But Ezra, very on point, though. Yeah, this is a great reaction to the Fire Lancer cheese. And up in the top, Hunter is going to be setting up more of a farm economy. He's got his elite Fire Lancers here, and, uh, yep, they keep pushing up. It is going hard in the paint. Gulam's 310 HP, absolutely jacked. Those guys definitely rocking some six packs as they continue moving up and uh, pushing back Yellow. Yellow probably doesn't have the gold bank. Oh, they do still have 8,000 left. Wow. But no wood for Yellow. Yeah, Yellow's got to be hurting on wood. I guess there's some sparse trees up in the north of their base, but that's pretty much it. So that Gulam army is making nasty progress while the trebuchets are forced to knock down the keeps. More bombards coming, and those archers basically doing no damage. So Yellow could die here to Red, which would be very powerful. Because, oh my god, there's a neutral market here, potentially. If red moves forward and kills yellow and reestablishes that cross-map trade, that is just going to be a full chub. That is like a full chub right there. So Bombard's moving in. Yellow running out of steam. He's looking real weak right now, guys. Only 36 supply on military when you compare him against Prime here. Prime is currently sitting at 87 and has a fully functional economy as well. And now these bad boys are going to be cruising for a bruising, hustling up into the base. We got the old trebuchets and the culverins doing some great work, clearing out whatever troops come in. And Red might be able to get this. Bombards, yeah, Mangonels, he's got a nice artillery corps. And I suspect the Ottomans are banking resources for a wonder. No, they're buying stone, it looks like. Maybe. Where would he put a wonder down? Probably just be in the back of his base somewhere, I would wager. Hunter, oh man, it's war. It's war, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be a fully erect Fire Lancer army with Palace Guard spam pushing into the Ottoman base. So we're about to get a classic Dark Hunter Ezra uh, <laughs> grind fest over here as that is going to be going down. Yeah, I think that Red, if he micros correctly and reinforces his army well, should beat Yellow. But again, it depends on how good his control is. Um, those Ghulams have heard no bell whatsoever. No bell whatsoever. And uh, yeah, they're still moving. Yellow producing. Let's look at Yellow's bank. Rebus. Rebus is hanging in there. He's got a good food bank, and his artillery is going to be pulling back, being pushed back a little bit right now. Villagers being pulled out to try and deal with this. Gulams and mass coming in, and honestly, yeah, I would just make Gulams. They're super solid. Artillery going to be turning around. Maybe mixing in a couple spears into the army could be quite good as well. But once again, the artillery core is going to be trashed, and that's where you start spamming rams if you're red. Um, red does have 7,000 wood. Could for sure start doing some ramsteining. Um, and yeah, just really needs to get a better reinforcement pool. Like, this is not enough here. He's got a, a lot queued up, and it, it's only building from over there. So yeah, his reinforcements suck. Like, if Red was properly reinforcing this and had good macro on the western frontier, he could have probably killed Yellow just now. Like, it, it would have just been GG, well played, so. Ezra just building, uh, not Ezra, but Hunter just building a war machine. You know, whenever I see somebody, like, building this much infrastructure that quickly, it reminds me of my age. Because if I were to spam click that much, it would hurt my hands. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't be able to do it. It reminds me, I'm like, okay, you know. I would imagine this guy's probably like in his teens, or early 20s or something. Just like how rapidly he's setting down those buildings, right? All right, so the Gulam's going to be pulling back. Red needs to get a more efficient war machine if they want to win this fight. Um, they need to gather up and just do like a doom push. 
We got a fight in a choke point. The Ghulam's uh, doing okay. Yeah, they'll definitely do all right. There's not too many hand cannoneers. More Ghulam's on their way in. Definitely knock down that town center if you can. And yeah, the the war the war of the northeast is about to start. It's about to go, baby. Oh, he deletes the fire lancers. What a shame. He should have just thrown them away. Why would you not just use the fire lancers and go dive and kill a bunch of buildings and then attack? That doesn't make sense to me. That seems like a little bit of a bronze odia play. That was a lot of resources that you just threw in the old trash can, but. Again, it is what it is. So, continuing to fight in the choke point. Red's army uh, just seems stronger overall. Yellow's eco is going to eventually bleed out. Yeah, he's only got 2,000 gold left and basically no wood. So, if Red just keeps pushing for like another minute or two, like maybe three minutes, Yellow is going to fold up. And uh, that's going to be it. That is going to be it. Yes, yes, indeed. The dreaded two plus hour game. Uh, yeah, it's a couple different things, Jaren. Yeah, it's. it's, uh, it's it's, it's a lot. It's a combination of nerve compression and uh, an, a stupid autoimmune disease that inflames my tendons and my, uh, my wrists and shoulders and knees and Achilles and all that. But regardless, you know, I can still do stuff, but it's just, it gets out of control sometimes. All right, so Red's moving up. That's a pretty nasty little doom stack. Hand cannoneers, knights, and those bad boys going to be cruising up to the north and moving into Yellow's base. Yellow is basically Palpatine on death's bed right now. He's like, help me. I'm too weak. I can't do it. So it's going to be very tough. Hand cannoneers, bombard cannons moving over to the northeast side of things. We do see the dreaded uh, Chinese macro. Holy shit. Oh my god. Is that even necessary, dude? That is so much wood. That is so much wood. Oh my god, dude. Look at that. God damn, Joe Rogan. That's a big army. All right. So the bombard cannon's going to move up, torching down some of the barracks. And once again, the yellow keep is going to be pretty much the last hold here for yellow as he just... Basically pours out low quality units and a bit of a bid to desperately uh, defend here, but this is not going to go well. That town center is going to fold up and then that house of wisdom is probably going to be shortly after. Hopefully Red doesn't lose spirit here though. If Red like turns around and runs now, it's going to be like that classic meme of the guy digging in a tunnel and like turning around right before he finds success. But yeah, man, there they go. Bombard's going to be shooting away over on the other side. I wonder if Ezra knows the fury that's about to be unleashed on him. Like, if he has any idea of the depths of insanity. Um, Spiritway being built in the corner. Wow, he didn't even have his final dynasty building yet. He must have been saving it to build it in the corner somewhere. So, yeah, that's that's going down. And now China is going to become a tyrant, for sure. They have enough to wonder. Oh, man, Ezra is going to be... Yo, oh, wow. Look at... Man, I have to say, not Ezra, but Hunter. I'm very impressed with this, though, that, like... How quickly he develops an operation here and like already has the wonder like that he kept his landmark back and saved it to see where he would be wondering that's like some very very solid play and um you know honestly if yellow gets killed here i wouldn't be surprised if he just slaps down a wonder he could start taking battle to um to the ottomans too you know he could obviously red would probably push in from the south and is he really going to fall back? No, he's got to keep the momentum going. I mean, Yellow is just so close to death right now. Rebus has 1,500 food. Like, 1,500 food. Ezra knows and is trying to get others, is he? Yeah, I would imagine so. Not going to be easy, though. These guys have been... When you're this balls deep in a fight, you know, you usually you usually want to finish the job. It, it sucks to, like, put in that much effort. But, like, the thing is, Yellow couldn't even really help that much anyways because he would be blocked by all of this. Red can help for sure. It looks like some of the artillery are going to be Joe. Of course, been doing a bit of a circuitous route to dive the artillery, which is going to buy some time. The Red Army wearing him down. And uh, do they have reinforcements coming in? They do have rams. You need to be producing more ghulams. Prime is military capped right now. He's going to have the troopers coming out. Yep, crossbows and reinforcements from all sides. Big man all shots does nail that army. But overall, it looks like Yellow might be able to hold on here. We'll have to see. And now the fighting is on. Good micro here. A lot of spring alts. we got six spring alts taking down those bombard cannons. Oh my god, those great bombards though are so nasty. So incredibly nasty. Yeah, Spring Alds are getting forced back to the Shadow Realm. Look at them, they're just like, these bombards don't give any shits whatsoever. They're scooting up trying to snipe those, but good micro here from uh, Hunter. As he moves back and scoots and shoots. And we do see the battle raging on. Janissaries, great bombard cannons, creeping up. Probably going to be a stalemate there for a long time, I would wager. Red moving, but being pushed back by yellow, actually, which is very strange. Rebus has six gold in the bank, so that's pretty much going to be the last of his good quality units. His keep is not being built at the moment. A couple of villagers called out from reserve to uh, get that going. The elite camel riders, not a bad choice. Camel riders have a pretty big HP pool, and their DPS output is respectable at 22, but hand cannoneers will mow them down pretty effectively. So, yeah, more reinforcements coming. 
Red needs to make sure they don't fall victim to the dreaded Reaganomics, the, the trickle-down theory where they trickle in their units and uh, don't do a whole lot with them. you got to gather up those armies and make sure that you have effective pushes with big, muscular, scary pushes. So Great Bombard's in position, and yeah, I, I like that I like that uh, Ezra is starting to push. You know, somebody's got to start, because clearly there's going to be a wonder. He's going to pull all these farmers and just slap down that wonder as soon as Yellow's dead, um, would be my guess as to how this is going to go. Keep did not get finished. Red needs to gather up troops, though. This trickling in is, is hurting my soul. He's got a couple random gulams over here trying to torch down to keep, which has 13 hand cannoneers in it. That's pretty unfortunate for Rebus. He's going to wish he had those guys a little bit later on. And where is, yeah, where's Red's macro? He should he should be able to steamroll this. I don't know what's going on. Okay, now he's got more units coming with battering rams. He, he was so effective with his pushes earlier, but this effect, this push seems like it's been a little bit um, lackadaisical. We'll see. We'll see. Now, over on the other side, Mortal Kombat continues. We see China holding with mass spring alts and palace guard and all that sorts of good stuff. Yellow coming out to rally and defend. The Ghulams move forward, but the Ghulams are going to be probably mowed down by the Hand Cannoneers. The Hand Cannoneers will trade very, very well. There are a couple of battering rams doing the dreaded dancing circles around these guys. They're doing a tribal dance to try and intimidate. It's their version of the... Uh, what is that? What is that? What is that? What is that? But nonetheless, Hand Cannoneer is going to be creeping up, dropping some shots, and Yellow's... Uh, Yellow's forces might just be out of steam here, straight up. Yeah, I mean, look at his look at his bank. He's, he's got 5,000 food, I guess, but... Ram's heading into the main base. Villager's probably going to be pulled the torch. Yeah, look at that. The villagers are already being pulled the torch. They're already going. And why is Red retreating? Do they? Is there a wonder being built? Is he is he doing it? Or maybe he thinks he needs Yellow to kill kill the other player. That could be it. Yeah. Now he's gathering up his forces here, so you can see he's going to be gathering the Dread Legion. All right. That's what I like to see. So here they come, boys. They're going to move up. Get him, Skeeter. Push in there. Yeah, that was a. I so I've met someone actually named Skeeter before, but it was a nickname. It wasn't a real name. I would challenge anyone to chat. Have you actually ever met anybody named Skeeter? It's kind of like a, a bit of a stereotypical name, but I've met someone who used it as a nickname, but not like a real name. Yeah, I feel like it would usually be a nickname. All right, so moving in, we got the elite Ghulams. Battling against the hand cannoneers. The ramps are coming, but villagers are there with their torches. Looks like the infantry are going to run over and take them down. It's pretty much going to be the end of the road for them. A little bit of uh, ram pushing on either side. Yeah, red seems like they could push a little bit more aggressively if they wanted to. Yellow basically sending out the last uh, last wave of troopers out there going to be able to manage. Over here we have the big civil war. Look at this choke point. Hunter built a wall, but those janissaries with their cool looking hats are just fighting tooth and nail on that point. That's a lot of spring alds, though. We're going to see if he's going to be able to drag down any of the spring alds right there. And once again, the Janissaries still moving up and, uh, yeah, mowing down a lot of the Chinese troopers. Sipahi get in, and they're going to kill a lot of the spring alds. That's going to be a big loss here for our Chinese champion, although he has 40,000 gold in the bank. Oh, my God. That is, uh, that is massive. Okay, so it seems like some people in chat maybe have. God damn, man. This is a scrappy-ass game. This has a, been a great FFA so far. I, I can't believe we're like two hours into it and we haven't seen any wonders. We haven't seen any. Hey, Bob, right back at you, man. I'm glad you're enjoying it. We got a lot of good times to come here. I like this keep. That's going to help them maintain progress. So sometimes when you're pushing people, uh, you know, you can lose ground. And, and uh, setting up a keep like this will help prevent that scenario. The Gulam's moving up. They have the camel support. So they're going to be rocking a little bit of a bonus. And uh, yeah, we can see that's basically, that should be it. Yellow should be toast now. He just lost a ton of eco too, which is going to be basically, oh yeah, that's some... Serious do hosting coming in. That's going to be all over these keeps in the town center and uh, House of Wisdom going to be a prime target for all these rams. Let's see where they're going to go first. They're going to go for the keep of the town center. I'm not quite sure. Looks like they're just going after pretty much wherever they can. The neutral market was destroyed in the conflict as well. Uh, the Chinese player in the meantime, just building up his defenses. He's got a really big eco. That's why um, Hunter's army is very small. He's 133 on eco. So he's just doing the bare minimum he needs to hold. So he can keep accumulating wealth and being greedy and all that different kind of stuff like that. So, yeah, it's been two hours and we haven't seen too much. We haven't seen too much, uh, you know, peace. It's been nonstop war. Where are those Rams going? Yeah, no, definitely just take down the town center here. For Red, this is a great find too. The fact that he's got three relics is such a such a cash cow. Okay, the Rams. I mean, he could just kill him. I, I don't know why where he's thinks he's going with these Rams. Um, he's got some of the TC, which is good. Got uh, troops all over the city. It looks like he's just kind of attacking everything to an extent, going after the barracks, and yeah, now going to be hitting the TC down. I mean, it's going to be a win. It's certainly a bit of a slow bleed as well, but here they go. 
So over on the top side, we do have Ezra and Hunter getting ready to do Mortal Kombat with one another. It's a, it's gonna happen soon. As soon as Yellow pays the pays the price here, it's gonna be it's gonna be on. By the way, do we have any updates as to in game in game stuff? Anything going on like that? Hunter needs to wonder. No, 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 no. You do not wonder if you're Hunter unless Yellow's dead. When Yellow dies, you do it because what would happen is Red would pull out and and just leave Yellow, and then you have to deal with an extra player. And even though Yellow is very poor and weak right now. He could still find a way to make like 10 rams probably, which could make the difference between winning and losing the game. So um, I don't think purple is in any position to wonder. Ooh, Ezra is very close actually. Ezra could slap down a counter wonder almost. Ooh, that would be spicy. Although you never are going to beat China in a wonder race. Oh my God, it's going to be a reckoning guys. 79 Chinese villagers. You guys ready to see this? Right as it goes down. Hunter is playing possum still, huh? Yeah, he doesn't want a 3v1. Nobody wants that. 2v1 is the best. 3v1 is if, like, you know, if things are looking really good for you, you can still try. But 2v1 is, like, the standard 3v1, kind of. I'll always go for a 2v1 wonder, but 3v1 is tricky. All right. You ready? Wait, what is he doing? He's building walls. Oh, I don't think he has enough space for the wonder back here, does he? He does. Oh, my God. Just barely. Dude. Look at this going down. Oh, my God. Hunter is going to win this game so hard right now. Oh, my God. He's going to win it so hard. Like, he's just got, he's got such a good bank too, I bet. Yeah, he can just delete, like, all of his eco, almost. Like, and just have full armies. Oh, man. That's brutal, dude. Yeah, he had his finger on the trigger. He deleted all of his traders. And now we see red is going to have to move across the map. So yellow is done. Um, those relics are still there for grabs. You're going to want to get those if you can. <laughs> Do not put that cursed energy into the universe. <laughs> yeah. We'll see, man. We'll see. It's on, baby. I love Wonder Holds. Wonder Holds, like, in this situation are great. Um, granted, I think it's going to be pretty easy for China to hold this. Um, although, we'll see. I mean, Ezra is a really good player, and he does have great bombards. So, he does have great bombards. It depends. Red could do, like, a split push up the base. And, like, you know, maybe run, like, just an absolute steamroller through the Chinese base. And then, you know, maybe... Oh, baby! Look at this! Trebuchets in the hills! They might be able to reach. I think they can. I think Trebs right here could reach that wonder. So if he just creeps up through here, sets up like five siege workshops right there in Trebs, the problem is that's going to be very, very hard to, um, that's going to be very, very hard to find. All right, guys. So it's on. Um, this is going to be, a, this is going to be a tough hold. This is going to be a very, very tough hold here. Yeah. It depends on how Red gets his war engine going. Red is going to have to commit all into this. We obviously see the rating from uh, Dark Hunter Ezra. Ezra building up his infrastructure, which I'm surprised he didn't have already, considering he kind of knew this was coming. But the thing is, we're already um, we're already at the 13 minute and 30 mark. You know, it's getting close. So once again, defense from the Chinese looking pretty clean so far. Red is moving in with troopers into the base. Red could Red should just spam like 50 battering rams and just push through here right now and just steamroll that base. Um, looks like these guys are going to be pulling back. What are they going to be doing? Just going for lumberjacking here. Vulnerability up in the hills. I don't think anybody is going to be seeing this. All right, guys. The big wonder hold. I see a couple people saying they just joined in chat, which is pretty funny, the timing on that. But uh, here we go. Red setting up forward infrastructure. Good stuff. Good play from Red. I like that a lot. Um, these guns are not going to clear out the building super quickly, though. So you're going to need to get some siege workshops. That's the most important thing to build. Where are the siege workshops? Rams are coming. Oh, that's a shit ton of rams. He already has 18 rams in the pool. So he's going to be able to push in, guys. Oh, boy. So Ezra does have five great bombards. Um, he has time to push. The wonder currently sitting at 12 minutes and 38 seconds. Chi if you're China, you want to spam mass spring alds, nest of bees, and probably just like fight and choke points, which is what he's done. He's got 16 nest of bees. Only five spring alds, that might be a bit of a problem against the bombards. It could be, a, it could be, you know, not enough. So yeah, I mean, if he has good control with these bombard cannons, like he might be able to make progress. Um, like kind of how we've seen Quill do it in the past. Oh, the dreaded rams, they've arrived. And that's going to be 18 rams pushing down the pipe. I mean, you could go killing landmarks, um, but the last landmark is basically behind the wonder. So it, it's, it's not going to work. Ezra is Conqueror 3. Damn, impressive. All right, we'll see if he's going to be able to make it work. Ezra is going to be pushing from the top. I really like that idea. It's like a very direct shot to the wonder. And uh, China isn't as like buffed out there. Yeah, you can see the army's going to be heading to the north. 
On the south side, we do have the red push. So red is on their way over. There they go. The elite Ghulams and the crossbows are going to be uh, trying to work through buildings. It's going to take some time. Definitely want to get siege workshops here for Prime. Prime is in a position to maybe counter one or two afterwards. Yeah, he totally... Oh, no, he doesn't have the wood anymore, so... Yeah. Prime's economy is pretty bad at the moment. Is he trading? Oh, yeah, he found a market. Oh, my God, a 215 trade route. Oh, yeah, baby. Look at that. Look at that trade there. That is super good. All right, guys. 11 minutes and 13 seconds left on the Wonder Defense. The Rams are heading straight for the kill. The Bombard's clearing out walls. The fact that they do AoE damage is really, really cool. Oh, he's Conqueror 3 in team games. Oh, okay, that's way different. Yeah, Conqueror 1v1 is way harder to get than team. Like, I've seen people who are, like, platinum with Conqueror team games. Um, yeah, no, okay, that's very different. But even still, I would say Ezra is probably a Conqueror level player, for sure. Maybe he just doesn't play it as much. Yeah, man, brutal stuff. So the Duhasts are pushing through and making progress, but it looks like they're beelining it for the most part. I'm going to take this down. It's a little bit of a big, a big uh, banner there. Fortunately, it's a little clumsy. Is he going to try and knock down these walls? Let's see. The Rams are moving up, and yeah, they're making progress in the base. He's going straight for the backfield, which is a good call, instead of getting caught up there, I think. The Spring Alds are in position. Is Ezra going to be watching? All right, there he goes. Oh, big shots right there. Several Spring Alds have fallen. God damn, Great Bombards are so nasty. We just saw like four Spring Alds fall there. And is he going to repair them? It seems like a bit of a lapse in micro from Ezra. He needs to get through the gatehouse and swarm. He's just letting these Spring Alds go balls deep on his cannons. All right, now he's pulling back. He can repair behind the gatehouse and should be okay. He rips one more shot, takes down another spring ald, but this is going to be a tough one. The Ghulams have arrived on the southern border, and uh, they're still tearing through the Chinese base here. More uh, infrastructure being set up, including stables. It's, it's an okay spot. It's not like the... You probably would want to build a little bit closer, like up here. Um, that's still a bit far back to really support a wonder push, but, you know, it's all good. So what is he going to do? Is he coming in? Oh my god, he's got 19 great bombards. Dear god. Look at this. Oh my god, look at that. Dude, that is that is so much firepower. How are you going to stop that? How are you going to stop that? Oh my god, that is so much Daka. Where did he suddenly conjure that force from? All right, so Red's pushing. And, uh, yeah, dude, I don't know how you stop this army. Like, he's got his Spring Ald Legion. He's, the buildings are just getting mowed down. Um, currently, the Wonder is, yeah, sub nine minutes, though. A lot of it's going to come down to the artillery micro. We'll have to see. And, uh, yeah, he's going to need to start sniping these if he can. Oh, look at the Spring Alds just fold like paper, dude. They haven't even, they got, like, one Great Bombard at the cost of, like, six Spring Alds. All right. And they're moving. You can see Desperation Micro here from Hunter. Oh, God. They're just getting mowed. That is so brutal. Look how big and thick and veiny those cannons are, dude. Oh. The Chinese army just has no chances against that. Dear God. Ottoman Great Bombard stacks are just so disgusting. All right. Now the Janissaries and company should be able to just clean up these Palace Guard really, really quickly. Dude. This is what happened to me against Quill. It's the same thing. It's just, just sheer savage push. Okay, Spring Alts have kind of crept in a little bit. And you see the Nest of Bees are now getting into combat. Will the Great Bombards be able to finish off all the Chinese artillery? It looks like it. It's very satisfying, it is, for sure. Oh my god, the artillery is just going so quickly. Hunter does have really, really good bank, though. Um, he's going to be able to make pretty much units in, yeah, non-stop here. Let's take a look at how many Bombards are left. So currently we have 9 of the 19, so he has lost 10 of them, but he's made some good progress here. China is just bleeding units into it, um, which is going to give some openings to Red. Red is actually getting danger close. Like I said, that trebuchet position on the high ground, if Red is able to kind of piece those things together, that's going to be very strong. Okay, villagers coming, setting up towers. But right here, trebuchets could probably reach from the edge of this cliff, and that would just be brutal. That would be absolutely brutal. Okay, only two bombards left. Masterful defense there by Hunter. Very, very good stuff. He was able to hold that back, despite, like, most people would have folded up pretty quickly against that pressure. And now he's coming back to try and deal with Red. Red is getting in and ramming a lot of buildings down. Um, looking at Ezra currently. Not Ezra, but Hunter. Yeah, he still has his full housing infrastructure set up, so he's pretty comfortable there. Landmarks are going down. Looking at the Wonder Tracker, we're at six minutes left. And uh, there's going to have to be another Doom push coming in from uh, Dark Hunter Ezra here. Currently, let's see, does he have enough bank? No, I think that was pretty much it. Ezra does not have the bank to push. He's pretty poor. 
Currently, his wood and his gold is very, very low. Um, and China, yeah, China's just sniping away. Okay, Bombards are going to creep in, try and get some freebies. And they're not paying attention. And it looks like two Spring Alts go down here. Will he pull them back and repair them? Oh, man, the Spring Alts going for the snipe. Villagers on the repair. And the Bombards are now going to be back and repaired. China, though, still seeming pretty strong. I mean, 68,000 food and 15,000 gold is pretty good. Red's push. Um, he needs to get Siege Workshops up here. I wish I... I wish he would explore that, but yeah, I would miss that too if I was in the heat of action. Um, it's easy for me to say because I can see it, but that's um, a very niche thing right there. Yeah, it's a very niche thing. So once again, we got the push of doom and we do have Hunter cackling with six minutes left. Five minutes and 58 seconds now. He's got 19 spring alds, which is exactly what you need to stop the Ottomans. Exactly what you need to. And there's a lot of great bombards back. Looks like it's going to be seven of those. He's just going to knock down buildings. Might as well do whatever damage you can. Red's swarming in with Ghulams in all directions. And are we going to get siege workshops? Looks like it's going to be barracks. As trebuchets are coming. Okay, guys. Oh, the blessed. Blessed be the trebuchets. Are they going to notice it? And is Dark Hunter Ezra going to deal with this? Not Dark Hunter Ezra. Excuse me, Hunter. I don't know why I'm getting him confused. Just happening a little bit. Bombards creeping up. Got to be start, start ripping some shots. Um, wood is non-existent, though for the Chinese. So as the Chinese start to lose these spring alls, ladies and gentlemen, uh, they're not going to be able to replenish them very easily. I don't know if they have a marketplace. Maybe they could buy some wood. That's probably what's going to happen. A lot of these palace guard are going to be mowed down. They definitely should not be pushing into the keeps. They're going to take massive casualties. Artillery moves up. Bombards do pull back for now. Red creeping in with a trebuchet position. Looks like China does have a defensive force. So good multi-faceted uh, defense here from our Chinese player. Now the Ghulam's going to rush forward to intercept them and the trebuchets are knocking down what appears to be a uni. But he's probably just going to dive the artillery. No, he's actually just going to stand and fight. Um, but yeah, diving these trebuchets would be a huge power play. That'd be very strong. More rams on the way up. And uh, is he going to discover this niche application here? Maybe. So the mass artillery corps here. Uh-oh. Looks like the Ottomans get a couple of freebies. He's not paying attention. He's distracted in the south in the Ottoman infantry. The sappers, they move in in the night. They take down a lot of these artillery pieces. Brutal, brutal. That's going to be a pretty devastating loss there, because Ezra seems to be committing a lot to dealing with this push on the side. The Ghulam's able to clean up the forces, Ram's moving, and siege workshops are going to be set up here, but oh, those villagers could die. That would be really, really painful. Ghulam's creeping up. More knights and fire lanterns being called out from China on all directions. Somehow China still has some infrastructure down here. No idea how that's going down. And uh, yeah, it's a big fight on two fronts, guys. The bombards are moving. It's a slow push, but you can't be too slow. There's only four minutes left, but I mean, the wonder isn't that far away. You know, like if one or two things go very bad for the Chinese here, they're going to fold up. And uh, they have to be very, very on point with their micro. Palace Guard rushing in. Going to be able to drag down a couple units. Most likely going to be mowed down themselves by the Great Bombards. Oh no, the Great Bombards are going... Oh, they're trying to drive the Spring Alts. Okay. They're going to take casualties here. One Spring Alt goes down. Looking at Dark Hunter Ezra, he does have enough to make a couple more Great Bombards. He has a little bit of time. Palace Guard trying to snipe this on the south side. The Ghulams, have they gotten the job done? We do see a couple Siege Workshops coming up. Battering ramps being chased by Palace Guard all over the place. And how is the bank of Hunter looking? Hunter is basically out of wood, so you're just going to be seeing gold units, aka Palace Guard. Although he still has a lot of Spring Alls. He probably had them queued from earlier, which is why uh, they're still coming out. Because he just had a lot like queued up in the back. 3 minutes and 13 seconds. Honestly looking pretty good for the defenders here. There's still several layers and also keeps to get through. Um, at this point, you probably pull all your villagers if you're China. And you park them back by the wonder for desperation repairs would be my guess. Or just torch down this great bombard. I mean, that's going to be a great play as well. Um, Siege Workshop's trying to make trebuchets. I think he may have discovered that high ground position. A lot of palace guard coming in. And uh, the Ghulams should trade into them. Ghulams are just tankier and do more damage. Palace guard also have less armor at the cost of speed, right? If I'm not mistaken. So, yeah, the Ghulams going to be able to do that. Trebs on the way, which I do like. Yeah, he knows it's there. He knows it's there. Okay, this is going to be really tight. Two minutes and 38 seconds. The Ottomans are getting closer and closer, but it is a game of inches, ladies and gentlemen, as on the top side, or Great Bombardiers are coming out. The Chinese army is starting to kind of fold up a little bit under the dual-pronged pressure, but so far it's been an excellent hold. Two minutes and 23 seconds. Oh, man, he's, he, needs to, um, he needs to delete it. He doesn't have enough supply. Prime is keeping all of his eco. He needs to delete some villagers because his trebuchets are not coming out. Okay, there they are. Trebs are popping out. Hunter's army is basically just bleeding into this. The Ghulams are just dominating them in combat. And now we're going to find out if the trebuchets are going to be able to rush to the top, ladies and gentlemen. Here they come. One treb, two treb. The ghulams just being absolute chads, fighting off the palace guard army. Meanwhile, the Ottomans, uh, are they going to break down any walls here? It doesn't look like it. The villagers got pulled, and they were able to get it. And yes, like I said, the forbidden angle. 
A minute 48? Oh, it's taking damage. Oh my god, is it gonna be the, is red gonna be the hero that they need? The Chinese desperately fighting to get through, but more trebuchets are on the way up. Palace Guard rushing, good play here. If he can kill those trebuchets, that's gonna be super strong. Yep, look at that. It's going down. The Wonder's taking some damage. But the Palace Guard diving in the micro is really, really good. Man, I would imagine that his APMs are like 5,000 right now. He's just moving so much across the field. And the Wonder is going to get repaired. It is taking a little bit of damage. We do see a minute 23. Ezra is getting danger close. He's got, oh, oh yeah, eight trebs. All he needs to do is like park like right here and he's going to be able to get it. So they're moving in. Great Bombard knocking down the walls. Knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door. And the ram's coming down. Yeah, no rams. Excuse me, the keep. Things are getting a little crazy here. Um, currently looking at the bank. Is Ezra out of steam yet? Let's take a look at his resources. Or not Ezra, but Hunter. Goddamn. Uh, yes, he is out of steam. He's not going to be able to produce any more units. Jesus, take the wheel. He's basically done here. Whatever damage is done to that wonder from here on out is going to be enough. Palace Guard fighting valiantly up here. Ghulams. He needs to delete things, though. His trebuchets need to come out and start moving. This is a, a big blunder. Okay, here they go. So here comes the Trebs. The last of the Palace Guard is going to be taken down. Oh my god. 38 seconds left. Look at the Trebuchet Legion moving into position. Trebs up on the high ground too. I think the Wonder is just barely going to hold. I think it's barely going to hold. So taking a look at this. 28 seconds left. That is going to be the longest 28 seconds of his life. Beautiful micro here from Hunter. Beautiful micro. He's sniping every Treb that tries to get in. And the high ground traps probably aren't going to be enough. There's only going to be, oh, there are some coming, but they just won't get there quick enough. As we have another seven or eight seconds left, and Hunter is going to hold back the 2v1. GG, well played. What a close one. It's getting nuked, and he is dead in the water, guys. With three seconds left, Hunter claims victory. Wow. That was so close. GG, well played. Great defense. Great defense. High micro. Super sweaty. And he still got it. Oh my god, that was incredibly good, Micro. Wow. I need a drink after that game. Of, of course, I'm going you know, some sparkly water. I'm not going to get too crunk here on stream. But um, let me go to the Discord and see uh, the 1v1 game we got going. GG, well played. GG, well played. <laughs> Who's up in 1v1? All right, let's find it out. So we're going to cast a 1v1 game here. What a match. Let's look at the economies. So yeah, that was nuts. He, another 30 seconds and he's dead. He's toast. He is absolutely toast. That was crazy. That was a crazy good game. Conquer one, 1v1 fell apart. People sleep. No worries. No worries. Um, nope. He can do another FFA. All good. All right. So I'm going to go grab some water. I'll be right back. That was a super good game. All right, I'm back. Holy shit, that was a good game. That was a really, really scrappy game. So let's get another one set up here. Um, all right, so. All right, looking around here. Hunter had 229K gold that game. Jeez, that's crazy. Um, there was somebody who was going to shoot me a message here. Okay, cool. Seeing if this gentleman's here. There was somebody earlier who had tr has been having trouble getting in a game, so I was going to see if they wanted to host. If they don't respond to me in the next two minutes, we'll just fire one up. So, But I, I want to give them the opportunity to get in there and uh, conquer. One sec. Yeah, but stand by one sec. Okay, I think he's offline now. Host a Thunderdome. 
Alrighty. So we're going to have the old Gunhound host a Thunderdome. Uh, host a... I, let's do Island, actually. So Island... Um, and we can do pick any pick any of the island maps. Some water action. All right, cool. So Gunhound is going to be hosting it up. Our very own shout out to Gunhound. If you guys don't know, he basically runs and you know kind of manages all the Age of Empire stuff in the community and does a great job. He's just an awesome person. So the old Gunhound's going to host this one up here. Oh, we're going to see what they do. Oh, migration could be fun. Yeah, migration. Let me uh, let me tell Gunhound that. Okay, uh, migration. Migration water maybe. That could be really fun where they start and they have to like land on the uh, shores. That makes for a really fun game. Man, that uh that game was crazy. That was like such a sweaty competitive game. It was really really good. GGs, yeah. No kidding. All right, so let's get friend requests here. All right, so I'm excited. I wish I was playing tonight, dude. This game, this is that was like looking so fun. Age of Empires is such a good game. Yeah, Brendan. So if you want to play, um, you need to join our Discord community and just make sure you pick the Age of Empires role in our Discord. And you, dude, we'd love to get you involved in games and stuff. Just come join. We'll uh, have we'll we'll get Discord links here in a second. Let me let me fire that up. So a little bit of a breather between now and the next game. Um, let me get this. Here's a link. All right, there you go. So yeah, if you guys want to join, um, do that. And then I think you go to the top of the Discord and there's like a something where you select the, the role that you want. So whatever game you're interested. So that makes it so you don't get pings for um, other games that you don't care about. So that's how we that's how we do it. Because we, we cover a lot of stuff in our community. We do a lot, a lot of stuff. So. Man, what a match, dude, what a match. Well, like, oh, of course, I'm going to cover the expansion pretty heavily. I, yeah, I don't have like any early access or anything like that, but when it does come out, I'm going to be hosting um, 1v1 tournaments and FFAs and all sorts of stuff. Yeah, we'll, we'll be hitting it pretty hard when it comes out. Oh, dude, Colin, who cares if you're a noob? Join, join in there and create create a legend for yourself. You could be the Lord of Spears like, uh, like Masso once was. Yeah. Then you evolve and become a tyrant. Uh, we're doing we're gonna do the FFA Actually All right, cool, so gunhound should have the lobby up uh, All different players so no repeats from the previous game So we should have more or less 16 unique players in these matches tonight Yeah, quill is great. He's great. Oh uh, No, we're not gonna do the 1v1s. Yeah, we're not gonna do that uh, some of the people who were doing it went to bed and it just got kind of disorganized. So now we're gonna we're gonna just get this game going. Um, Gunhound does have a lobby open, so if you guys want to join it, um, that's how you get in. Anybody's welcome. Uh, let's see if I could even find it. Multiplayer, custom. I don't even know what it'd be called. Usually, you just got to refresh a little bit. Or if you're on his friends list, you can you can join directly through that. You might want to add him on your your friends list there. All right, cool. That was a very aggressive match. Very aggressive. Yeah, there was like, usually there's like more static play with like wonders. You know, that's kind of the thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're talking, they're, uh, they're talking about the uh, politics in the old, uh, in the old discord there. Gunhound is hosting. It's first come, first serve. Future reference and me slash hounds. All right, cool. So they should be starting any second and yep, looks like the lobby is apparently full, which is gonna be good. Awesome, I stumbled across your channel a while back, fell in love with it. Hey, I appreciate that, man. I, I, I love playing this game. Like, so I started doing YouTube with Total War, right? And Total War has like one of the most awful multiplayer infrastructures ever it's just atrocious so coming to a game that has like functional multiplayer with like servers and like a, a rank system that's actually good it's like it's such a breath of fresh air sometimes and don't get me wrong i still love total war but um this is the, like playing this is just so cool you know 
Yeah, for that reason. Like, Total War's multiplayer system is so shitty. It's so haggard. Excuse my language, but it's like, <laughs> it's so bad. Hmm. Come on, Gunhound. Get that game started. I know you're there. I know he's scheming. All right. Let's see. Have they done it? I think we're doing migration, um, which is going to be the water map where you start off in like an island and then you move. Then you move over. Sad moves for Total War multiplayer. Dude, I know. It's so rough. <laughs> Lord, no worries. No worries, man. Well, Total War multiplayer is like so close to greatness. That's the worst part. Because like the, the, the universe of Warhammer is so awesome. Like the, the models and the units fighting look so good in Total War. But like just then like the servers... Total War Warhammer 3 has been out for like, what, like two years? Like a year and a half, however? I, I don't even know. And it, it like still doesn't have a functional leaderboard. on. <laughs> like it's so janky, dude. It's so janky. Yeah, I don't know, man. It's really depressing. You know, have I touched Pharaoh? I have zero interest in Pharaoh. It, it, it's a, it looks like it's more about the campaign, which I don't care. I care about PvP, you know? My analogy for gaming is like, you guys remember that, that story, The Most Dangerous Game? From back in the day, it was, uh, oh God, it must be, the server must be like, what is it? A hundred years plus old? Oh, let me look, hold on. I want to get this right. This is like my analogy for why, what I like in gaming though. The most dangerous game. Um, it was written in 1924, I think. Wait, yeah, 1924. So it's basically about this lunatic <laughs> who, you know, he, he ends up like, he, he doesn't like, like the AI is like the wildlife hunting, but then eventually he starts hunting the humans on his island because they actually like, you know, it's a challenge, you know, whereas, um, you know, the AI is not so fun. So yeah, yeah, it's, it's great. All right, guys. Yeah, Ice-T was in that movie. It was a book originally, but. All right, guys, we got migration. Let's party. Let's have some fun. I want to thank you guys all for joining. And uh, spawning over here as our yellow player, it is going to be Gunhound. Over to the east, we have Rexosaurus. Over to the east of that, it's going to be Bob on the French. To the east here, it is going to be our Delhi Sultanate champion, who is going to be butter on my teeth. <laughs> to the south, we have Ethelred. A lot of new players in here today. Very cool. It's fun to see that. To the southwest, we have Professor Finbar, one of our local champions. And to the west, we have yet another Delhi player playing on the Dark Age Rush. Or Dark Age Rush playing Delhi. Oh my god. It's getting it's getting a little bit crazy. It's getting a little bit crazy. Over to the northwest, we have Fish Fish Fry. <laughs> Why do we have a lot of strange names in here in this game? We have like several very, very strange names, but overall it looks like he's gonna be Mongols as well. Mongols can't smeagol as hard on this map, you know. You can kinda you can kinda uh you know work a little bit on the mainland, but overall it's not as much of a golem map. T-Rex push-up says, money on my brother Rexosaurus. Show us the quality of the T-Rex <laughs> the T-Rex goon squad here. Yeah, I love it. So yeah, there are a couple sacred sites. I believe there's, is it two? Only two on this island? Wow. So talk about the value of the east side of the island, right? The east side of the island is going to be money. I mean, having two sacred sites there is big, big business. And Ram Spam isn't going to be as good here simply because of the fact there's not a lot of wood on this map. Um, not a lot. Naval trading is only possible if you take if you take someone out and leave their dock. So naval trading could be a big player in this game too. We'll have to kind of keep tabs as we go forward and see how the naval play comes out. The suspiciously fried fish, yeah, it is. Yeah, that was that was a lot of what we uh, had when we were in the UK it was uh, fried fish and that sort of stuff and fish and chips, which actually isn't bad. It's kind of fun to go to a pub in the UK with some pals and have some fish and chips and a nice beer or something. Always fun. But um, nonetheless, no real action yet. Obviously we're very early. So people are gonna be just, you know, kind of getting their island mojo going. First fishing boat's gonna be popping out. And uh, there's, I think one relic on each island. Let's see, so red sitting on a relic here. We do have one and up on the top, one relic here. I believe every player does have one relic, which is good. So nobody got screwed over. Sometimes like on maps, you can run into situations where like everybody gets one except one player who's just all sad in the corner. But yeah, this is a, I, I like this map. I love how there's like one trade post in the middle that everybody has to like kind of fight over. It's like, it's like King of the Hill sort of, um, but with the trade post instead sitting in the middle. I think it's the only one on the entire map is that, that dead center trade post right there. 
Yeah, there is a weird void of fish. This is like this is like the great the great desolation here. Like the dragon Smaug flew over this and uh, discovered there was no fishing here, which is very weird. Thankfully, Orange, it looks like they initially set up and then saw there was no deep sea fish in sight, so they moved over to the west side, which is good. So fish, fish, fish fry is going to be good. Uh, okay, question from chat says, fish and chips or bangers and mash? Bangers and mash all day. The best thing about like English cuisine was their breakfasts. I would say I wasn't like terribly impressed with any of the dinner food we had in the UK, but the, um, and I have pretty low standards, but the, yeah. um, the breakfast food, like we went to this breakfast, like diner place in England in Horsham and it was, it was really good. Like the, the beans were pretty solid and the, and the sausages and the puddings and different things like that. It was good. It was good. But nothing will beat the first experience I had in the UK, which was Weatherspoons. The very first establishment I ever went into after being dropped off by the car was Weatherspoons. Yeah, a magical, magical establishment. All sorts of creatures of the night and goblins and and uh, yeah, some weird characters in there. Just alcoholics waiting at like 9 a.m. to get drunk. Yeah, it's truly magical. Uh, all right, so all's calm. Nobody's colonized yet. I think we have the first of the uh, individuals looking to colonize the island. It is going to be... Uh, Bob, so Bob, the Dreadlord of RTS, apparently, is going to be moving in and looking to uh, try and claim some stake here on the island. And what civ is he? So he's playing the French. Okay, French can definitely get some nice perks. Like their uh, their their eco buildings are a little bit cheaper to make, so that's like a small perk to kind of expanding on the island and things like that. And uh, yeah, they're gonna they're gonna try and find a spot. It's it gets really crazy too. Like when people start getting territorial over the island. Yeah, the, the the fighting erupts very quickly on this map and it's also really funny to see somebody be like a corsair lord like an island lord like sometimes people get bullied off of the um island but then they just kind of like settle around the seven seas and they're trying to um you know become the pirate lord trading with some dead docks or something like that yeah weather spoons was pretty fun i mean we didn't know weather spoons was like haggard when we went there like we, we were both starving. It was me and Italian Spartacus, and we arrived at the English, uh, like, in the town at, like, 7 a.m., and we were both so hungry. And the first place that opened up where our hotel was was Weatherspoons, and we were like, oh, this looks like a nice place. Let's get in here. And, uh, you know, the rest is history, so truly magical. Council hall going down. Yep, yep, not a bad idea. Usually you want to have, like, I would say, like, two landmarks on the mainland and two on your island, although... Sometimes your island can get absolutely wrecked by ships. So one option that's not bad is to slap down like a Berkshire Palace on your mainland island, which can annihilate boats pretty effectively, especially if you put it on the backside because the boats can't like swarm in as easily. So slapping down like a Berkshire on the backside to defend and make sure you don't get landmark snipes can be good and you can like master pair it with bills, um, that type of thing. So yeah, pretty neat. Council Hall is here. So that is gonna give the English a pretty good foothold on the island for England, James. They're going to be forcing all the locals to eat their bangers and mash and uh, their fish and chips. Up to the north, we have uh, the deli. So certainly probably some more delicious food in their repertoire as they are getting to work on this gold vein. No big, uh, usually it's uh, like TCs are one of the first things you see on the island or, or your second landmark and then a TC. But yeah, you're going to be see, the, see the stone get hit very hard right here. And uh, kind of a strange choice to go for deer from Bob. Um, like, you should just spam fishing ships for food early. Like, this is a big waste of resources. They should be going for wood and or stone right now to get the eco going. 100%. Now, over to the west, we do have Gunhounds setting up the Silver Tree. Very good call. Silver Tree on the main island is going to allow you to trade almost instantly. And you can park Silver Tree up on the peninsula here, most likely, and get some very uh, nice narrow trading going down that way. So that could be good for sure. Over to the west, we do have the Mongols. And these Mongols not even making an attempt to play the mainland. So maybe Fish Fish Fry wants to be a Lord of the Seven Seas, which is certainly a very bold strategy, Cotton. We'll see if it works out for him. It certainly could. But Tower of Victory for the Delhi Sultanate for Dark Age Rush. All setting up an outpost. You always want to get an outpost right away to make sure you don't get pushed off the island too quickly. England getting longbows out. Um, looks like it's only two. And yeah, they're getting sewn, which again, setting up TCs on the mainland is super important because you run out of gold on your island pretty damn quick, right? Like, they've already gone through 500 gold on their main island. So you need to fight over all these places. You need to fight over all those goodies. Yeah, there's not really any deep sea fish on the main island. Yeah, it's an interesting observation. Only shoreline. The deep sea fish, as the name would infer, is going to be out in the deep sea here. So, yeah, no, it's fun. I'm excited to see what schemes they have. 
Council Hall up to four longbows. They could definitely go do some serious trolling, but uh, not so much here. The outpost is already set up, but a lot of villagers are going to be landing for pink. Oh no, Professor Finbar. <laughs> the Ottoman's going to be fleeing. I think they saw the council hall and they realized that that was like just pure danger over there. I like that England is taking a piece of the pie though. So we see England setting up their wall network here and they're going to be walling off their own little piece of the empire. And uh, yeah, this is, this is really nice play here by Ethelred. I like that a lot. Over here, Delhi with the Tower of Victory. The Tower of Victory does give 20% attack speed to infantry. So that's pretty cool. So I believe the spears and men at arms and all those sorts of guys can benefit from that one if you want to do some early pushing. 20% attack speed is a pretty substantial buff. Yeah, it looks like everybody's made it to the island. I think the only one who hasn't. So orange has a presence here. Yellow has a presence right here, the Gunhound. Up to the due north, we have Rexasaurus, the HRE, setting up the Regnitz Cathedral already on the island. Wow, is he going to be able to get relics, though, is the question. Uh, most of the relics are kind of guarded and or on the other side of the island. So checking Rexasaurus. Has he scouted? He's scouting now. So he's looking for relics, and it doesn't look like he's found any yet. Um, he's about to discover one relic. So Regnitz right in the middle of the island is a pretty bold play. Uh, Jaren, there are no Abasid players right now. Abasid are really risky on this map. You pretty much have to set up like your House of Wisdom probably on the mainland um, and a TC here, and like getting sniped out of the game is very, very possible. But yeah, we saw the Abasid being terrors last game. Like man, like Prime was so, so powerful in the last game we were in. Castle Age being reached by HRE, that's really quick. Um, but again, on water, that's pretty normal. Um, usually when you have access to water, HRE can get there very, very quickly. Might be looking to push Gunhound out. We do see Spearmen coming out of the barracks, and they do have some nice upgrades. And we are going to be getting the first religious characters out. Immediately getting a rally point over to the Relic, which is quite good. England setting up their little empire here. Cackling all the way to the bank in the north. Delhi is going to be making a combination of Spears and Men at Arms. Looks like just Spear production right now. And uh, Delhi definitely should get the Sacred Site. The Sanctity gives you a ton of money. Uh, it's really good. And Compound of the Defender, 1000% the right choice. It makes us keep spamming so much easier. The keeps are just way, way cheaper. So I like that a lot. Town Center going down for French. Single Knight doing it. And nobody getting too crazy yet. Nobody getting too crazy. It is all calm and everything is good. Can Longbows play stakes in multiplayer? Yes, they can. People just don't do it. Because oftentimes when you're placing the stakes, uh, the palings, they, they stand still, so you lose a lot of position. Oftentimes, it's better to just scoot and shoot and run away and try and get to your spears um, rather than let yourself get surrounded and get caught in a bad position. So, hey, you know, I see some people in chat who are saying they're new players. Come join our, come join us, come play. It's fun. You're going to get better really quick playing with players. You'll improve exponentially faster than you would practicing against AI. And but it depends. Whatever you enjoy, of course. But don't be shy. Get in there. Everybody's going to, you know, suffer. And you can even ask around and. Uh, and just say, hey, is anyone newer? Are there any new players who want to get a small game going? You know, that type of thing. We have a pretty active community, so it shouldn't be too hard. Um, so far, one relic has been grabbed by the HRE, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, they did get it. Friar Tuck is hustling. He's got the hand of some saint or something in there. I don't know what. So it could be some other object. And yeah, no aggression on the islands yet. Um, Delhi looks like they might get a little bit crazy. They're producing men-at-arms in pretty serious numbers. They're going to have an attack speed upgrade. Compound of the Defender, pumping that up. Stone is obviously going to be really good. Slapping down a keep will make it that much harder to push you off the island. And I wouldn't be surprised to see HRE go kind of hard in the paint. I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, losing an... So somebody is saying you might lose, uh, but losing... it. Yeah, losing is fun in FFA, exactly. It's it's not like as... When you lose a 1v1, it definitely is a... More, it takes a different mindset. But in FFA, when you lose, it's like... Even some of the best players in our community lose like probably 60% of the time, 70%. You know what I'm saying? Um, like, yeah, like I would say like our top players probably have like a 33% win rate in FFA, right? Uh, of all the games they play in. So that's like, you know, that's, don't worry about it. It's all good. It's the pinky of Satan. It's my, it's my pinky. Yes. My name is Nicholas. White Tower going up. I like that. Securing the sacred site while also being out of range of the coastline. England is a very solid sieve here um, because if England can secure the middle, they can just slap down a million farms in Berkshire and then they're going to be able to get a sacred victory potentially and also have the um, infinite gold from their farms, which is going to be very desirable on this map. All right, so it looks like Hardened Spearmen and some men at arms going to be hustling across to try and uh, secure this. Delhi going to be dropping its own keep, but only sending over a couple villagers. White Tower is here. Okay, Delhi looking to get crazy. But the English are going to be getting that white tower up 
before the threat is able to get through the gatehouse. Um, the keep is going to be there. It might help secure that, but it looks like we're going to be having our first Mortal Kombat here. Wow, he canceled the keep. Interesting. I thought you could still slap it down over the top side, and it would keep England from taking that away from you. So that's something to consider. But yeah, overall, it is going to be Delhi battling it out with old uh, the old English right here. Up on the top side, we already see Mortal Kombat. Oh, poor Gunhound. He's still in the potato age. Oh no, Gunhound's getting Quirrell tie, but very slowly. And he's got a pretty angry HRE player next to him who appears to be getting some pretty sauce military. So Gunhound could resort to being an island goblin this game where he's just kind of forced out into the seven seas. But Mongols are one of the best civs for that because of piracy. So you can get this. And every time you sink an enemy fishing ship, you get a lot of, re not a lot, but a respectable amount of resources. So um, Mongol piracy definitely could be the way that Gunhound is going to want to play this game. All right, so the Coral Tide is getting torched. Um, Gunhound counter raiding. Look at the Mango Dog getting into the base. But overall, I think that he's going to probably end up losing this fight. Although he does take down a fair amount of those HRE villagers. The Coral Tide does get shut down there. So that is going to be a pretty big loss there from Gunhound. Oh, no. And Gunhound didn't cancel the Coral Tide. So he didn't get his refund on resources. Gunhound basically just lost like 1,200 resources, like 1,800 resources. That's brutal. Very painful stuff. Meanwhile, Mortal Wombat down here. We do have the Longbowmen uh, battling it out with the uh, Men at Arms. And, uh, you know, the Delhi Men at Arms do have the attack speed buff. No ranged upgrades on them yet. Delhi should be getting all their free upgrades. Let's take a look here. Dark Age Rush. Yep, he's got all the tech coming along. So very, very well played there. And that is going to be some heavy duty fighting there indeed. Over to the other side, another standoff. I like this is This map is, like, developing very well. We're getting a lot of, like, little skirmishes, you know. A lot of players looking to do Mortal Kombat with one another. Spring All Towers chilling for the Mongols. It's going to be Mongols versus the Ottomans here. Ottomans, I do not believe... They don't have the yeah, any military schools here yet, do they? They might have set some up on their main island. Man, the Ottomans ended up in a weird spot, too. They ended up, like, like across from, like, where Blue is. Very, very strange deployment indeed. So the English haven't taken away the Sacred Site from Delhi yet, which they're going to regret. It's going to give Delhi quite a bit of power. Delhi slapping up its second keep, and what's really badass about Delhi is when you get your upgrade here, the village fortresses, you can make town center of villagers from your keeps, which is so incredibly cool. So then, you know, Delhi goes fast castle, they secure relics, they do that. Um, really, really fun civ to play. I've been really enjoying them in 1v1 as well. So yeah, Traction Trebuchet is moving. Pink's probably going to get pushed off this island. We'll see. Mehmed Imperial Armory coming up, though. That's going to be pretty good. Um, he does have spears and archers, but oh man, those archers, yeah, that's not a very strong army. Just macroing out. The Mongols going to be diving. They don't have too many Kashyyyks in the force, though, so the spears might actually be pretty cost-effective here. And the Mehmed Armory is going to immediately probably be trained on to making a Mangunel, which will be effective for sure, defending and holding and all the sorts of good stuff like that. Over on the other side, Gunhound is just embracing his, uh, his true Mongol uh, raiding roots here as he's going after buildings and just harassing. But the HRE, I'm surprised they're not responding to this. The HRE army here, these veteran spearmen, could <clears throat> easily just move up there and push them back. Yeah, it looks like now they're going, but the Mangu are going to be kiting him. Uh, this tower does have a spring alden placement, so that should be enough to hold back the Mongol raiding. Counterweight Trebuchet is going to be getting in position, and I think the old Gunhound is going to be getting sent back to the uh, to the Seven Seas for now. Uh, does he have any trade? You could pull a Smeagol. Smeagol used to, lo he, he loves trading with people's docks, even when they're like alive. So you just like get your dock and send like 30 traders to somebody's dock. And a lot of times they don't notice and you can actually get like a ton of money. And it's, it's really funny. Big push coming in from Fish Fish here. He's got Manganels out and the Ottomans are going to be very hard pressed to hold this. Although it looks like he's being a little bit conservative with this push. He's just kind of slow trebbing, not wanting to get too hard here. Wow, Corsair Lord. Okay, so Butter, uh, we're just going to call him Butter here. Butter does have a lot of Baglaws, and he actually punishes the old uh, English Navy. This is where the Berkshire Palace on the coastline would be very good, because it pretty much diminished this push. Berkshire could easily take all these Baglaws. And England's going to be losing a lot of these. Oh, yeah, look at that. Yeah, Thunderd Thunderdome, interestingly enough, I agree with you. Thunderdome maps take a long time. It's pretty funny. This one will be varying range. It's, it's going to be a little bit different. King of the Hill is probably the fastest one. It's one of the faster maps, although, I don't know, I've had some long games on that. So England has lost its entire fishing fleet. Very poor timing for that. And now they're being attacked by the Delhi and should be able to hold. Especially if they pull back to the White Tower and or fight in a choke point like this, they should be pretty secure. Delhi's macroing pretty aggressively though. We see Knights and Gula and uh, what are they called? Uh, they're called the uh, Ghazi Riders, that's right. Yeah, so the Ghazi Riders coming out and Ghulams. Oh, that is for the Abbasid. Certainly getting them a little bit confused here. 
Gunhound basically in the can now. Um, he's lost his town center. He should have packed it up and ran it. His silver tree is fleeing the scene. And the old hound, he's he's a scrapper though. He's gonna find a way. Looks like Gunhound does have his island and is setting up the coral tie. Oh no, I don't, I don't think I don't know if you can load the coral tie into a boat. So setting up coral tie on the main island is rough. Um, I guess like you don't really have good options. Step read out on the island also sucks, and you need to age up. You can't just sit in age two here. So Gunhound is gonna be the first uh, exile. He's gonna be the first corsair lord, and uh, that is going to be that. Now, down to the south side, we see the old Delhi fleet hammering down the old English. So the English on the island are definitely very trapped up. Granted, they have a really good presence on the mainland, though, so they should be pretty comfortable. Um, I'm curious where he's going to be slapping down the Barkshire. And Bob actually going to the Imperial Age. Up top, we have the French. Wow, the French are looking real tyrannical here. So I look away for a second, and this French player is Imperial Age. He's got knights and Arb uh, arbalists as well. He's got the Red Palace, which is like landmark sniping his opponent. Red Palace does so much damage. Look how quickly the Red Palace is killing the enemy landmark here. That is insane. Okay, wow. Very cool stuff indeed. Now across here, we do have trebuchets knock knocking on Heaven's Door. The English in the deli having a bit of a blood feud, but I can't help but think that the uh, butter, butter is going to get rolled probably because he's got a lot invested in just a big Chungus Navy of Buglaz. But like that, that's not going to yield much on the land, right? And the French are just going to steamroll them, and we're going to have another Corsair Lord here in a second. So, yeah, that's the only downside of casting games is we can't see the um, politics, right? Like the politics are definitely one of the most fun elements of the game, but it's also cool to see everything that's going on. Mm. Down to the south side, a little bit of coastal warfare. Uh, Orange is doing what? He's got junks and war junks, and he's doing a little bit of a push on the side we do have the duel between these two players so professor finbar and fish fry looks like they're having it out um very very cautious engagements with one another gunhound is <laughs> look, at, look at gunhound oh man yeah when gu when gunhound dies he'll be our in-game correspondent yeah gunhound's i don't think anybody's gonna kill him anytime soon i think he's he's just kind of gonna be an island gremlin he needs to try and get trade ships going is what he needs. It looks like he's building war junks. And he did not get the piracy upgrade yet, um, which is definitely a big mistake. HRE heading to the coastline. Oh my god, are the HRE going to try and land? So we see a Hulk. Um, I don't see any transport ships coming. I was going to say, it kind of... Oh god, not the hiccups. Oh my god, he's actually going to kill Gunhound. Oh no. Oh, he wants it. Dude, he's going for that. He's coming for that booty. Oh man. I mean, it's not a huge army. The TC might be able to defend. I don't know why he didn't load up everything there, but yeah, now he's going back to load up more. He's Rex is actually going for the kill on Gunhound. He's trying to deliver us an in-game correspondent here. So he needs. he's going to need the trebuchet, though, to really get it done. Gunhound is going to... does have the Coral Tie. Um, could make some desperation military there and maybe hold if he responds quick enough, but he's going to start losing units right away. Oh, no. He's going for it. Merciless, dude. Yeah, I know. Another batch of units going to come. TC... It's going to be fully garrisoned here in a second. In the meantime, we see the Corsair Lord. Butter, Butter is just the Lord of the Seven Seas, dude. He is he has yielded his land presence to the French. Uh, the French are going to be very happy with their Red Palace there. And yeah, dude, he is just he is just sailing around killing everybody's fleets, which is hilarious. But yeah, Gunhound could be in big danger. He's trying to panic build keeps, which is going to be tough. The HRE troopers are pretty resilient. Um, we do see a trebuchet shooting into him. And Gunhound's just going to lose so many villagers here. So many villagers. <laughs> Oh no, it's a massacre and he jumps in the tower. But those HRE troopers have two ranged armor, which means they're not going to give any shits whatsoever. So England is actually losing this fight. I didn't expect that. Delhi usually wouldn't probably trade super well with the English um, in a like a choke point fight. But it seems like Dark Age Rush is playing a little bit cleaner with the artillery and has a better army comp. Um, so yeah, England might get forced back to the island as well. Gunhound uh, has lost his silver tree. It is actually dead in the base of Dark Age Rush. And here, the HRE men at arms just going to be torching down the base. A uh, gunhound, 100% toast. Unless, like, some divine intervention, the hand of God comes down and just, like, smites these Holy Roman troopers, which I don't suspect the Jesus would want to do. Um, it's going to be the end for him. He does have some war junks, but they're not able to reach the main army here. The TC is going to be on fire soon. Gunhound might start repairing this. His Coral Tide. <laughs> his Coral Tide. Oh, that's so funny. So Gunhound's going to run his Coral Tide to the coast so he can protect it with his fleet. It's like the jankiest shit ever. All right, big fight over here. We do have Delhi, and it looks like they're having a successful push against the Knights here. And the White Tower is probably going to hold them for a moment, but there are two trebuchets, and the Trebs are going to be switching onto the White Tower here. 
I would wager, but yeah, England are a very tough sieve to break. And big naval fights, actually. We have like these random skirmishes all over the place. Dark Age Rush does have his Beglaws, and he's doing battle with Professor Finbar randomly. I think he's trying to get over here, maybe, to the uh, to the English base, or he's raiding the English base, I suspect. Yeah, so White Tower at 5,000 HP. It looks like the Trebuchets are shooting uh, what appears to be the Blacksmith, which is an interesting choice. But yeah, they'll eventually get through there. Now, up on the top side, Gunhound, his TC is basically dead. He did not try and repair it. And it looks like the HRE did get their relic from Gunhound. They got their prize. Gunhound, I think, is hiding his Kuril tie somewhere. Yeah, he's hiding it on the coastline. <laughs> oh my god, dude. He's just barely hanging in there. He might live, though. It depends on how hard um, Rexosaurus goes for the kill. Like, if Rex brings reinforcements, yeah, Gunhound is going to die. But um, yeah, we got Hulks coming in. Hulk smash. That'll probably do it, because the Hulks... Will they beat the War Junks? Let's see how upgraded they are. Oh, yeah, they're a little bit stronger, so they probably would be able to edge it out. Delhi's still making progress. We see the White Tower being knocked down. And England, did they get Berkshire on the main island? No, England is actually stuck in Castle Age. They've retreated their army back to the island, so England has been pushed off. But the French are looking really tyrannical. Bob is looking like a tyrant right now. He's got great infrastructure here. He's got the Red Palace. He's got Sacred Site. Um, he could trade in the middle if he wants to. And French have Guildhall, right? So Guildhall is one of the best landmarks in FFA in general. It's it's insane being able to get 20,000 stone, you know, 45 minutes into the game or whatever. It's really, really good. <clears throat> Usually on this map, I've seen it one be a Sacred Site. Like, if the French just, like, spread their, their arms down here and monopolize and take the Sacred Site and just, like, build a thousand keeps around it and go for a Sacred Victory... After they pushed off the other cultures off the island, you're like, yeah, for sure. You can you can get the dub there. You can get it. So a couple of victories. We've seen Pink lose on the mainland against Fish Fry. We've seen the English get crushed on the mainland. Ethelred has been pushed back, but they, they're not out of the game yet. England can still try and resettle somewhere. We'll see. Berkshire Palace. Nope, just the basic keep coming up. Um, gold is non-existent for English, so I don't even know if they're going to be able to age up. Ethelred, oh, that's rough. They're going to have to straight up sell food. And now the White Tower is going to fall, and all these villagers should probably have fled to the middle to maybe try and grab some gold if they can for a Berkshire Palace, but at the end of the day, they're going to flee to the coastline. Oh, look at this, you know, a very benevolent ruler, for sure. Benevolent ruler. Yeah, he, he cares about his villagers, and he, he evacuates them. So, shout out to Ethelred, you know, keeping the peeps going. Delhi looking good, nice wall off here. They have their piece of the pie, so the two big superpowers on the island right now. I mean, honestly, Rexosaurus is looking really good, too. I think he's got some relics back on the mainland. Yeah, he's got one relic back here. Um, he did steal one and put it in his L's back, which is a very good play. So yeah, for sure, green is really strong. The French here are very strong also. Delhi's looking pretty good. And Fish Fry is, um, what is he doing? Yeah, it looks like he's just cleaning up the, the last of the land presence here from Professor Finbar. So Finbar is going to be falling on the main island as well. And what predictions do you guys have? Who do you think is going to win this game? Uh, I would say right now it's pretty hard to tell. The French player certainly looks very, very efficient at what they're doing, so they, they could be a pretty solid, uh, you know, betting favorite here. But overall, um, I'm just YouTube. I swear it's not. We're not actually betting here. Please don't, please don't crush me. Um, but yeah, the transport ships loaded up. Looks like he's gonna go and try and finish him off. Yeah, he's gonna try and finish off Red. Wow. And Red is got like a single elephant on the island. Maybe a couple warships as well. Sneaky, sneaky. Those are Jebex. Those are big warships. But we got a drop going, baby. Here it comes. Who's the best early rush div? Um, Mongols are pretty good at early rushing, honestly. Glorfindel. 1v1, like they can get double units and do some good work and be very obnoxious. Oh, is he going to get it? He's dropping it off. He's going to have to rush the mainland. He's trying. Okay, Knights have made it. Knights have made it. And is he going to get the other one? Okay, I think he, maybe two boats made it. The rest didn't, but that's going to be nasty. Uh, we see a desperation keep coming in, and they're darting for the mainland because they don't want to be in range of these boats here. But yeah, this is going to be extremely punishing. Um, thankfully for Red, a keep did finish just in time, but Red's going to be just hemorrhaging villagers here. We see another desperation keep coming in on the top side, and the Jebex are trying to depend or defend from the shoreline. Um, another keep is going to get popped up here. Elephant has fallen. Villagers just going down in droves, as right now it looks like he is just kind of looking for goodies with his knights. Probably going to just farm villagers on this other keep, and Red is going to be so... Like, Butters is going to be so far behind here. Although Butters isn't completely pushed off the main island. He does have a nice woodstock over here. So he's going, you know, partying, listening to some Jimi Hendrix and uh, gathering resources where he can. And uh, yeah, looks like he's going to survive. So he's going to be become a Corsair Lord at this point. 
Trebuchets from blue, knocking down his keeps. It looks like uh, everyone pretty much wants him off the island here. Compound of the defender is in the can. And now, as far as the Corsair Lords, go <laughs> look at Gunhound. Oh, poor Gunhound is his con. He's just got his like his haggard coral tie here. Does he have any villagers left? <laughs> oh my God, Gunhound's just so so dead in the water here. Uh, he does have some fishing boats. Does he have any vills? Is the question. Dude, we have the most epic duel of all time here. Check that out. The veteran Khan versus the crossbowman. The men at arms are going to come in and just... The Khan is just getting circle beaten over and over. I don't think Gunhound has any villagers, so he can't repair anymore. And the Khan falls once again. Well, Gunhound, our in-game correspondent, will be here soon. On the other side, villagers uh, purging whatever they can, but probably going to want to flee to the islands now. Lord of the Seven Seas going to be doing battle with Bob. Bob is going to probably lose this fight, but not before his demo ships do a ton of damage. Absolutely brutal. Takes down like half that fleet with those demo ships. You know, he wasn't paying attention and he was ambushed, man. These things are anti-building, I think, right? They are. They just have bombards, yeah. They're okay in Navy to Navy. I don't think they're the best Navy to Navy ships, though, right? The, uh, the Galeas, this would be slightly stronger. So Gunhound's still alive. Oh, Gunhound does have two villagers. I, I stand corrected. And he does have enough wood to repair it. Uh-oh. The villagers are being hunted by a Karak, and they move into the boat. Gunhound fleeing. He's trying to get away. His boat took a shot right there. And now the HRE has some Imperial Age warships on the way over. And we'll see if Gunhound's uh, haggard fleet here is going to be able to hold. He's just trying to keep that Coral Tie alive. These troopers here camping the landmarks. And uh, I think Gunhound could potentially be the first to fall. These boats should definitely fight together if they can. One of the warships does go down. And uh, that's going to leave Gunhound basically just defenseless here if these uh, HRE warships are able to get it done. Wow, Blue is spreading over this island like an absolute tyrant. Look at Dark Age Rush. Very impressive. He's taken a lot of ground, securing a sacred site. He pushed away the English. And uh, yeah, now he's, he's certainly living his uh, best life. He's quite cozy here. Gunhound's noble fleet has fallen. The Coral Tie is going to be running in circles here. He's got two villagers here. The only chance for Gunhound to rebuild <laughs> is if these two villagers can do it. And currently they're hiding in the bushes here. So the HRE warships might not see them. We'll have to find out. Oh god, he's sending light junks in, dude. Just the arrows against the Imperial. Oh no. His villager ship has been spotted. It's not properly hidden, I guess. Um, he's channeling his Smeagol here, but I don't think it's going to save him. All right. Well, there goes his last villagers. And um, now the Coral Tie is, is just going to be running. The Khan is back, baby, and he's, he's holding. He's, he's doing his people proud. We have a little bit of a border dispute in the middle. It looks like Dark Age Rush is going to be having a battle with the Mongols. Mongols actually looking to fight, pouring out units. They have a combination of archers and or Kashyyyks moving up to do battle with Delhi. But Delhi is quite a powerhouse. They seem to be in pretty good shape. With good eco, you know, they're producing villagers from their keeps. So their eco should be pretty healthy. And uh, Gunhound's last landmark is being chased around the island now. So that is going to be it. Well played to our mighty host. Uh, but this is going to be the end of the road for him. Yeah, he's, he's just in danger. Those HRE dudes. If you, like, look at it, like, aging up as, like, a time span. These, these troops have literally been on this island for, like, 100 years. They're just ancient, ancient soldiers trying to chase down this cruel tie right here. And eventually they will get their prize. They will get their prize indeed. So that's going to be the first player to actually fall in this game, which is surprising. Um, I thought we would at least have two people out by now. But overall, it seems that's going to be the case. Gunhound still defending his Coral Tie. What a Chad. He pulls in the uh, he pulls in the light junk. These troops are just trying desperately to put it to the torch. And we see the Karaks going, oh my god. Is he going to just like troll with his Coral Tie? <laughs> Rexosaurus has been trying to just drag him down for so long, dude. And he's just, he's just going... Is the Energizer Bunny on the island there. So Pink is an island lord. Um, uh, yeah, well, how is he doing on his island? He's doing okay. At least military school can produce units for free. So they, they can build, you know, four military schools in the island, stone permitting, and just get a big army and maybe land and try and re-secure some space. Um, Gunhound's little boat is going. That HRE trooper is pretty close to lighting it on fire. I'm trying to remember the exact... Um, the exact time at which it, a building lights on fire. Is it less than 20%? Is that what it is? It's like sub 20%, something like that? Maybe 15? Something like that. Something that probably would be cool to check. The HRE trooper is going. He's like dodging these arrows, doing some Matrix shit right now. And the HRE uh, big battleships are trying to catch him. Oh my god, he landed more troops, guys. And he did fall. So Gunhound's back in business, baby. Granted, he doesn't know that there's hand cannoneers and more men at arms on the way over. Red with a lot of dudes sitting there. AFK not doing a whole lot. 
Um, probably trying to secure naval trade would be the play. It looks like the French do have their Galeuses. They have a nice war fleet here and are going to be pumping out war cogs. Oh, yeah, that's right. Broadside Bliss. Yeah. I always forget that they renamed a lot of those. The Khan has fallen once again. Dude, this Khan is like the ultimate I didn't hear no bell. He just like comes back and just gets punched in the face over and over. It's like that old Simpsons episode when Homer Simpson learns to box and he's just like so stupid and brutish that he just like just lets other people get tired punching him in the face. It kind of reminds me of that approach. So we do see the hand cannoneers working on the light junks here and uh, this other junk here is going to get some uh, junk in the trunk. Down it goes. Down it goes. So a lot of landmarks trapped on the island. We see two English landmarks trapped here. We see Gunhound's landmark here. We see the Mehmed Armory trapped over here. Naval engagement actually between Orange and the Corsair Lord. So the Grand Galleys are so cool. I think Grand Galleys are like one of the coolest... Uh, Te like the fact that they can produce armies on the go and then like drop those armies off is so rad Like you can build up a big army in it and then like use it as a landing force and FFA And I can see that being really good, but good micro from fish fry. He's pulling back to his coast We'll see if the grand galleys are gonna be able to get the job done. It looks like they might the uh, the fleet here for Professor Finbar trading reasonably well against the Mongol bow chads Gunhound dude gunhound is trolling so hard. I feel like we should just watch that Look at that. He's got the he's got his 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 coral tie literally Benny Hilling and running circles. I don't think Gunhound even has any villagers left. Yeah, these HRE troops are just straight up looking. Look, he's just like trying to stamp the rat out. It's so funny. Gunhound's a survivor. You know, the thing is, every second Gunhound occupies Rexasaurus is like another second that, um, you know, the HRE isn't attacking somebody else, right? Naval trading going down definitely could be a little bit better. The route is relatively short, but still, at the late games, it's sometimes the only way to get wood. And now that is going to be the end of Gunhound right here. So we do see the Coral Tie uh, going down. And uh, that's going to be the end of the road for our mighty Mongol champion. So one has fallen and more will rise. Who will be our champion in today's FFA game? Only one can, uh, only can be one Highlander here. So we will see. <clears throat> what are the French up to, by the way? Looks like they're having a bit of Mortal Kombat with Red. Red has a huge navy. Oh my god, look at the Red's navy. Red could do like a big coastal sweep and just steamroll the French mainland. Most likely, which I, I suspect is what we're going to see. The Jebek's trading against the Galeuses. Galeuses aren't, I don't think they're the best ship-to-ship -ship boats. I mean, it's not terrible. They do still have bombards, but the, uh, the warships, the Jebek's, I think they do. Yeah, they have cannons. They do bonuses for buildings. What's the range? Or maybe they are ship-to-ship. -ship. I don't know. It's been a while since I've seen those, so. Good night, Sweet Prince Gunhound. That's the, <laughs> that's, that's the. All right, Gunhound, you have to be our, if you're still in the game, and you're still hanging around for a while. We would love to have you as our in-game correspondent. But if you need to go, no stress, brother. GG's. That was a real fun one, man. You you definitely made us laugh. Hey, The Rock. Thank you for becoming a channel member. Welcome to the Dukes of Haggard and welcome to the channel. Really appreciate it. Channel membership is a great way to help out, guys. So if you uh, are enjoying this action, join the party. All right. So on the other side, we do have ye old villagers of red doing shoreline fishing of the gods. Red is going to be out of wood, though, so he's going to start losing naval conflicts. Um, let's take a look at Red's bank. Butter does have 12,000 wood. He did have a lot of villagers, like, hitting this wood hard here, so I suppose he's going to be able to, you know, survive for a while. But yeah, no more island invasions are planned. I would imagine um, the French are going to continue their conquest of trying to secure the island for themselves. So now two of the big island superpowers appear like they're going to be colliding. It looks like it's going to be the French and the Delhi meeting in the middle of the island because the french are clearly they, they're intent on war um we have horsemen archers men at arms battering rams coming up in droves so that's going to be it yeah you know, it, it's going to be war although purple is a little bit preoccupied you know he's still being attacked by butters butters is uh getting in there and you know trading pretty well <clears throat> the galeas is putting up a good fight under the docks because the docks obviously provide them passive healing so fighting in the home field is very good is that a trade ship Looks like it was a galley, actually. Okay, I thought maybe there was a trade ship. Does gun... Oh, man. So, guys, the first neutral dock of the game is here. We have a uh, water trade going for, for Rexasaurus, which is good. If he can set it up, like, over here, like, right here, maybe would be, like, the safest he could get away with and do it. It'd be better. He currently doesn't have, like, the best trade route for it. But even still, yeah, it, it's possible. Walls coming up here. We do see Dark Age Rush trying to secure the middle of the map against the Mongolian Raiders. Mongols coming with a Haggard Spear Army. That army would basically just die to a single keep, so not going to be too much of a threat there. Yeah, this doesn't seem like a game where politics would be really a dominant thing at this point. Um, so yeah, I'm not surprised that there's no politics yet. Not surprised at all. 
So Bob hanging out. He's got his rams uh, being raided on the coastline, though. Looks like he has lost the periphery here to red, but he does have a navy that's going to be retaliating on its way down. I would suspect that... Um, yeah, he's trying to make, he's trying to make transport ships, so he wants to kill Red, which is a good idea, because um, Red is it seems to have a kind of a blood feud, blood heart on here. You know, he's got the rage boner to try and you know get revenge for being pushed off the island. So Purple needs to find a way to build a bunch of transport ships and and you know eventually sweep over. First, he's going to have to win the seven seas, and that's going to be hard to do. That is going to be hard to do indeed. Had a membership bet on Gundon winning. Oh, <laughs> did did you really? That's pretty funny, Rock. Uh, thanks, man. I appreciate you, dude. Welcome to the crew. All right, so a little light skirmishing on the other side. Mongols just kind of poking and prodding, but Delhi, Delhi is very strong. Um, I would wager Delhi could do some big steamrolling, although Delhi's uh, fishing fleet did get taken out, it looks like, for the most part. I suspect that maybe pink Professor Finbar came over there and was able to put some hurt on that. Naval fighting over here. It is going to be fish fry, so the Mongolian player has, does have a good navy. Uh, has not discovered Dunhound's dock yet. So usually when a player dies in FFA islands, the first thing you want to do is go scout their island and see what the trading situation is. Because docks are just like a guaranteed thing, right? They're almost always going to be there. Unless, you know, they get destroyed in the conflicts, but there's there's pretty good odds that they're going to be there. So That is a very angry army looking to land on Red's shores, but Red does have a good Jebek fleet. But Red is going to be hemorrhaging out on wood. Um, only... 9,000 wood isn't bad. Where is he even getting his wood from? It must be Tithe Barns. Yeah, he's got he's got Tithe Barns at his uh, religious buildings. So that's one of the only ways he's doing it. Villagers being hunted down by horsemen here. Red's going to be losing a lot of villagers and also access to that coastal dock. Um, looks like that's where their market is also. And they're going to be uh, stamped out here pretty hard. A couple horsemen actually able to get in range of the boats. And uh, they do take down one boat here. Navy coming in from the north for the French. Hey, look, it's Professor Pone, dude. Pone went... Pone, are you going to actually play this game when Japan gets added? Is it the time where you become the Dark Lord of our FFA community and take over? I think so. So Delhi has had enough of being poked by the Mongols. And it looks like Delhi is going to be making a pretty substantial effort to force the Mongols off the island. We do see a lot of horsemen coming out with their cool hammers and uh, trebuchets backing them up. Spring ult supporting, but not going to be super necessary since the Mongols are pretty tech... Uh, simple army comp here. Not really using a lot of artillery, but... <clears throat> Fish fry is going to be forced off the island. That that is that. There's going to be no more uh, no more fish action there. All right, battering rams are here. Red basically completely forced off the island. Naval trading. Red is massive, massive navy. But butter only has eight thousand wood left and five thousand gold. So as long as the French just keep trading with attrition, uh, they're going to be able to kill red. It's just a matter of time. Having a, a foothold on the mainland and access to plentiful wood is just it's so essential on this map. It's so so essential. Sounds good, Pone. Yeah, we could do some fun, like, team team game streams or something like that, if you're down. Age of Wonders soon, too, though. That's going to be really fun when they uh, change that one up. All right, Ramsteins are coming, and that is going to be the Mongols pushed off. They're going to be island goblins uh, very, very soon. So let's take inventory of all of our island goblins. Right now, um, orange is an island goblin, pink is an island goblin, and I think red is also an island goblin. So we have a couple of those lads hanging out here. Um... Transport ships at the ready. Pretty big navy as well. But Red is very on guard now. Red is basically spending all their money on this navy. They have 144 military eco butter does. All of which is probably tied up in the naval boats here. I don't think there's too much else that's going. Red is trying to get Blue to attack Purple. Yeah, Blue's, Blue probably will once he finishes off Orange. Honestly, wouldn't be a bad idea. You know, because the way to win on this map is to secure the middle for yourself. And then you just take the sacred sites and usually and dominate trade. Right, that's how you do it. I, re I do really like this naval trade. It's not like a big amount, but wood is such a scarce resource that any source of wood isn't bad. So the traders are getting that, which is good. Choke point fight going to be a little bit better for the French. They have a lot of these deep set bombard ships and also access to the docks to provide healing auras. Looks like some horsemen are going to be coming in and uh, trying to help on the coastline, which is kind of cool. They're going to be diving the Baglas and uh, trying to force them back. Oh, man, transport ships being used as a bit of a sacrifice in the front. It is a damage punch in a way, so they do absorb that. And, yeah, Red, not going to be able to produce too many more navies after this. They're going to be running out. But, again, his opponent doesn't know that. He does not know this that. Oh, yes, and we have uh, Ethelred. He is another island goblin as well. Yes, how could I forget? Uh, is he Imperial Age? He did get a Berkshire Palace. So yeah, nobody wants to invade a Berkshire Island. That's like, that's, Red Palace is probably the worst, but Berkshire is up there for sure. Absolutely the worst. 
All right, so back we go. It looks like Red did win in the Navy, but at a great cost. His military tanked uh, quite a bit, but he still got some boats going. And now we see the galleys. Galleys won't do too much damage against these type of boats, but, you know, it's still something. They're going to be able to wear down some of the light junks in the front. Mongols completely, f like, flattened off the island. They got completely steamrolled. Um, only one player gone so far. This is crazy. Despite all that, man, they're still going. Looks like Delhi's island being attacked, so Blue is getting, uh, the Mongols get, are getting their revenge. They've enveloped the Delhi Sultanate Island, and they've killed basically everything. They just can't reach the TC. So Delhi is very much committed to the mainland right now, and probably doesn't care too much about their island. Granted, you still want to maintain that. Warpug, thank you for the 999. Really appreciate the donation, brother, and hopefully you guys are enjoying a good, solid, fun night of Age of Empires. It's a great time, man. Great game. Always fun. I gotta start doing some earlier streams, too. I do feel bad about that, but I'm such a creature of the night these days, man. Okay, he's loading up. This is ballsy. Oh, he lost one boat. He's fleeing. Where's he going with these boats? He's got only villagers. Okay, so villagers are going up. Are they gonna go try and drop a keep on this island or something? Maybe the villagers were only part of that military push? I don't know. But yeah, Red claims control of the seas, and Red should do this. Red should definitely just concave in and use their boats to nuke all these keeps down and punish the island as much as they can, you know? Blue doing a great job spreading out over the islands. Look at that. He's setting up like a palisade network, which is cool. It, it, it will give him a tiny bit of warning if he's going to get invaded. Um, so I do like that. It, it buys, you know, 10, 15, 30 seconds. This guy says, "I'm uh, this map is so entertaining. If I didn't keep watching this, I know, man. I know. It's, it's a great one. It's a really good map. I believe one of our own made it. Was it Nanny Ori made it? Green Emperor, one of those folks. Great stuff. It's a great map. Villager's going to be pounded here, and the French have pretty much lost at sea. I mean, it's hard to keep up with Red, who's just like all in on it, but Red is going to run out of wood eventually, like I said. And now he's he's going to make the French pay the price. You know, if you're going to win the land, I'm going to take the seats. It's, uh, you know, water power, right? That was a really cool scene in Dune, when like they're uh, at the very end of the first Dune movie, when Paul Atreides and uh, Shawnee are walking, and they're like, he sees the worm, he's like, desert power, and you're like, hell yeah, dude. It's, that, was, that was a really cool scene. Remember him and Duke Leto were like talking about water power, like, you know, air power, sea, you know, that kind of thing, so. All right, on the other side, the French trying to, trying to rally some defenses, but overall, probably not gonna be a good time. Granted, a lot of the boats are going down. The French should for sure repair these keeps. I would pull everything and keep those keeps online, because they're one of your best, most effective killing tools against this fleet here, as a couple of those Baglas do go down, and, uh, they're not replaceable. So one keep does fall, the other one's still going strong, but is going to go down here. And the entire, um, you know, French one is uh, is going to uh, go down. And he works for Relic now, is that true? That'd be awesome. That would be cool. Alright, looking around here. A little bit of raiding. We do see Professor Finbar. I, the Great Galleys. I think next time we play one of these, I'm going to play Ottomans. The fact that the Great Galleys can make these armies on the go and just like raid is so thematic and fun. And it looks like the TC of Blue is going to be getting killed by Ram. So Blue is going to be completely um, dependent on their island. Uh, if they lose the, not island, excuse me, the mainland, then they will be dead, potentially. French looking okay, but having lost their, their naval presence is a little bit tough. They're fully embargoed here. And look at that. Butters is getting in there, guys. Yeah, all right. This is an official map, is it? Oh, okay. Very cool. Here it comes. It is going to be the Sultan Elephants. And we're going to see a lot of villagers obviously getting mowed down by the advanced Delhi shotgun elephants. And the TC is going to go. Guildhall going down is a big deal. Um, losing the Guildhall sucks bad. That's a really important landmark for getting stone in the later stages of the game here. And is he going to be going for the Delhi dock? Maybe. You know, I was thinking the French were looking really strong, but now it's looking a little bit precarious for them. Most of the island goblins have punished the island, like, you know, the land, the land trolls. Um... But overall, uh, we do still see green. Rexasaurus is still hanging in there. But yeah, Delhi's going to be going to push them off. Man, Delhi is just pushing for it, dude. They're going for every player, just just back and forth. Yeah, whole island's going to be cleared off. This map, this map makes for some really fun stuff, though, because in the final stages of the battle, when people are trying to defend the sacred site, you see like everyone uh, like landing on the shores and trying to like backstab the sacreds. It makes for a really really fun engagement here. So Dark Age Rush, once again, expanding the uh, the tentacles, the Delhi Sultanate here over the lands and pushing into the HRE base. HRE does have culverins and bombards on the defense, though. But man, Dark Age Rush playing really well. His macro seems good. Like, whenever you see this kind of stuff, you're like, okay, they kind of know how to push. 
Right. Yeah, the Dumbo drop. The, the Dumbos have done a great job purging this island. Oh, there's even a relic here. That's pretty good for red. Now, what are the French going to do? The French have probably got to get involved against blue, because if the French don't help with blue, the HRE is going to die, and then they're just going to get rolled over by Dark Age Rush, right? But there's still a lot of island goblins. Like, it's still, you know, there's still seven people in this game. So going for a sacred victory against seven players probably wouldn't be possible. But yeah, we haven't seen anybody, like, truly get, like, mowed down and taken out yet, so... Just poor old Gunhound. Gunhound, uh, you know, he went down valiantly in the beginning. He did. That MLG Micro with his his beautiful, beautiful Cruel Tie was just the, the stuff of legends. Beastie Cutie should take notes on the Cruel Tie Micro. So the keep is going up here. At least they're going to be dropping it. And uh, Trebuchet is working on the L's back. L's back is super tanky, though. It takes 33% uh, less damage, if I'm not mistaken. Plus, the Relic is also going to be reducing damage taken. Or I think it reduces, it just gives it more armor, which makes sense. Big charge here by the Delhi Sultan. It's Springhold's coming in, gonna be probably going after the Culverins. Culverins getting taken down, really, really nice. And if the Els Chad Palace does go down, that's probably gonna be the end of the road. Yep, oh man. Dark Age Rush playing so well. We see all these little Springholds just methodically sniping down the Culverins. Beautiful, beautiful play. Emergency repairs though, solid, solid counterplay. I mean, it's gonna buy a little bit of time. HRE is not pumping out too much. Rexosaurus has no gold whatsoever, ouch. Probably making a little bit from relics, but aside from that, is very gold starved. So it's mainly just going to be spearmen and archer based armies, which against Delhi, Delhi seems to have multiple relics and a sacred site, so they're probably going to be ahead. You're just taking your cruel tie out for a drive. That's right, down there. That's right. I like to keep getting dropped here by red. That's that's nice. It's, and also, he's going to get the relic here, and that will prevent the guild hall and also the town center from being rebuilt. You know, ninja rebuilt, which is uh, very smooth. How many traps did we got? Only two traps still. Els Chad Palace getting dangerously close to falling. And if it goes down, it's probably going to be the floodgates, which end the world here. Keep being dropped in the front by Delhi. It's going to help secure their push as they keep going pedal to the metal. So where are the Rams going? I think he wants to kill Red is the game plan. Red Red has the huge Doom fleet over here. So check that out. Okay, a little bit of sneakiness. We'll keep tabs on this. We'll keep tabs. Could be some fun stuff. Meanwhile, on the south side, we do see the counterweight trebuchets uh, making progress on the Els Chad Palace. But man, it's so tanky. It's armor, what does it get, plus 50 or something? Is that what it said with the relic? Yeah, it's nuts. The damage reduction. He's going to need more trebs to take that thing down. He's got springs, spring alds, mangonel, spearmen. It's a very good army comp, right? Because horsemen counter artillery, so you just like sit on them with spears and hand gunners, and uh, you know, you're, you're in good shape. Emergency repairs once again. Um, we do see the pirate lords of the seven seas. The it looks like the island goblins have maybe turned in against one another. We see orange fish fry is just trying to get the Mongol bounties, which is smart, right? Because if you're the Mongols, you want to destroy buildings and farms and different things like that. So you can uh, you can do it. And we'll be uh, taking notes of something here. Don't worry, guys. I got I got I got my eyes on the scheme in the corner. I'm just not watching it on purpose, just in case uh, you know someone's maybe tuning in. I want it to be a true surprise. All right, guys. Once again, we do see the battering rams moving up. Trebuchet support not able to get through the elves back, and now the Delhi keep is under a little bit of pressure. And here comes the moment. It's Gotham's reckoning. Oh my God! Look at the landing force. Red doesn't notice it. He just noticed it. Oh, there's got to be rams in here, right? Yes. The demo ship's clearing it out, <laughs> and they're going for the kill. The Delhi does have a lot of elephants in there, though. Wololo being pulled. Good play here by Butters. That Wololo will be very, very good at defending. A lot of elephants on the island. Rams are, have landed. Houston, we have a problem. The Wololo going down, but he's a little bit out of position. It's going to buy time, though. He's going for the Dome of Faith. A lot of horsemen on the island, and the fleet is on the other side. So you got to move in now. More Wololos being called, and landmarks are being hunted pretty heavily. A lot of horsemen potentially going to get converted here. you got to run. Oh, God, the horsemen pulling back, but being mowed down. Heavy, heavy losses. We do see the Dome of Faith getting uh, burnt down. The TC in danger of dying as well, but the battering ram's being hit by the fleet. He should have pulled them around the backside. And now the TC is going to be burning. Villagers being pulled in on the other side. Blue diving the El Chad Palace. Just crazy, crazy fighting on all sides. And it looks like at the end of the day, red is going to be holding. Purple and red do have a huge blood feud. Yeah, of course. But having these like gunner elephants on the island is... Really, really clutch. That was a super good hold. That was a great hold right there. So overall, he has gotten it. All right. So will Els Chad finally fall? Find out. It's sitting at 600 HP, being repaired pretty heavily. But the battering rams, they get it. 
So now that L's chat has fallen, that is going to give Delhi a ton of momentum. And the Ghazi Riders are amazing. Such a good unit. Um, you know, having a bonus for his heavy makes him scale really well in a lot of situations against like knights and men at arms, and uh, you know, also still good against artillery too, right? Ram's going for the TC, and looks like HRE is going to be forced into the Shadow Realm. Meanwhile, the French are just securing their island, making more horsemen, and uh, yeah, Blue is just really taking taking out his prey one by one, which is very impressive. Archery range, I'm getting rammed. Not archery range, excuse me. The TC here. Spring alts and trebuchets slowly making progress, and by slow I mean extremely slow. The HRE emergency repairs are just heavily diminishing the progress. Relic is here. Some villagers should definitely be pulled to come over and uh, grab that old, uh, and repair the old elves back. It took so much effort for Jelly to take it down that that would just be a power play. Dark Age Rush has got a nice little economy. He's not like super rich. Why is Dark Age Rush's, what is his eco? He's only got 61 eco, interesting. He should be hitting these trees harder. Um, and it doesn't seem like his military is that big either. He's kind of in this like weird, weird limbo. Red called Purple Sneaky and is asking him for peace, says Gunhound. Purple said, sure, if Red gives him his island back. Oh, interesting. Okay. So some politics. If I were Red, I wouldn't give the island back. You know, because I, I don't know. Yeah, Red's actually not in a terrible position. If Red could find a way to do some naval trade, like down here, holy shit. If Red figured out that they could do naval trade across the top of the map and just trade with Green's dock, that would be super strong. Els Chad Palace being repaired. HRE mustering a pretty respectable defense. The men at arms, which are not fully upgraded. It looks like they're missing like one or two blacksmith upgrades. I think, yeah, it looks like they're missing the melee armor. Um, army tactics, I think their HP would be a little bit more. Culverin sniping, nice Culverin play. Very, very good. Love the AOE four streams. John, thank you for the donation. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Blue doesn't have the highest score because his economy and military isn't actually that good. Even though he's got a lot of space occupied, his eco is only 61 and his military is only 45. So that's why. If you look at Rexasars, for example, his score is probably higher because he just has more stuff. Um, yeah, he's supply capped. He's got 121 eco, a lot of which is on the island here, right? So he's just taking resources off Gunhound's old island. So hopefully that will, um, you know, clear it up for you and explain the, the shenanigans. All right, looking across here, HREs. The HREs pissed, dude. They've been they've been the rat in the cage for a while. Now they're going to move out and. Honestly, those men at arms are going to beat the brakes off those Gazi riders. And we do see the counterweight trebuchets getting taken down finally. And the HRE is going to repair the L's back. Could we see Delhi in some danger? Delhi doesn't seem to have a lot of food. I suspect all of their fishing has been plowed by the uh, Corsair Lords. So we have an update from our in game correspondent, um, Gunhound. Apparently, Red and Teal have a temporary peace alliance. Okay, interesting. I didn't even really feel that they were even at war at any point, but, you know. How is Red even getting wood? Oh, Red Red has found some wood on some of the islands. Okay, so he's finding these little alcoves of, of, of wood and is trying to trying to get back however he can. The French have a nice foothold on the sacred sites. If the Red Palace was a little bit closer here, that would be nice, but alas, it is not going to be closer. Um, huge fleet. I mean, god damn, that is a big ass navy. That's huge. How much is Ethelred? Ethelred does have infinite gold you know, from these farms. So he's going to be able to have gold, you know, nonstop. And he still has some wood on his island too. Maybe England should try and recolonize. Like, why not? You know, and the trade ship's going. Okay, it's only five gold. so pretty pitiful trade. But I wouldn't be surprised to see the English um, resettle. Like, why wouldn't you? There's a lot of wood here. You can protect it with your fleet. So just drop like 30 villagers here, hit this wood and keep your navy here to protect them from getting taken out. That seems like it'd be pretty good. So, yeah, it looks like HRE is fighting back pretty well. Delhi is going to need to start macroing better, um, increasing their villager count. They only have 58 eco right now, so Delhi's income has got to suck pretty bad. And you see that reflected in their relatively low bank right now. Their resource income isn't that good. I honestly don't think they're going to even be able to push the HRE. You know, Dark Age Rush seems like they've maybe run out of steam a little bit. Who knows? Yeah, Blue is all, all in, yeah, he's all in land, true. That's, he doesn't have any fishing or anything, but it's not that you need it. He just needs more eco. Like, if Delhi had, um, you know, 100 eco, 100 military, he would just be way better off. But instead, he's just doing these very um, haggard pushes into HRE, who's able to just endure and not really take too much. So looking at Teal. Has he landed here? He has not. He is setting up some uh, outposts here. That's pretty funny. So he's trying to wall in Blue. This is good, because if Blue tries to repair this landmark in the late game to survive, uh, the towers are going to shut them down, which is hilarious. So... 
I do like that. And England could honestly do an invasion. I mean, they have a decent army. Not decent, but, you know, it's, it's something. But they're, I guess they have so much invested in a navy. HRE actually pushing them back, guys. So the Holy Roman Empire is getting getting back into it. Sigmar endures. As they have landed. And now they're going to be taking it to them here and looking to do some big, scary pushing on the south side. Over to the east, ladies and gentlemen. We do have the Baglas and the Jebex. The big dreaded coastal raid is coming. And once again, look at that. He's trying to get his island back. He landed a bunch of horsemen. But he's going to quickly be discovered by the old uh, in the Delhi Navy here. Keeps might be able to hold, but yeah, I think Purple wants his island back. He wants to secure those uh, resources if he can. Not resources, excuse me, his, his landmarks. Let's make sure he doesn't get sniped off the top here. Orange doing some coastal raiding. The Seagate Castle has fallen. So Fish Fry, he's just trying to farm money, which makes sense. But you can't kill the players without getting their town center. And the map is purposefully designed so that boats cannot reach the middle. So you have to actually land to finish off players. I mean, look, you could land like eight trebs here and just like take out their TC in a couple seconds, which honestly would be pretty effective. So a bit of a stalemate here. I uh, feel like this game could go wild. It could be one of those dreaded games that goes into the wee hours of the morning and then I'm starving and starting to get delirious. It could be one of those. The Corsair Lord Red is here and uh, he is going to, um, yeah, just control this, this, this turf. Although we do see the horsemen of uh, Bob reclaiming the island. But he doesn't have any villagers to repair it, so the horsemen are just kind of chilling. Oh my god. Hell yeah, dude. Look at this. So the Delhi fonts have landed. The dreaded Delhi machine guns. And the French, uh, probably not prepared for this on the mainland. Although Red Palace, oh yeah, they are. They're going to be fine. Because Red Palace is going to mow these guys down. Dude, Red Palace is such a filthy landmark. It does so much damage. He just lost like five elephants right there, dude. Just in a couple seconds. So now he's moving up. Going to be uh, kiting these horsemen here. And, you know, mowing them down. Which is certainly good. Dragging some of the army through the mud. Should definitely bring his navy down to help. So when the, the army attacks, the elephants get cover. And yeah, he could he could attack all these houses and then have his navy protect the elephants. And that would be a really, really nasty combo. Yeah, the horsemen were stranded there. Probably deleted. Yeah, it looks like he deleted the horsemen here. So now Delhi's going to be getting into the houses. And if they run back to the coastline, they'll have naval support. They definitely don't want to fight like a fair fight here. That would be a big mistake. And being pulled into the Red Palace is just going to hemorrhage more elephants. Yep, you see two elephants immediately go down when they get in range of the Red Palace. So, yeah, there's no sense in doing that. That is for damn sure. A wild-ass TC going down here from Ethelred. Oh, he wants more farming space. Okay, look at that. Look at that. Yeah, so he's setting it up. And he's going to be getting more and more Farmville action. Sign up today for the hot Farmville action here. Farmers only here. All right. Lumber camp houses, going to be getting rammed by the elephants, and uh, yeah, not going to feel good for uh, old Bob here. Bob's eco is rough. He's only got 30 eco. I mean, I guess he has the resources to replenish a little bit. He's got his archers sitting in there, hanging out, but yeah, purple's looking kind of weak right now. Like, the Delhi player might even be able to resecure the mainland against him. These elephants are just rampaging. Of course, the keeps do have the arbalist emplacements, um, so that helps kind of wear down some of these units. This is a mistake with these elephants. I think just like taking down all the houses and just really trying to diminish them that way is the play. But now the elephant's probably going to go down as they try and make their way back to the shoreline. Red is, um, yep, still making sure nothing's going down to the island. And one of the elephants almost escapes, but they do end up falling. Um, the battle between these two rages on. Elschad Palace repaired. Green not hearing any bell whatsoever. And he does have his trade ships going around the seven seas to uh, get that going. What is purple doing? Or excuse me, the Mongols. The Mongols do have some villagers here. Looks like they're going to be trying to land him to set up siege workshops. So we could see the end of pink here. Are you going to do it? Is he going to set up siege workshops? That would be the play here. Or towers, initially, to secure the island. So a strange villager landing. Okay, so now he's moving over this way. The Mongol ship's chasing away Professor Finbar's ships. And now we see the army coming out. And he's trying to set up siege workshops. But it would just be more prudent to like load up trebuchets or bombards and come kill these. Um... So fish on fry, maybe he's just too poor. Yeah, he's, he's very starved. I mean, the island goblins are definitely very, very tough. It's not an easy life being an island goblin, you know, like if you're if you don't have access to the mainland. So Delhi army getting pushed back by HRE again. He's still trying it. Has he increased his economy, though, Dark Age Rush? No, but he does have a good military. So he's actually got a military eclipsing around uh, 100 supply now, which isn't bad. Red not going to let this go, setting up another keep here, which is absolutely hilarious. If Red wanted to be really troll, he could actually build walls like around it. So he could like wall the enemy landmarks in. Uh, this map isn't supposed to be one of the fastest. 
You know, honestly, I don't even know what the fastest maps are. I feel like King of the Hill might be. Because people spawn so close together, and uh, the sacred site is like a constant threat on the win condition. So it's uh, it's fun. It's pretty fun. So resources will have to be, they're going to have to start selling food if they really want to survive here. Delhi's continuing its war of attrition. Meanwhile, Pink, uh, it's so strange. Like, what is what is the rivalry between Pink and, and Orange even? And why why is Fish Fry not landing here and taking all this wood? Now, there's a couple little nodes here that would just be, and he even has a step read out there, so he does know it's there. That would be very strong. That would be very, very strong. Oh, yeah, I think this game's going to be a longer one. It, it's kind of like people are not, people are just holding on. You know, nobody's going down here, so. We have a bit of a pit fight. HRE does have better troop quality, but the numbers advantage does lie within the Delhi Sultanate. Trebuchet is setting up and going to be trying to launch some shots at these stables. They do take one down, but definitely need to retreat behind the walls. Delhi Hand Cannoneer is doing it. And we see the Chad HRE uh, men at arms just clubbing through the Delhi Spearmen. Obviously, they're Spearmen, so they're not going to be amazing. So, yeah, that is a rough fight there for the old Delhi. The Delhi's looking good on the bank. They have 18 villagers idle right now. Is Purple doing anything? No, nope, Purple's just lumberjacking. Looks like they canceled the keep over here. And I think Purple's kind of given up on going after Red. And it's rather just going to be hanging out here. It really sucks for the French, though, because they don't have Guild Hall. So the Guild Hall not being online basically has crippled Bob. Like, Bob is just in a really, really dire situation because of that. Hell yeah, baby. Ethelred's back in business. Here we go. He's coming. AoE4 is pretty beginner friendly. If you just play the English or the French, probably English is the best beginner Civ, I would say. Like they're just they're just solid and easy to play. Their mechanics are very simplistic. Um, and yeah, they're they're fun. Dude, I love the scrappiness of Ethelred. England England doesn't forget here. They've landed off the coast of the Delhi Sultanate, and they could come in and ruin the parade. Oh my god, the eight gold trade is so haggard. Oh my god, eight gold. It's like the jankiest shit ever. Um, HRE very defensive. I don't know why they're not going a little bit crazier on the offense against Delhi. I feel like they could make some ground, but Delhi's about to get backdoored by the English here. But oh my god, the English troops, a lot of them, man, no army tactics, no upgrades. The English uh, troop quality is very, very poor. Wow. So despite having just a super awesome navy, their, their actual military sucks pretty bad here. But I mean, it's still a something you got to deal with. Okay, so we got 10 villagers here. They're going to be shooting at some of the English farms on the island. It looks like they're heading back to take on the Ottomans again. Ottomans have something. They got about seven ships right there. Green and blue seem to have reached a peace. Interesting. All right. Yeah, so that makes sense. They've been having a brutal war of attrition. And Delhi obviously wants peace so they can deal with the other threats, most likely. The Pirate Lords are still at it. They're at it once again here. This is like watching the color wheel go at war with one another. <laughs> That's pretty funny. I've never heard it put that way, but yeah, it kind of is, isn't it? All right, what are the English doing? Are they gonna are they gonna actually push here? I don't think so. I think they're just gonna try and secure whatever resources they can. But man, that navy is thick. Those are some big old boats, boy. They're they're big. Red doing good naval trading, very cost effective. Forty four pop, so it's an eighty eight round trip, and including wood, it's actually very good. So yeah, this is what we were talking about. Oh look at that! Oh my god. Rexosaurus is not not a, a sharing caring guy. He sets up a cannon tower because he sees the trade with his dock. <laughs> That's gonna start killing those boats. It, it'll still some trade will still get through, but it'll two shot them, so it should kill one boat like per round. Yeah, there's another shot there, and it hits from downtown. The boat does go down, so it's gonna be cutting off the gravy train of trade. The English army here again, uh, pretty low quality. Okay, they just got army tactics out. And now Delhi's going to be pushing in to do battle with England. So England will lose this fight probably. Depends if they get their artillery activated. But um, yeah, I do like the attempt to like re-land on the island. I think that's a, a nice little touch. Big naval conflicts. We have just like random ass battles at sea. He's trying to land. Oh, look, he's going for the kill here. Yeah, he has rams and villagers and then rams and kashiks here. So he wants to take down those landmarks. But look at this. We do see the uh, English Navy there. Absolutely crushing it. These boats are going to need to run. Fish Fry needs to run him up the coastline if he can. Try and scurry away. But it looks like he lapsed in micro and uh, he's going to be losing those boats. So, so much for that. Favorite Baldur's Gate 3 character. Ooh, that's a tough one. I don't know. I only played like midway through Act 2. I, like, again, I really prefer multiplayer games. It's all about multiplayer for me. But it was, it was fun. I enjoyed Baldur's Gate for the time that I did play. It's a great game. So yeah, English uh, not really pushing the, the tempo here too hard. Just kind of taking it easy. 
And now their navy is going to be going to try and crush the Mongols here, which is interesting. We do see uh, the pink forces harrying, checking the coastline of this derelict island where the English have made a very small colony. And now Red, oh, look at Red. Red's pissed. Red is not happy about that trade being denied, so he brings over his full navy. And uh, yeah, I mean, Red does have a huge naval presence and could kill the HRE island presence. 100%. We see the Aachen Chapel farms being uh, mowed down here. Traders probably going to be shut down too. And that's going to heavily diminish uh, Green's power. Grant, so Green is very strong. He's got three culves and a pretty elite army here too. Current impromptu teams. So according to Gunhound, we have Teal and Pink. The two island goblins. And then we do also have Green and Blue. Green and Blue are allied, huh? What, are they going to try and kill the French here? I don't know. We'll have to see. The HRE player seems very passive. Um, he seems very defensive. Doesn't like to go out and attack too much. Yeah, I, I know Baldur's Gate can be played multiplayer, but I, I like PvP. I should, uh, I suppose, articulate that better. Like, I don't enjoy games where you're just playing against the AI, usually, you know? Because, like, you're always going to figure it out. Whereas, like, playing against players, it's like an ever-evolving challenge, you know? And there's It's it's so, so much more interesting to me, but... Um, I'm trying to think of single player games I play. Yeah, not really. Baldur's Gate was pretty much the last one. Alright, so England gets pushed off the island here, and uh, the Corsair Lords still duking it out. Eventually, wood is going to run out on the main island, too, although there's a lot of, like, laziness with wood farming. Usually, there's there's a lot of, like, heavy action on trying to get the wood. Like, it's a huge priority, right? So, big ships nuking away, but they're, they're fighting in a foreign land for very little cause. I mean, they're going to kill a couple ships, but if anything, they're just going to make enemies. Although, it looks like Pink and Teal are teaming up here. And uh, they're going to be blasting away here. Yeah, and just kind of flattening the Mongols. Mongols could be dead here. If these two keep working together and somebody actually lands something on the Mongol island, yeah, they like he could 100% be toast. Which would be wild. We haven't had anybody fall in a long, long time. So this island gets purged on the borderline. So all the borders here do get taken out. It looks like docks are going to be reestablished for Rexosaurus. He's going to be trying to set that up. On the other side, no real action, honestly. It's been pretty calm. Dark Age Rush does have a very formidable army, and it's going to be trying to get better trade, which I, I respect. I think that's good. Uh, what was my favorite? Somebody in chat asked me. Favorite first-person shooter of all time. Um, the one I probably played the most was Halo Combat Evolved. The original Halo, I like played so much in high school, and... I actually want, I, I, I went to, oh, what was the store? Oh God, it was, um, it's a store that's like kind of out of business. Is it Circuit City? Or is it Fry's Electronics? It's one of those. But I went to a Fry's Electronics Halo tournament when I was a kid and I actually won it. And there was only four people there. <laughs> but you know, it's, it's, it's like the, it's like the blockbuster, uh, blockbuster story. It wasn't very competitive, honestly. Yeah, not at all. <laughs> All right, so it keeps coming up here for the French. Um, did they get their island back? No. It looks like the Delhi Sultanate is just chilling here. I like how he, he garrisoned five spearmen here, just in case the horsemen land, so he can, like, fend those guys uh, away for sure. And looking over to the east side or west side of the map, we do see Red. Red is just this Corsair tyrant, but how is Red going to replenish this navy? Like, Purple could actually probably kill Red now. He does have a navy of sorts, but the wood chopping is... Pretty much non-existent for Red. I don't know like what he's thinking he's gonna get done here, except maybe securing the seven seas for himself, but it seems like it's uh I think it was Circuit City or something. I don't know. Yeah, it was a long, long time ago, ladies and gentlemen. So the Karax getting blasted, these Karaks here gonna go down, and uh nice culverin play on the coastline. Culverins are very good against ships. They get plus one hundred damage, so you can park them on the shoreline and uh nuke down your opponent's navy pretty effectively, but Green is definitely not happy about this. Losing his entire coast, losing military infrastructure, which becomes even more precious to rebuild because of the, uh, you know, the scarcity of wood, right? And man, look at Ethelred. Ethelred's just purging the Mongolian fleet here. Is anybody going to go for the kill on the Mongols? I don't know. Step readout looks like it survived. I think like a boat or something had found it, but it's hanging in there. It's a weird game, dude. It's a weird, weird game. I can't believe nobody's dead. This is so strange. There's been a couple people who've made like heavy efforts to go for the kill but overall it's been very very pacifist this game compared to the last one at least yeah so good economy here from dark age rush he's finally pulling ahead in that regard we're at the hour and 12 minute mark guys and uh we're not getting closer to victory like it's this could just be one of those 
you know how we've had games on stream which are just like pure suffering the games go like three hours and like it's like two players who don't have the capability to kill one another we could be in that situation here i i'm i'm getting a murmuring i'm, I'm hearing whispers eldritch whispers from beyond of, of that okay rams coming out where are those rams going what is he going to do with these rams we see the rams popped out i wish i could see where they've been pathed somewhere on the other side um as far as this goes is that a lot of scouts no it's horsemen is he going to try and land on red again? I don't see that happening. Red is just fully, fully defensive formation here. We see Ethel Red hanging out, trying to get his farm economy going. Doing all right. By the way, um, what's the longest FFA game we've ever had on the channel? I'm trying to think. Any of you guys who've been around for a couple of those games, what's, what's like the most epic journey we've ever had? I think three hours might be the record, like three hours and 30 minutes, I think was, we had a stream, I think, where I was like planning on doing like two, but it went like three and a half hours. It was just one. I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. So looking around here, a little bit of harrying and skirmishing, the English Navy raiding the shoreline, but the spring alds are in position and that many spring alds can certainly take down a giant boat. Red has made a big navy, probably for the last time though. I don't think they're gonna be able to replenish this. Although somehow they're making gold. I think it's because of the triple relics. Yeah, that's that's it. probably what's doing it for Delhi. The Tithe Barns is, is giving them resources. And you know, Delhi actually um, does have all these tower elephants. So they can kind of keep those going and like use them to invade people's islands and bully or different things like that. HRE got their farms back online. So they're able to do their thing. Trade ships being secured, but it's not a very cost effective trade route. But yeah, this is a nice one. Dark Age Rush getting some trade. Eh, it's only 19 gold. Maybe it'll be better once they reach the full extension. That's what she said. But we'll um, we'll see. Gunhound says I'd have to look it up. Yeah, it was. I think it was like just over three hours. Man, only eight gold. We're gonna have to like see what this ends up being here. Up on the top side, we do see the circling HRE fleet. HRE HRE is one of the few uh, sibs here that actually has an island presence and a land presence. It's usually one or the other for these guys, but HRE has somehow managed to keep their island alive. I suppose just the keep here has been enough of a deterrent. But now they're pushing in to attack Red. Red is just going to absolutely steamroll them. Absolutely steamroll. This is just going to be a reckoning. This is a huge fleet, dude. He's only got 900 wood left. So Butters is, is pretty much dead in the water in terms of uh, replenishing this. Depends on what they lose. One demo ship makes it in, takes down a couple ships, immediately loses several ships. And another one's going to be biting the dust here. On the south side, a semi-AFK English Navy. Wouldn't it be funny if the English player just won this? That would be hilarious. So, a historian in chat saying the most painful one was an FFA where a China player was by far the strongest, but he was trolling and only played to kill wonders. <laughs> yeah, we've had a couple of those. A couple of those, yeah. Absolutely. Wood being purged, 19 gold, the trade route. Hey, it's better than nothing. You got to take whatever scraps you can get. Oh, look at this. Blue has landed. Oh, man, we're finally going to have a player kill. Wow. So Dark Age Rush landed here and got in with the Rams, and now we have another player who has fallen. Professor Finbar is out for the game, so that is one less island goblin. Good player kill by Blue. Very good. So two players are gone, and now six remain. Where are the Rams going to go next? Are they going to land on Teal's Island and try and finish them off? That would be hard because of Berkshire. But, you know, it could, uh, could be pretty good if he can get it done. That's, oh, he's got four trebs and four rams. He literally has an island sniping goon squad. And he's going to be stealing the relic, which is very good. Well played to Dark Age Rush there. Well played, Finbar. Well played. So where is he going next, man? I'm, I'm genuinely curious. I mean, you could go over here, but... Yeah, going to the English island and landmark sniping them would be super strong. But the English have like a full blockade here. So you're not going to get past that. You'd have to figure out another route. More Navy action coming in here from Rexasaurus, moving up around the northeast peninsula of this island and going to be heading on over. Blue does have a lot of real estate on the island, including the trade post. I mean, Blue is definitely the number one threat here in this game. Um, the French are just kind of, you know, they tried a lot earlier. I think they've given up and are taking it easy. The HRE player, Rexasaurus, on the other hand, has basically embraced their, um, their dandy dragon and is just sitting AFK while waiting for something to happen here. Okay, a little bit of poking as uh, the university is going to fall. And yeah, green green seems to want battle with red. Red is, uh, you know, sitting at a thousand wood. That's what she said. Probably not going to be able to replenish too much. Springald's coming up and clearing out these boats. 
And where is that demo fleet? Where's where's the the base sniping squad? They might have landed back on the shore. Are they moving up this way? Nope, doesn't look like it. More docks are being set up on that side. Trade's still going. Looking at current resources of all the players, you guys can take inventory. Currently, Rexosaurus has a nice bank of food and wood. The biggest, hands down. The biggest gold bank belongs to Butters, which is crazy. And it's just because of his relics, actually. And uh, yeah, he's been, been able to be a, a relic overlord. Doc's being hit, and the Delhi fleet preparing to do battle. Looks like that keep could go down, too, depending on the circumstances. Nah, he's not going to snipe it. Spring all's in position. Demo ship's going to be chasing him back. And are they going to snipe the keep? Let's see if they do. Because, yeah, that's a hard one to replace, right? Stone is, is pretty sparse. It's not even that big of a fleet. Red is now going to move in with his substantially larger force. But taking down the keep would probably be a worthy sacrifice. You know, Stone is, again, very, very hard to get. You can wonder on this map, it's hard, you know, there's not a lot of optimal trading and getting access to that stone, especially if you're not in the middle, is basically impossible. Um, HRE is just absolutely AFK. Any trade down here, we do have a neutral dock, that's pretty good. That could be the lifeline for the old English, we'll have to see what happens. The green fleet's going to be running, turning tail here, while the Delhi elephants continue gathering their forces. A Mongol player kill here, yeah, Mongols are moving their landmark to the corner. I mean, he's basically dead, right? Fish Fry? Yeah, Fish Fry has 11 eco. He's got no wood. He's got a couple scouts. The only thing that Fish Fry could probably do would be to build a big fishing fleet and, um, and try and just mass scouts and just like landmark snipe people. That's basically it. Because Fish Fry is looking like the fish has been fried for the last time. He's got like a couple fishing ships and that's basically it. He does have some villagers on the island. He's got a CC still, so... He's not completely out of the game. But yeah, no real action right now. This could be a good time for me to go grab a... Refill my water in the kitchen, actually. It's pretty calm. It's pretty calm. So on the south side, we see a fully massive English army just waiting. Or English Navy. Um, looking at England's income... Yeah, they're, they're not going to be able to replenish any Navy they lose either. So they have to be very cautious with how they engage. Them and Red are kind of in the same situation. Um, England does have the farms, though. So at least they have the gold going that way. Okay, England has secured naval trade. Very strong, north to south. Um, well, not more like south, southeast to northeast, but you know, close enough. We're going to be sending traders across the old wastelands here, as the trebuchet, uh, excuse me, the springall blockade actually fighting well, but they're about to get steamrolled by these boats. <laughs> ah, just a lot of big boats. Ethelred's fleet quite scary, and the springalls are uh, a little bit overexposed, so they're not going to have a good time here. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised to see this dock die again. So Delhi's uh, trade gravy train is going to go offline, which I think will motivate Delhi to try and kill Teal on the island. Treb's trying to return the favor. Um, yeah, you see this? This is like what you build when you want to land on somebody's island and finish them off. But Red's coming in. Oh my god, look at this, guys. Red coming in from the north side. Went from real sleepy to real action-packed here. Barcher Palace getting annihilated by the elephant squad. Town center are going to be next, and the English player could just be dead. Holy shit. Red is going... Red went bananas with that. And England's Navy is woefully out of position as the town center is being attacked by the elephants. Come on, Red. You need to do it. You need to get this game going, Butters. You need to finish him off. Don't let him live. So is there any landmarks on other islands? Doesn't look like it. TC is being built, but that's going to be his last landmark. Elephants getting in there. Doing a bunch of damage. Barcher Palace. A lot of elephants aren't attacking. A bit of a lapse in micro. They should move this way and get this around. But the Jebeks popping it like it's hot. And it looks like Teal has been finished off by the Lord of the Seven Seas, Butters. Butter is pretty delicious for sure. Wow, what a what a nasty, nasty backstab there. And so Ethelred, the, our mighty English champion, has fallen. And now, as far as the players go, we we have three players gone, basically four. The Mongols are really just like just a meme right now. They they just have sixteen scouts that they're going to go do some landmark sniping with, right? So moving across, Red is going to be coming back to secure their dominion. Looks like the top of their base has been flattened by the HRE. Oh, that's going to suck. Losing Dome of Faith, it'll knock all those relics out, which is going to really hamper their income for a period of time until that gets rebuilt. So that would be a strong play, and it does get knocked down. Brutal. You're going to want to repair that pretty quickly if you can. Red securing the island. Red obviously has made some enemies over the course of the game, but we have seen some individuals falling. Are we going to see any land-based conquest? Uh, we see rams and springalds. Is there going to be a wonder or some shit? Is there some weirdness going on? No. Is anybody banking stone? 
The highest amount of stone is fish fry. He's Mongols though, so it doesn't count. Um, Bob RTS does have six four thousand six hundred stone, so like in the territory of a wonder, but his gold is very diminished. Hey, GG, well played to our English champion. If you're in chat, you played great. It was it was a really fun game. Two relics on that island, man. Somebody's gonna be lucky to get those for sure. The Delhi Navy getting ambushed by some demo ships. A really nice demo ship play here by Green. Rexosaurus just AFK with his land-based army, but actually microing his naval army pretty effectively. Double keeps here holding it down. Delhi does have some farms there, which is kind of cute. Uh, you tried, sorry, you tried. Oh, is that you, Lord Shiro? Yeah, you did great. You did great. Hold your head up high, man. It was, it was a good game. It's a good game. You kind of got swarmed at the same time. It was a rough one. Is Arcade Rush going to attack? What's he doing? He's got his fleet. I, I, he must have just loaded up the rams. <laughs> I don't think Dark Age Rush realizes that this guy's dead. Yeah, so Dark Age Rush prepares like a huge invasion. And he just arrives on this like dead land. Um, at least he's going to get the relics though. So he'll secure those relics for himself, which is going to be huge. I think Dark Age Rush is probably going to be sitting on like six or seven relics at this point. If the rams can get those ones. Yeah, so he's going to load those up. And honestly, doing a sneak attack on Red's base could be very strong. But Red does have those Delhi Elephants. Who would have thought that building that landmark on the island here would be such a clutch play? Still not trying to repair his Dumb of Faith, I guess because the enemy ships are still encircling him. And um, Butters is, is really resource starved. He's, he's got his navy, but it's pretty damaged. You could come over here and probably fight this off, but it would take a considerable, uh, you know, colossal effort to get it done. Oh, this is going to be the last one tonight, Mr. Moo. Yeah, but we'll, do, we'll be streaming again in a few days, don't you worry. All right, so transport ships loaded up again. He's, he's taking his loot and fleeing. Certainly a good raiding run. Trying to defend his island, a lot of elephants. I wouldn't be surprised to see the elephant landing up here on the HRE base. But the HRE mainland is, is secure, but the island is not. If the elephants got here, they would just annihilate this entire island uh, as long as they played from the center. And I think that's gonna be the case. We see the elephants moving out to sea here. So green is gonna be targeted by red next, I would wager. Um, the Mongols just trolling as usual. The Mongols like could get back in this game if he if he starts building villagers again. Is he is he just like has he just given up? He's got 16 eco. He's not producing vills. I guess he has nothing for them to do on the island. So he's just kind of like whatever. He's just building docks and boats and things like that. But yeah, it's gonna get crazy here in a second. We do see the red army outmaneuvering. Oh my god, look at that! HRE, it's only one bombard, but Red could be in a little bit of danger. No, he, he has the elephants here still. Okay. I was going to say, if the elephants had fled the scene, then, um, you know, that could have been... A, oh, my God. Is he going to do a smash and grab and try and get these relics? Here comes the ambush. The demo ships are at the ready. Are they going to get in? Oh, man. There's going to be some big demo ships. It does clear out a couple. Oh, the HRE matrix trying to get away, but no, he's not quite going to get away with the relics. He tried to scurry away with one of them, but there is going to be a Delhi font counter push probably so update from chat red is offering purple his island back if he attacks green okay purple claims he has no resources left which is probably true to an extent yeah it's true he's actually he he's not lying but overall delhi able to kind of secure its island rebuilding its uh dome of faith here and the dome of faith is going to be um you know stacked with relics again yeah, I love that Orange's Haggard Scout raids. I think that's going to be my favorite thing as we progress. Granted, everything is pretty secure. There's not like a lot of infrastructure for him to clean up. I mean, he could come here and hit this island and, you know, take some of the resources. But overall, you know, not too devastating. Do we have transport ships? We do. Oh my god, I love the elephant drops. The elephant drops have got to be one of my favorite things. Did he snag one relic? It might have gotten sunk at the seas. Oh, I think... I think he did get a relic. Oh, he got one. It's probably sitting in that boat right there. I love that. Holy shit. That's so troll, dude. Because, like, in this, like, game where everybody's, like, starving, it's, like, that's just, like, so big. All right. Operation Dumbo Drop is underway. Transport ships for blue. Just patrolling, it looks like. Just doing a little bit of scouting. Um, Delhi looking pretty good in the middle. Got a lot of rams. I mean, Delhi could unleash some unholy fury. They have 21 battering rams here. And they could definitely put some work in on the HRE base. If the HRE base gets like Dumbo dropped, it's going to be brutal. It's going to be brutal. Yeah, thank you guys for joining tonight. If you're enjoying the stream, by the way, do drop a like. It helps more people discover our uh, Age of Empires shenanigans, as they say here. So thank you. Thank you. Purple uh, looked like they were going to do a big landing invasion, but now their boats are going to be harried and pushed back. 
Operation Dumbo Drop is underway. I don't think that red wants to kill those boats. I think it's just they just automatically attack, but... Yeah, the Dumbo Drop is going to be pretty brutal, and green is going to be in a, uh, a pretty bad position after that. It's going to be a lot of their food eco gone. You know, they have a fair amount of villagers there. And, oh my god, no, don't let the Dumbo boat get sniped. Oh god. Oh, no, 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 no. Not like this. That's so much value in one boat. Oh, just land. Just land here, dude. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Just land. You got to get those Dumbos back. Oh my god, that's so much money in one boat. You got to just land, dude. Okay, he lands, and now at least he can move in and, and do something with them, you know? Because if that Dumbo drop had, uh, that would have been like thousands of gold worth of units. I mean, they are free, but... Now he's just moving into Purple's base. Probably just passing by right there. Oh my god, I got like I got like anxiety for that. I was like, oh god. So there they go. Red said sorry for the drive-by. Looks like he's trying to get to uh, the base of the Holy Romans, and he is gonna get there. So the boats are being loaded up once again. It looks like the French army is gonna be gathering in the boats. Um, overall, Red's fleet gone. So Red is kind of in an all-in position now. He has no wood. I mean, Red is, is just in the potato realm right now because his relics got stolen and he just has these elephants. All right, the elephants have moved into the HRE base and the Duhost is coming. A lot of rams coming from the middle from Dark Age Rush. All right, guys. The Elephant Legion is going to get massacred, but they are going to take some units with them. Maybe they're going to try and take down a keep. Who knows? They are shooting down some bills and some units, which is going to be making the Delhi push all that more effective. Holy shit, that is a lot of rams, dude. That is a hell of a lot of rams. And here we see a little bit of coastal raiding as the HRE player. The HRE player probably just want to secure your island now. Evacuate your relics? I don't know. Maybe they're going to be able to hold, but that's so much rams. 21 rams is so brutal. That is so much wood, by the way. You know? That's like over, what? That's like over 6,000, like six, 7,000 wood invested right here. Which on this map is a shit ton. That's like crazy, crazy amount. So a lot of landmarks going down. Rams making progress, torching through Green's base. Look at this, we get a big landing. So purple going for the counter punch on red. Wow, I did not see that coming. I thought he was going to go elsewhere, but he is going to go for the kill on red, which makes sense, I guess, because red's camping his landmarks. You see the scholars pop out being killed by the horsemen. Oh my god, he's going to wall low it. No, it got, he got sniped by some of the archers. Wow, that would have been a brutal snipe. This is some serious backstabbing here, guys, because red is now going to die. That's going to kill both of his landmarks, and red is out, and green is out also. So, I think blue just wins this game, like, straight up. The Mongols are basically just trolls. Um, not going to be able to do a whole lot here. We'll see. So here comes the Ramstein pushing up. A keep is going to be dropped by the Delhi Sultan at the El's Chad Palace, holding firmly in the night. And over on the east side, the backstab of the gods going down. And that is going to be all she wrote for Butters. So Butters was a very, a very decisive player that game. Good play on the islands, but at the end of the day, it was not enough. So HRE being pushed back by the Legion of Unholy Rams. Delhi reinforcing with Mangonels and Springalds. And I can't believe the Els chat is still holding. Keeps for sure going to go down. There's way too many Rams. Regnants might be rescued by these men-at-arms. There's no relics in there, but it still does provide you the gold bonus, which is good. And uh, will the HRE hold? That is the question. Yeah, man, that Dumbo action was crazy this game. The Dumbo drops were were serious. So Red's landmarks uh, obviously are, uh, you know, now the, the French can come get their landmarks back, which is pretty big. That means Guildhall is back online for the French, which could make them a contender, depending on how long the game goes. And yeah, using this fleet here wouldn't be bad, and grabbing these two relics would be a huge play. Nice. Really good play by Bob. Really, really good play right here. Bob has got it. Okay, so there are a couple relics that they can grab. And now if you're purple, you just go land in green's base. Maybe, although green is kind of keeping blue honest here, but yeah, no blue's won. Oh boy, it's going to be a sacred party. It's just going to basically be a 1v1. What are the Mongols doing? Um, they have their scouts. They're, okay, Mongols are just scavenging right now. So they're just they're just looking for whatever they can. Um, Rexasar is here. Relics being stolen. Delhi has got to be really relic rich right now. Um, I, I They've got to have seven or eight. Dark Age Rush really coming together in the fourth quarter of this game. Hey, Timothy, well played. Who are you in the game? Let us know who you were. It'll be fun, man. Glad to see some new faces in here. So the island is going to be resecured for the French. Keeps are being knocked down. And I would love to see this army used again, like landed somewhere else. You could even try and sign blue. Like blue's only landmarks are here and here. If blue loses these two landmarks, blue's dead. I think. No, there's one more. Yeah, there's uh, there's 
There's, uh, I believe, the elephant. Not elephant landmark, but he has another one somewhere around. But, yeah, it could be devastating. HRE being flattened off the island. The conflict has ended. Um, relics are mostly gone now. And now we're going to be seeing a landing force here. Are the French going to be getting their villagers on the island? It looks like they're gathering all their transpo ships. Yeah, they're loading up here, getting nice and ready to party. There they go. Get on in there. On the other side, we do see the keep coming down. Delhi doing more keep drops. Not bad. It also protects the fallen landmarks from being rebuilt. Maybe don't kill this market, although understandably you're in the heat of action because um, that market could be a pretty good trade site. But, you know, HRE would probably just delete it. So I suppose just get in there and take it down. And yeah, a big Doom Fleet's going to be loading up again. Transport ship with four scholars. Did they steal the relics? Looks like some of them did make it back. I think they might have scavenged the relics from here. Nope, the relics did indeed go to the French. Timothy says you're red. Oh, you were great, Timothy. You played awesome, dude. Yeah, great game. You played really well from being stuck on the island, man. Great game. Great game, dude. All right, so here we go. Landing force is landing back in Purple's base. Looks like Purple is happy to just kind of chill out and see how this conflict uh, evolves. The Dark Age Rush is just going to push Purple as soon as he finishes with Green, probably. Although Green can still kind of help from the island, but it's not going to be great. You know, eh, not really, actually. Green's looking pretty dead after this. Another relic being taken. Keep is being finished here. HRE still pumping out troopers trying to fight. But the Rams are going to keep clearing out the base, and that's going to be that. Mongol is doing some gremlin tactics, which I respect. Landing here, pillaging the old buildings, and trying to get whatever uh, money they can possibly get. Yeah, fish is fish is just such a, a strange a strange creature in this game. Fried fish. He's just he's just doing his own thing. He's a force of nature. You know, you can't reason with him. Glorfindel, thank you for the 50. Watching your streams are better than anything on TV, any paid streaming channel. Thank you for the entertainment. Glorfindel, that means a lot, man. We got our own little niche here, but we have a good time. Glorfindel, thank you. Thank you for supporting, man. Means a lot, brother. Means a lot. Yeah, blue probably wins this. Uh, I don't know if green and purple ally and do some shenanigans and some backstabbing, maybe, and get really, really scrappy. And if the Mongols help too, like the Mongols could still cause problems. If the Mongols built like 50 scouts and torched these landmarks down, like blue could be close to dying. So it's not 100% blues game yet, but it's looking like it. Once again, Glorfindel, thank you so much for that donation, dude. It's really generous of you. Mm. All right. So battling going on on the north side of the continent, the HRE slowly being pushed back to their island. Um, looks like they're trying to set up houses on the island, which makes sense. And uh, the landmarks have not been re-grabbed by the French yet. Okay, now they're doing it. Villagers heading across. And uh, they're going to be repairing all these landmarks. That's very nice. Neutral market would have been cool on any other map, but here it's not going to be so useful. And uh, Tithe Barns is active. Mongols have successfully raided this place. Dude, what if the Mongolians come back and are just the overlords, dude? Oh, that'd be so cool. Do we have a war correspondent? Yes, Gunhound. Pretty much no salt in this game, says Gunhound. Yeah, we get salt sometimes. Salt is fun, though. A little salt I like, you know. I have I have what I guess I would call a hard-on for salt. So if somebody is salty in my game, I just, like, get tunnel vision to make them saltier and kill them. It's just, like, I have... I don't know. I don't know. I think that's usually, you know... You don't want to reward salt. Because when people get salty, what they're trying to do is, like, get spared or get, like, leniency. And if you reward that behavior, they'll keep being salty. I think you got to go in and you got to just, like deliver the hammer of justice when people get salty, you know? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. So we do see the towers coming up for the Mongols. The Mongols are back! Dude, the fried fish is here, dude. He's not messing around. He is not messing around. Looking on the other side, we do see the English island being farmed by the Mongols. Every scrap of resources is going to be cleared out here as HRE is retreating off the island, pulling their troopers back to defend and uh, is going to be relegated to here. Uh, two relics on the mainland. Regnitz Cathedral is destroyed at the moment. And uh, over here, looks like the French have done their job, so perhaps going to be uh, evacuating that island. The Mongols are going to be there soon, though. The Mongols are probably going to take those relics also, which is going to be pretty funny, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, this isn't going to last long. Dark Age Rush is going to see the Mongols trying to emerge from their rat's nest again, and he's going to come in like a wrecking ball and just Miley Cyrus these guys, dude. It's going to be brutal. Dark Age Rush getting a little bit lazy on the micro here. He could he could move through and steamroll all this. Um, looks like he's maybe just focused on other things now. Orange Orange is landing in his base. Oh my god, look how troll this is. We have some like orange scouts just like in his lands. 
That's so funny, dude. All right, so Mongols still torching things down. Their navy doing a good job destroying buildings as well. I really, really, really wish there was an attack order move in this game you could do that would attack the buildings of dead players. Like you could hit like shift attack order or something and it would like destroy ruined buildings. So you didn't have to shift click on them all. It's really obnoxious actually. Yeah, so Dark Age Rush moving up, pushing green off the continent and he's got his keep here to keep tabs on things. And blue is just, you should just kill purple here. Like purple should just get steamrolled by him. Um, he does have Red Palace, which will give him some holding power, and Guildhall is not fully back online. It is being repaired right now. TC also being repaired. But, um, yeah, you gotta steamroll. Like, if you're blue, you just steamroll uh, purple, and you just go for Sacred. That's it. You just build, like, 10 keeps. I, I would imagine he's got a good bank of stone with Tithe Barns. Yeah. Oh, wait, no, that's the wrong player. Never mind. Dark Age Rush doesn't, but um, Bob, Bob does. Bob actually has 6,000 stone almost, which is pretty wild. On the other side, what do we got? All's calm in the realm. And the uh, power dynamic of this game is starting to really show. As we see purple, the last bastion of resistance against the Delhi Sultanate is hanging in there. So I suspect Dark Age Rush is gonna move over to the east now and just can commence the steamrolling. Um, he's got a mass artillery army. Um, this base would probably fold up very quickly, very, very quickly. So Gunhound. We got some politics. There's been uh, calling, green calling on everyone to unite. Okay, so yeah, Dark Age Rush, for sure the arch villain here. I don't know why the Mongols score is so high. Must be a bug. Mongols have had buggy score for a long time. It's, it's, it's a very strange thing. Island completely cleared off. Uh, the Khan has risen. Sacred Site not really like entrenched or anything. I would wager he will do that soon. Start setting up some towers and buying some resources. Let's look at the current resources. Um, we will sit on Dark Age Rush since he has the most interesting economy. Yeah, he's, he's pretty good. He's okay. He's got about 7,000 gold. He's gonna do fine. Look at the Mongol invasion from the south. This is some wild stuff, dude. Check this out. So he's got like some spears down here, some boats. He's like he's like pushing. Yeah, it looks like the haggard gremlins are uniting. You guys think, okay, we're gonna put it to a vote right now. So I'm gonna make a channel poll. Just give me one second. Who wins? Gremlins or Dark Age? Hold on. Okay, almost ready. There we are. All right, let us know who you think is going to win. You think it's going to be the Gremlin Alliance or the Dark Age Rush? Find out here today. It seems like so far a lot of people voting for Dark Age Rush. He could be swarmed though, I'm telling you. You never know. Like purple does have a good arm, not good army, but a lot of stuff. It's all low quality units, but it's still something. HRE could get Navy, or they could even do some landmark sniping. Okay, HRE loading up their boats with a lot of bombards, well, a couple of bombards, and men-at-arms as well. I want to believe the Gremlins can still pull this out. If Orange wins this game, dude, if Orange wins this game, I would be, I would be massively shocked. I would be massively shocked. Bombard cannons moving from the north, and that is Dark Age Rush uh, coming to push the Mongols back to the sea from whence they came. Should be very doable with this quality army. Purple is very passive though. Um, maybe going to be relying on Guild Hall. Yeah, he's, he's, he's banking gold, which is smart. But purple could take this opportunity to do some raiding, like get in here and attack and just you know shut down some of the trade. It's only eight gold on trade though, so it's pretty pretty bad. Um, HRE I think does have a good bank. Yeah, I think green does. Yeah, green's got a beautiful bank. Eighty thousand and twenty-seven thousand wood. I mean that's solid. He can spam rams all day if he can resecure his mainland. And yeah, Green should be trying to resecure some space if they can. Um, I know they had a, a dropship force. Okay, so where is this dropship core going to go? They're looping up and around as if they want to go down the side of the map, maybe? Like, they need to all team up on blue. If they... Here's the thing. If they attack... If the gremlins attack together, they might have a chance. If all three of them are pressuring at the same time, if, if Orange is like raiding with scouts and, you know, the HRE is like raiding the coastline and dropping units wherever, and then the French are pushing hard with battering rams, they might be able to do something. But as it currently stands, they're not really working together too hard. I see a lot of you guys are voting with your hearts and not your head. Yeah. Fair play, Peter. Fair play. I, I think there's some truth to that. Um, HRE goon squad, are they doing like a massive exodus? Are they sailing around the edge of the world all the way down to the back of Blue's base to snipe some landmarks? That would be really funny. Um, so Blue's landmarks, we have the tower, we have the, the castle, 
Um, and where's the last landmark? Where is it? It's around here somewhere, isn't it? You should have this Imperial Age landmark up in a boot somewhere. So I don't see it. Does anybody in chat know where his Imperial landmark is? Because I see the TC here. That was the only one he built on that island. Then you got Feudal, you got Castle. Am I just blind? I feel like it's like, it's probably the, oh, here it is. Oh, shit, okay, Hisar Academy, all right. So there could be some funniness there. All right, the, the war begins. So now we see Blue coming in to try and finish off the, the, the French. And the French are gonna send their battering rams to attack the base and defend with the rest of their army. And honestly, they might be able to defend for some time. Rams cleaning out houses here. It's gonna be tough for them to get in there. Um, we see the Boats of Doom going up and around. Mongols still purging the islands. Mongols not trying to really set up shop again, so they're basically back to their goblin mode. And the French are going to be sallying forth with a bunch of, you know, not knights, but horsemen and scouts. Units which are pretty good at diving artillery. Holy shit. Oh my god. If he gets that army, that's going to be devastating. Yeah, he needs to just ride on top of this artillery and just kill as much as he can. Oh my god. That's a big, big turn there. That's a lot of artillery that's going to pay the troll toll. That is so much gold that Dark Age Rush just lost. He did get some of it away, but he just, like, that was a horrible trade for him. And the archers are going to mow down the hand cannoneers. Overall, that was an extremely cost-effective trade. And rams have gotten into the base here on the other side. They start knocking down buildings and uh, causing havoc. And, yeah, very good fight for purple. Yeah, Dark Age Rush does have the better economy in pretty much every way. So he might be able to get his war machine back online quickly. Looks like the Bombards and Spring Alts are starting to turn the tight. And uh, the, the Delhi is now back in business. That was about as good as that fight could have gone for purple. Um, so that was good, but I still think he's going to be in danger. Uh, Dark Age Rush is just so much more powerful. Um, all right, so it looks like maybe a landmark snipe attempt coming around. It's really, really funny. Um, green, probably, let's see. So going to green, looking at his vision. Um, I don't know if he's like scouted this region. Maybe he, he probably just suspects the, he might go here first, but he hasn't scouted any of this. Um, although, yeah, he scouted right here. So let's see what that gives him vision of. Okay, so he did scout this area. But this should be completely unfamiliar to him. Looks like he's going to be landing in the back. He could just land right here. This would be a good spot to back door. Meanwhile, good counter raiding from the French moving in from all directions. Guys, the gremlins are uniting. They're fighting back well. The Dark Age Rush is, is he's, he's Thanos. He's like, uh, he's like Thanos versus the Avengers. He's, he's the inevitable doom, right? But we do get a landing force as Green lands on the coastline. A um, couple Mongol ships, unfortunately, attacking their allies here. Definitely need to drop off the artillery here. HRE getting in with a little bit of a backdoor press. That's going to be something. With the French pushing and everything, it's it's disrupted. So unfortunately, the Mongols accidentally killed the ships that have the artillery in it, except one Bombard did get away, which is good. But yeah, he's being attacked on several fronts. Dark Age Rush making huge progress into the base of Purple, but he being hit by the Gremlins as well. The HRE troopers landing with some prelates. A lot of prayers to the Jesus going down right now. Bombard Cannon going to be creeping over, and he could start landmark sniping. I think he's going to... Okay, he discovers the landmarks. So he knows the landmarks are there now. He could dive them, um, but protecting that Bombard Cannon is probably your best bet. And just methodically sniping those down. He knows where those are now. So he can plan later, or at least he knows where one landmark is. That's going to be wild, dude. So it looks like here, Dark Age Rush able to secure... Purple's running out of steam. Um, he's being pushed here pretty hard. Purple was able to re-secure his island, though, so he's, he's in some, some form of business. And uh, he does have some idle troopers over here who need to get busy. HRE troopers holding in like chads. There's going to be a huge Agassi rider force coming down with their hammers to bonk those HRE men at arms on the head, which will certainly be enough to uh, put them out of their, uh, their business here. <coughs> Dive on the Bombard Cannon. Bombard Cannon's going to get it. And uh, he does take down the Hisar Academy. He has a little bit of scouting. He does see the other landmarks here. So the Tower of Victory and a little bit of danger as well. And honestly, Delhi's pretty close to being landmark sniped, guys. Like, very close. The Hisar Academy going down and then the uh, compound of the Defender is basically it. Look at the, the, the Red Palace trying to hold off the battering rams. Oh, man. The French trying to keep a foothold on the main island. In the meantime, the Mongols um, not really doing a whole lot. They're building some docks. You know, they're, they're unga bunga on the shorelines. And as the Rams make a play for the Red Keep, the Red Keep is going to hold the Red Palace. Cersei Lannister. Uh, Cersei Lannister, yes, that would be... She's, it's the Red Keep, right? This is Red Palace. The Red Keep is in Game of Thrones, right? That's, a, that's, in, that's, in, uh, that's in King's Landing. 
Am I crazy? I feel like I feel like I'm I'm on the point here. So landmark sniping, almost there actually, but it does get repaired. But now Green is gonna get some ideas. Green could muster a sniping squad. He's making culverins. Um and culverins and ram some bombards. And if they come around and land there again, they could do some really, really nasty work. But the Tyrant Dark Age Rush is getting there. Team Gremlin is starting to struggle a little bit, guys. They're starting to struggle as the Gremlin Alliance is falling apart slowly but surely. The Red Palace is going to be just taken down through sheer attrition. There's like spring all shooting it at this point. Just all hands on deck. Looks like a couple of villagers trying to repair it. French, they have their elite royal knights fighting for the last bastion of, uh, of France here. Villagers scurrying in circles and it looks like the Red Palace is going to be uh, surviving here. Guild Hall and Town Center back up. If the French could slap down a couple keeps on this island, that wouldn't be bad at all. Bob currently ha does have 4,000 stone. So might as well slap down some keeps here to make it harder to push you. And the French do hold. Most of their land was eviscerated, but they are able to get a bit of a hold here in the fourth quarter. The HRE split push did some work. And where are the bow chads? Chads are nearby for Mongols. Um, Mongols are making Kashyyyks. What does the Mongol economy look like? Oh, that's so bad. Oh, God. They have no way of getting wood. <laughs> oh, the poor Mongols have no way of getting wood, bro. Like, none. So they, they just, like, literally can only build, like, a couple Kashyyyks at a time. And they are doing their part, you know? Shout out to the Mongols here, guys. Look at them. They're, like, torching random buildings, which, you know, everything matters. You know, maybe they won't be farms here later now because of this, right? All right. So there they go. More going there, and the market's going to get taken down, and he's getting resources for this. The French are trying to hold. They're keeping the south still standing firm. Let's look at the resources of everyone. The HRE, if the HRE could manage to reestablish land, that's also a big problem. The HRE player should have reestablished the land right now. During all this, they should have just taken and built up a huge land core and just started spamming rams into blue space, maybe. Um, it's easy for me to say, though, when I'm watching, right? Market's being taken down. Dark Age Rush. Let's look at his resource bank. He's looking pretty worse for wear, too. I mean, nobody here is looking great. The Gremlin Alliance might be able to find a way. Knights diving the artillery pieces, which is extremely cost-effective. Taking those bad boys away. Um, sacred sites? Yeah, one sacred site still being held by the French. The Red Palace is holding that one firmly. And we're about to hit the two-hour mark in this game. Which uh, is looking to be a pretty epic one. We've had some great games tonight. This one had some moments where it was very like lazy and kind of not exciting. But as we've gotten into the latter stages of the game, I would say it's gotten pretty good. Yeah, everyone's resource starved again. Yeah, so whoever's getting those free units, it's going to be Scout War soon, guys. The Scouts are coming for blood. Delhi pushing up with Rams. There's still a lot of trees, though, on the map. Like, we got trees, trees, trees. Um, at least in that quadrant of the map. Oh, yeah, look at that. There's a lot of trees up that way, too. Heading to the keep. The French probably just want to hunker down in the Red Palace and just hope they can hold the sacred side that way. I'd wager that's going to be the jam. Elephants shooting their big crossbows. They do have the bonus for heavy. Plus 11 damage against the knights, so not bad. Knights going to be diving the, or the rams. And anti-cavalry uh, elephants also being called in, so they should do it. Yeah, Blue's trade is not active at the moment. He's trying to resecure it, you can see, but it's really pitiful trade. It's like, it's literally like 20 gold per root, but I mean, hey, if it gets you a bombard cannon after a couple of runs, and I suppose that's worth it. Um, one keep gonna fall here. The elephants are tusking it pretty hard. Um, what is Green doing? Is Green doing some secret agent shit again? Okay, Green is loading up a Hail Mary squad. Bombards and men at arms and trebuchets and rams. Wow, who would have thought? The, the fate of this game is going to be basically on these uh, this HRE fleet here. Are they going to be able to get around or are they going to be intercepted by Mongols again? Which would basically ruin that whole thing. So the French here, losing their TC, losing their keep. It's going to be hard to take down the Red Palace. Delhi really not able to produce too much. Just a lot of men at arms on the way over. Delhi does have the relic advantage though and all of those, um, of all, and the sacred site money. And Mongols have completely trade embargoed here. They're going to have to work together. The HRE should try and get land presence back too. Because the thing is, if Dark Age Rush gets sniped, then, you know, whoever owns the land is going to have the sacred sites and the wood. What a wild ass game we've had. All right, so Delhi moving up with more ramps. Mongols have the trade embargo on the coastline. Green 
cackling, looking to do some landmark sniping. He's he's loading up quite a hefty army here. Pretty respectable force, actually. And uh, he could also go... Wouldn't it be funny if he just, like... Oh, man. Yeah, the thing is, if he takes out purple, then... Yeah, he needs purple. This is... You gotta kill... You gotta try and kill blue. And then reestablish yourself on the land. That's gotta be the plan for the HRE. Um, the safe... There are no safe routes. The Mongols have, like, blockaded every route. So that's going to be the worst part for the HRE is when they try and get somewhere, they're going to just not have any opportunity, right? It's going to be bleak. Dark Age Rush pushing up with Rams. Wearing this down. Killing the Red Keep, though, is such a nightmare. It's so unholy how strong that thing is. Trebuchets are definitely your best bet. Um, if you could just get like two or three trebs to knock it down, you don't have to get close and uh, get taken down by the medieval machine gun posts. Literally more effective than a machine gun. Purple's had an idle army over here for some time. These guys have been sitting semi-AFK for a long time. Mongols uh, have not taken the relics here. But they do have the trade embargo. And now the ships are being fully loaded up. And he's going to have to... Green's going to have to get like a pass from the Mongols. Or else they won't be able to get through the seven seas. Alright, so here comes the rams. You can see the red palace actually kills the uh, rams pretty effectively. Currently looking at Bob. Bob is now below the supply cap. And he has no wood to rebuild houses. That's pretty brutal. Like, they can't even rebuild their houses at this point. Green is the only, or, per, or the Dark Age Rush is the only one who has access to the good wood here. That's what she said. If blue falls, purple wins. Yeah, probably. Probably. Although, honestly, no, H I would put my money on HRE. Because HRE has a huge bank. If you take a look, HRE is sitting on 23,000 wood. Which means they can build a navy, they can build rebuild on land, they can do all of that. Um, so HRE is definitely a contender. Oh, they're just going to land. Oh, he's going to re-secure his, his mainland. That's what I'm talking about. That is what I'm talking about. That's the play. I love, by the way, how the, the votes for the Gremlin Alliance are just like fluctuating. It's just like nobody knows who's going to get this. He can't get the French off the mainland here. Resources are just pure starvation. Oh, look at the Mongol raid. Look at it, guys. Oh, wow. Look at that. He's, he's just raiding and trolling. Going to be taking down buildings and cannon towers. And now Dark Age Rush going to be hustling some troops over. But yeah, I mean, it's hard to rebuild these buildings, you know. Go get some towers. Go get some bounty. HRE reestablishing. Their, the Roman Empire will rise again. As we see the villagers going to be heading towards the Regnets in the town center. But it looks like Dark Age Rush partially ready for this. But the HRE army here is very good. It's going to crush this core. They're getting in there. Elves back being repaired. Oh, that's so cool. That's so thematic. The Holy Romans trying to reestablish their great empire here. It's a very, very cool theme. In the meantime, oh, my God. bro, he's sending scouts. That's so janky. Look at the scouts just getting a last samurai as they move across. If Elves Chad Palace gets back up, that's going to give him a nice foothold, guys. Orange, does he have any naval trade of any sort? Um, looking around. Okay, Orange has some good quality naval trade, guys. That could get the dreaded Mongols back in the game. Depends on how it goes. And now the Mongols are getting in and torching. Look, the Mongols are hunting down the keep builders. They're going to just be torching all this. Wow, oh my god. The Gremlin Alliance has, has taken over uh, a lot of momentum in this battle. A lot of momentum. Els Chad did not get finished, and the Holy Romans were dispatched back to the sea. Dark Age Rush, able to keep things in check here. But all the while that's happening, we do see the Mongols uh, feasting on his lands, taking down infrastructure, uh, taking down this keep here, killing a bunch of villagers. Currently Dark Age Rush um, running out of gold. Running out of gold a little bit, yeah. If the HRE had re-solidified their mainland here, that would have been really problematic. But you know, now they're pulling back to their island. They're gonna load up and try again. Um, the French in the meantime, Got to keep coming up. Probably going to get some traps behind it if they can. The trade yielding 20 round trip, which is really bad. You guys think the Gremlin Legion's got this? I'm concerned if the Gremlins win, it's going to go really long. But honestly, I've, I've, there's no time frame for me tonight. So I can I can go all day, baby. Oh my god, do we have rams coming out? Oh, it's a bombard. So he's going to start knocking down all these buildings. I mean, hey, look, the Mongols are feasting right now, dude. The dreaded fish man is... Fried fish is, he's getting, he's got a lot of stone too. Here's the thing. If the fish man can set up a bunch of towers, he could, he could feasibly have mass cannon towers easy. Because he's got 27,000 stone. So, you know, that's pretty big. 
Purple pushing in, and it looks like he makes some progress. Could come in and start hammering some of these buildings down, but it looks like he's gonna pull back and annihilate the keep. Purple still hanging in there. HRE, are they gonna re-land? Um, yeah, they're gathering for round two. Resecuring the old empire would be pretty strong, but you see Dark Age Rush gonna be camping Spring Alts on the coast. So the boats could go down on the way in, which would be very rough. Looks like they're gonna land here though. That's gonna be 12 men at arms. Uh, a couple villagers being popped here as they try and gather, and the men at arms have landed. And that's going to be the end of the road for these springs. Although spring alds are pretty speedy, but I think the rest of the HRE will be landing. Villagers coming into Torch also. Pretty hilarious. The Mongols actually putting some pressure on Dark Age Rush. We can see his like vast empire starting to diminish a little bit. Um, you know, he's really, really dragged on so many fronts here. And Fried Fish is, is looking like he's like back in this game. Holy shit, man. His trade, his trade is really good. So he's, he's trading well. Dark Age Rush, obviously pretty busy dealing with the recursion of the Holy Roman Empire. We have a pretty stocked boats there with culverins, the works. So maybe they're going to be able to come in. Granted, hand cannoneers are a very solid counter against um, against men at arms. A couple French villagers. Are the French going to move in and attack? They should. Dark Age Rush is split on so many fronts. He's he's going to be running out of steam the longer this goes. The good thing is, how is he going to win the game? You know. Like, with this 3v1 pressure, I, I don't know how he's going to win this. It seems like the votes have gone over for the Gremlin Alliance. You guys now feel that the Gremlin Alliance is going to be pulling a victory here. Could for sure be the case. Back down. Light trade going. 10 per. Sacred site being guarded by the Red Palace has got to be very frustrating. Trebuchets are the answer, though. Got to stop making rams. Red Palace can kill rams, but trebs are going to be a bit of a taller order. The Kashyyyks do not have the Royal Bloodlines upgrade, so they're um, not fully upgraded, if I'm not mistaken. And yeah, Mongols are going to be trying to get a presence here. They do have boats, so if the fighting gets too close to the shoreline, the um, Bow Chads are going to hammer the fleet here. Yep, looks like they're getting ready to do that. And there goes the Daka. So any pushing from the north, HRE has not relanded. They're still just stocked up in their ships with a pretty big force. They should definitely land here and try and get that Elves Chad back up. That would just be brutal. And then if they could start remaking barracks and pushing again, Dark Age would be toast. The Mongols actually, who would have thought? Like we were looking at Fishy Fry. We were talking about how he was a meme earlier. He, he was at that point, but he somehow found a way to get back in this game, which is wild, dude. Team Mongols, I know. I, how can you not root for this Mongol player now? The dreaded Fish Fry. It's, uh, it, it's something. Nothing on this island, completely barren wasteland. No docks either. So there's literally nothing to be had there. The HRE got their food eco going. They've landed their second incursion force. Oh, the French don't want to clash with the HRE though. That'd be a pretty big mistake. Looks like they're coming across to help the Holy Romans re-secure their landmass. And uh, one of those does get taken down. The Mango's pretty unfortunate. But the French army does engage and uh, they'll probably be able to overwhelm this force, although they're getting a weird attack order. Okay, there they go now. Villagers repairing the Elschad Palace. The French protecting the Holy Romans, actually, buying time. But yeah, the Holy Romans are going to have to defend this themselves. They don't want to lose these villagers. The keep is being repaired, but it's going to take a hot minute to repair it. Need to get this army here to protect, you know, protect the villagers while they do their repairs. Mongols with the back pressure, though, guys. Mongols getting in there. Yeah, look at that. They got hand cannoneers. Dark Age Rush is microing very well. He's, like, defending multiple fronts, like, super, super effectively. This is not easy. You know, you got a bunch of island gremlins who are, uh, you know, out for blood here. Gotta save these villagers. Don't lose the villagers. You need them. Oh, God, they're gonna die. Delhi gonna set up a keep here. HRE does have some idle units in here. Bombards and everything that are currently not doing it. Hand cannoneers are working their way through the villagers. There's a couple left. Looks like 12, 11, 10. You literally count them going down as the, as the Dark Age Rush is manually sniping right now. So he was grabbing all those bad boys, and it looks like the Elschad Palace might get back up here. Oh my god, it is. It is indeed. Mongols on the other side? Yeah, whoever has sees the rest of them first loses, I know, boom. It kind of seems like it. So pushing across, we do see the elite Kashyyyks up on the north side. The Elsback Palace has been refirmed, and the Holy Roman Empire has been reformed. As we now go to town center here, and the HRE is going to be laying its uh, claim to the lands here. An empire that has once fallen, but is now re-arisen. All right. Will the Mongols continue their pressure? Yeah, it looks like it. A lot of Kashyyyks coming out. The Mongol economy is actually pretty good because of the trade. So they're getting 1,300 wood a minute. The Mongols could honestly 
If the Mongols can do it correctly, they could wander. I'm I, like, no joke. Mongols could straight up wander on their main island. Just move this, this, and this. Like, slap the wonder down right here. Build five billion cannon towers on your island and just wander. Because all they they don't need stone to wonder. They they just need to save up and trade with their primaries and they'll be all good. Honestly, that would probably be my game plan if I were Mongols. I'd probably go for like a wonder. Yeah, Blue's looking like he's in danger. I wonder what the politics look like now. If he's like trying to talk his way out of it. It is an iron bladder situation, I know. It really is. Alright, Ram's moving in. Going after the Stonewall Gatehouse. Trebuchets from downtown. And the HRE is back, dude. Look at this. They're building walls. They're rebuilding the walls that fell earlier. It's pretty badass for sure. But they need to get infrastructure set up on this island stat. Like, or else they're just going to lose to concentrated pushes. HRE battering ramps moving in. Knocking down the Delhi keeps. Delhi's actually struggling against Mongols now. Um, Dark Age Rush currently only has 200 wood. 51,000 food is pretty good though. Dude, I can't believe the Mongols might win this game. This is just the weirdest shit. Look, he's getting such good trade here. Yeah, Mongols are like legitimately might win this. Because they're going to pillage so many resources now. And uh, yeah, I mean, that trade they have is insane. And, and they have like a stone surplus for towers. Um, if I were the Mongol player, yeah. Fried fish should probably consider a wonder. Although the sacred counterplay is a little bit precarious. But while the French own one sacred and the um, Delhi the other, they probably wouldn't coordinate quick enough between those. Dude, the Gremlin Alliance, I think, um, has successfully won. Like, not the game overall, but, like, I wouldn't say the Mongols are even Gremlins anymore. Like, they are, um, they're a respectable foe now, so... I'd say we can say the Gremlins have safely controlled the threat. Because they're, they're back. They're back in business. I mean, they're bombarding the base. They have, they have the best income of everyone in the game. So the Gremlin Alliance, I think, has succeeded. Oh my god, an HRE with that wood surplus. Gonna be getting that going, dude. Gonna be getting it going. Now, are they gonna keep pushing Dark Age Rush is the question. Mongols trying to repair that Bombard Cannon, which is smart. You want to keep that going. Couple random uh, cannon towers set up. Definitely should slap the base on those upgrades if you can. Dark Age Rush is here. Um, man, I don't know how this game ends. I don't know how it ends. Wood is almost... Uh, Completely gone. It's just these two nodes, really. These like little like epicenter in the middle. I think is going to be it. Down here, the Mongols still chipping away. Spring Alt's coming in from Dark Age Rush. Dark Age Rush is playing like an absolute champion, though. He's literally fighting a very scrappy 3v1. And he's about to just feel the, the HRE pressure. HRE is going to be back online. Regnus is, is functional, so they're going to be getting gold again. Or more gold from their relics. I think it turns off when it dies. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know who's going to win this. I don't know. Dark Age needs to find a way to, like, make himself not the arch enemy. you know? He needs to politic or, or be like, hey, you know, the Mongols are trading. Because look at this Mongol trade route. They're trading across the entire map, basically, with these boats. And they can just keep making them, too. As a matter of fact, yeah, it looks like he's making transport ships. We haven't had a player kill in a while. It's been pretty calm. Up here, we see the blue scouts torching down TC. It's not a bad idea. Um, killing the French would be doable, although you still have to get through the Red Palace. Um, yeah, there's no easy player kills here. Mongols can hide landmarks. And the Mongol main island looks pretty entrenched. I mean, these are all cannon towers. So, killing the Mongols on their island feels incredibly difficult. Alright, so villagers are going to torch some shit. Up in the top, we do see the TC being poked, but the French army seems to be pretty good. And yeah, I feel like we just regressed like an hour. Like, where we were an hour ago is like what's going on now. I think the HRE is back. Um, French raiding a little bit. Or excuse me, Delhi raiding the French uh, lumber villagers. Can't let him get that. That's for damn sure. Guildhall 2 is on the table, guys. The French player is banking 6,000 gold. Oh, no, wood. Oh, he's saving up wood. Is he going to build a navy? I wonder what he's going to do with all that wood. That's what she said, but we'll find out. I know. I don't think anyone knows the Mongol is trading. Yeah, I don't think so. Because he's going to take over the game if he's allowed to keep trading. Hopefully, hopefully... Fish will have the foresight to build a wonder on his island and just put this game out of its misery. Because who the hell is going to be able to contest him? If he builds a wonder on his island and just surrounds it with his navy, like, nobody's going to get through that. Like, he's just going to win. Let's look at his bank and see if he's planning it. Oh, yeah, he's banking pretty well. I mean, he's definitely getting closer and closer. 
because his trade gives him every resource that he needs to build the uh, wonder. Yep, little tower crawl up in the middle from the Mongols from Fish Fry. What a Chad working his way back. Mongol trade embargo blocking everybody. And he does have this neutral dock under his control too, which has got to feel pretty good. Isn't that crazy? All it takes is like one dock to get somebody back in the game. And uh, Dark Age Rush, sir, for sure is still occupying the ire of, of everyone, but he's slowly losing ground. Like he's just ebbing and f ebbing, ebbing out life force here as he uh, gets attacked from all sides. And the Mongols are gonna be able to replenish this and do this all day. Cannon tower is building up. Pulling back to the cannon placements as more and more buildings are being purged. Wood is going to be sparse. Another keep going up. Could Delhi do something with a uh, wonder? Nope, not going to happen. Not going to happen anywhere. Yeah, the Mongols are getting uh, wood from their trade. So you can see here they're getting 100 wood and 100 gold per route. In tandem with um, stone and, uh, and food. So it's very nice. I need another drink, man. Jeez. This is going, this is going long. It's going hard, this game. We've had some scrappy-ass games today, that's for sure. On the other side, Mongols setting up more stables, looking to raid. That's really, really trolly. He's he's just setting up, like, trading or raiding on all sides just to build horsemen and scouts to go torch random buildings. But he's got to be getting a pretty penny and also picking off, like, like the Springalds and Gold Intensive Units for uh, Castle Age Rushes. Or Dark Age Rush, Castle Age Rush. Getting delusional. Getting a little hungry. It's getting late. It's getting very, very late. This is going to be a dreaded five-hour stream here. All good, all good. And again, if you guys are enjoying the stream, do drop a like. Helps out, helps keep the party going. Mongol siege push with tower crawl seems to be pretty effective. Um, you know, obviously pushing into cannon tower sucks pretty bad. The elephants do have some capabilities, but man, how is Dark Age Rush affording all these war elephants? I guess his relics really are doing well. Um, yeah, on the coast, the Mongol trade network is, is just popping off. Fish Fry is getting up there on resources, but is he building? Yeah, okay. Yes, Fish Fry. Yes, fish! That's my boy! Build those towers! Get ready for a wonder! And put this game out of its misery. Who could beat him? Nobody. Because nobody else has a navy or wood. Nobody has wood. They're not going to be able to even get to his island. He'll just blockade them. And it's just a free win. I'm really glad that he saw that. I'm really glad that he kind of like had that revelation as well. Going for a record long match? I think three and a half hours is around our longest. I. I'm not sure. So I, I don't see this game going down much, like an hour and a half more. I, I would be shocked. I would definitely be shocked. HRE is also pressing. So Dark Age Rush will probably fall if he keeps getting pressed by these two players. Elephant's going, trying to knock down towers, but being shot by cannons and also uh, hand cannoneers, bombards. The Mongols are like kind of pushing. Yeah, they're pushing. They're getting their uh, mango die. Oh my God, are they actually gonna make mango dies? and just start raiding in. Mangodize wouldn't be very good here. Delhi has a lot of keep, so wouldn't be good. French in the meantime, French could go for a wonder too if they wanted to. Um, Guildhall, you know, save up for that. Currently they have 7,000 wood, so let's see what the French economy looks like. Um, pretty respectable. I mean, they have like a little bit of everything and they're also getting all the wood in the middle. Yeah. The French could, the French would be the biggest threat to the wonder, but if you have cannon towers all around it and villagers to repair, it's gonna be tricky. Delhi men at arms pulling back as the Mongols continue farming these elephants in these ruined buildings. A um, lot of infrastructure for Dark Age Rush. He's got a lot, so he's going to be able to kind of hang in there. But man, the power dynamic of this game is is really shifting. The Gremlin Alliance was was able to do it. It's crazy because like HRE, um, the French, and the Mongols. The Mongols had like like three villagers at one point, and now they're probably the most powerful player in the game resource wise. Um, they obviously don't have a lot of military infrastructure, so they can't produce quite as quickly as some of the others, but You know that could change for sure You know the French are just get, getting whatever resources they can Understandably they want to bank, but if the French were to push in they could do some lethal damage They could probably just end Dark Age rush if they pushed in from the top because Dark Age is super busy fighting the Mongols in the south now So yeah, that would that would be a pretty good play blue calling for alliance with green now interesting Wow, how the tides turn, man. So, Gunhound, how is that being responded to? It doesn't look like it's being responded to very well, as Blue is now attacking Green. Uh, the hand cannoneers up in the wall will definitely pick off quite a few elephants. Very, very cost-effective here. The alliance is breaking down, it would seem so. Which is going to let Dark Age Rush get back in the game. Mongols? I think Mongols Island Wondering is the play, though. Like, you just do that. 
Yeah, towers are being built by the villagers. Um, plenty of space right here in the middle. It's, it's, you know what's crazy powerful about the Mongols too? Is they could place the wonder where the TC used to be because it's out of range of boats. Although I think the wonder might be a little bit bigger. So maybe, maybe that's not the case, but it would be very hard to range. Sacred sites, there's only two. There's one here and there's one up in the north as well. There's two sacred sites. He just offered a relic. Oh, look at that. Wow. So Blue offering uh, an olive branch of peace to one of his former enemies here. As the po politics in the Game of Thrones action gets uh, quite, quite fierce. Mongols uh, back in business in every regard. They got a bunch of towers up. Mongols getting every resource. A little bit of haggard trade on the top. It looks like uh, purple and green are trading together. It's it's very it's not like amazing, but yeah, they could definitely do something down here. Mongols setting up towers here to secure their trade. Definitely a good call. So they're going to be grabbing that. Green said more than one relic. Three. Wow, he demands three. <laughs> yeah, M appealing. Just Misha, you just waking up. Yeah, the good times are rolling here. This has been a this has been a really good stream. We've had some good battles. I'm just gl grateful I wasn't playing tonight. My hands would have fallen off. That's for sure. Dude, the Mongols are slow pushing the Delhi pretty hard. And if Delhi loses middle and loses that trade post, they're going to be in bad, bad shape. I think Dark Age Rush knows he's losing this and probably is going to be trying to, <coughs> excuse me, form some sort of an alliance here. It's going to have to be the case. Yeah, a couple of dudes moving in, but the outpost should have cannon towers and those Delhi troopers should pay the price. Um, Delhi still could get landmark sniped. The Mongols could easily landmark snipe them. If, if Fish Fry were to load up like six Bombards on the southern coast, move up, he would have all three landmarks just lined up like bowling pins. And uh, he could probably end the game that way too. This game is, is a lesson on destroying weakened opponents when you can. Dude, T-Rex push-ups all day, dude. All day. Yeah. No, no Shogunite. It was something else. It was something in real life, yeah. So, um, yeah, no. You never, you never want to take it easy. You always got to finish people off, for sure. So Dark Age Rush lost the landmark? What? Wait a second. Which landmark died? Is, is, is his TC on the main island? Yeah, okay. It looks like the TC maybe fell on the main island there. Okay. I don't know what destroyed that, but something certainly did. The Mongols looking pretty crunk. Um, they still are making spring alds and siege equipment. Currently, they're supply capped, though. Again, Mongols, I think you just, you just bank. How much is he actually trading? Let's see. Um, 26 trade chips. Probably could use a couple more. Yep, so you can see there, he gets a nice little surplus of resources. And uh, yeah, I would just build as many trade ships as he possibly can. Mongol is moving into attack, which is interesting. Dark Age Rush uh, appears to be getting partially sieged. Yeah, one of his keeps is getting knocked down here. I don't know what the Mongols are doing, sacrificing these spearmen. Uh, I mean, uh, they might kill an elephant or two, I suppose. Maybe, if they get lucky. Nope, doesn't quite look like it. Hand Cannoneer is also shooting. One elephant does go down there. And now the Holy Romans are going to be steamrolling, guys. Here they come, baby. Here they come. Yeah, looks like they're going to go around. Relic's being uh, taken further back, so the Relic Offering looks like it was withdrawn. And as soon as the Relic Offering was withdrawn, the HRE comes in like a wrecking ball and is going to be trying to uh, collect their uh, blood tithe here. Mongols doing some raiding, sending their boats around to shoot uh, at this green base. Not a bad idea. That's plenty of resources you could farm. Granted, there might still be a bit of a weird alliance between those two players. Who knows? HRE about to get control over the middle. He who controls the spice, we'll see. So the spice in the middle could be taken. Basically, it's the spice. It's like the who, who would be who would be who this game. So it's pretty perfect. Um, I would like to hear your analogies. So up top we have Rexasaurus, then we have Bob RTS, we have Dark Age Rush, and we have Fish. If you were to give them assignments based on the Dune houses, who would be who? Who would be the Harkonnens? Who would be Atreides? Who's the Fremen? And who is the uh, Imperials? You know, who's who's the Padasha Emperor? I'd be I'd be curious to hear your, your analogies. And I want some explanation why, if you're gonna give any. I'd be, I'd be quite curious. Who would be the Fremen? For me, the Fremen would be the Mongols. Like the way they've like scrapped and survived in a harsh environment and they're still resilient, I think is like very Fremen. Um, the HRE would probably be like the Atreides, I think. Um, the Imperials would probably be Dark Age Rush because they've been like, you know, owning and tyrannical over the middle for a long time. And the Harkonnens, I don't know, but the French don't really come across as like oppressive. So it's harder to give a Harkonnen, you know, in this situation. Wow, trade secured for the HRE, man. 
Dear God. How's this base looking here? More and more towers coming up. Fish is banking some nice resources. For the love of the dark gods, please somebody go for a wonder, you know. Paul, shut up, quote. You're saying Dark Age rushes Carino, French is Atreides, Mongols. You think the Greens are the Harkonnens? Okay. It's an interesting perspective. <laughs> Gunhound says, I was the Atreides. I died five minutes into the game. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Gunhound was the true... Gunhound was like Duke Leto Atreides. He wasn't like, you know, because Atreides' legacy lives on in a way. But Gunhound was like the Duke, you know. Who killed you, Gunhound? Was it... Oh, yeah, you got killed by the Harkonnens green. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. Wow, guys. I think Dark Age Rush is, is in danger, dude. He's probably going to get steamrolled here. And then who's going to take over? That's really the question here. The Mongols, I think, can win with the Wonder pretty easily if they end up going with it. They just need to save up gold for a little while. Dude, Dune Spice Wars is such a good game, by the way. If you guys like the, the Dune universe and the politics of it all, it's, it really encapsulates it well. Rams still hammering away at the old keep here. Guns moving across. Wolo, is there a, a naval Wolo Low up here? What the hell's going on? Mongols also raiding a little bit against green, which is curious. Looks like they're trying to shut down the gravy train. Nice trade here for uh, purple now. So the French have gotten some trade online. Sacred Sight being decapped. And HRE is exacting their vengeance. They got rams all over the place. They've taken a big army down there and uh, they can replenish that army, I would imagine, pretty quickly. Let's check here. So looking at Rexasaurus. Still got 10,000 wood and relic money, you know? So there's some relic money going down. Mongols trying to disrupt the trade that the other players have. So they want to be the Corsair of the Seas, which is smart. Which is smart. So they're going to keep uh, truffling about. Down on the south side, we see, uh, yeah, the HRE, their push was stifled, but not before they took quite a bit. Mongols going landmark sniping. Look at this, man. So we get a Kashyyyk goon squad. They might be able to get the Tower of Victory down, but the other landmarks are gonna be tough. Um, currently, Dark Age Rush is definitely not the main threat anymore. Um, Dark Age Rush's time of being the most powerful uh, lord in this game has come to an end. You know, it, it's basically the end of the road for him. He needs to just helms deep and hope hope and pray to the dark gods that these other players like, you know, start fighting one another. He's got one like one villager on uh, wood. That's rough. There's just like, yeah, the last of the wood being taken in the middle as well. Purple and green not happy about trade blockage by orange. Yeah, orange is orange is pretty villainous, honestly. Orange orange that makes sense though. You know, orange is the Fremen, right? So what happens is the Fremen don't want these outworlders coming and ravaging their planet and taking the spice without giving anything back, right? So the Fremen are gonna, you know, try and take down the Harkonnens who are harvesting spice at sea. Totally makes sense. I think there's some great Dune analogies here as well. On the south side, Mongols building some units. It's being very, very disruptive from all sides. The Tower of Victory is gonna be going down. Mongols coming in with bombards. Let me just try and knock down the keeps. Um, HRE has rebuilt a Doom stack. If this Doom stack comes down, it could definitely kill blue. Blue, purple, and green have called the truce to stop orange. Really? Really, they have, huh? Well, orange sure as hell ain't gonna stop. Orange is gonna try and kill uh, blue right now, which would be big. Because if orange kills blue, then I think he could probably just win the game against the other two. The other two are... Although the French do have the guild hall back, and um, the sacred site could be some counterplay too against the Mongols. Wow, this game's weird, dude. It's very weird. Nobody's like... At, like, so many people are just holding on to life. Um, currently, the resource bank for fried fish. He's actually getting close to a wonder in terms of wood um but yeah he's gonna need gold now yeah, this is weird man this is very weird As a matter of fact i'm gonna pause it and go grab a, a little drink because this could go longer BRB. We're back in business. Sorry, I just I had to get some refreshments. The the voice was getting parched. 
So we can go ahead and fast forward back to the live point in the game. Green breaking the pact and moving south. Okay. Here we go. This is where it's getting real crazy. I respect this. He, somebody wants to sleep, you know. <laughs> so they're gonna they're gonna take down. Uh, and honestly, for HRE, it's not the worst idea in the world. Like you, you take down um, take down blue, and you know maybe you can secure the sacred sites. I don't know. So yeah, green did march south. Mongols still collapsing in from the other side as well. Mongols are really tyrannical right now, though. No, it's not paused for the players. It keeps going, and then I can I can move. Um, I can fast forward up to where the game's currently being played. It just pauses it for me, which is really cool. It's a nice replay feature, especially for these longer games. <laughs> Dude, I had to get something to drink. My voice was getting like kind of raspy there. Now, are the Mongols going to keep the pressure on? Are they going to keep attacking blue? Dark Age Rush is scrappy as hell. I don't know how he's holding. And I do not know what in the hell the French are doing. Looks like they got little demo ships. They're going to be trundling into the Mongol trade fleet. Oh my god, that Mongol trade is just so powerful. French are building a navy. Okay. So French have actually claimed their wood. That's what she said. And now they're going for a navy of their own to try and fight the Mongols. All right. The Mongols are a little bit spread out. So they might have some problems. But I suspect the Mongols are going to muster everything they have and try and bring the hammer of justice down. Slurry's so blue said green will never get back. <laughs> green and blue blood feuding relics. Oh, I love it. That's so funny. Yeah, so it's basically just Delhi recovering and surviving after being hammered super hard for like an hour. Delhi was literally in constant warfare. Oh, I like this. Look, the French built towers with cannons and they're killing the Mongol trade ships. All right. Holy shit, dude. I honestly couldn't predict who's going to win this game. It's just like everybody has a chance, right? Like everybody has a pretty good chance here. But if HRE can get some trade going, that's going to be pretty money. Oh, they tried to get trade going, but the Mongols raided their shores. HRE going to be throwing in the, tr the transport ships to occupy the aggro of the enemy ship, which is super MLG, and trying to hold here. They might be able to hold. It's tough. They do have the dock emplacement. It doesn't do too much damage. Oh, man. Oh, my God. The Mongols just lost all of their trade, ladies and gentlemen, because they destroyed the docks with the demo ships. That's what Purple did. Oh, man. But there, is there more trade up here? No, that's a Mongol dock. Um, there are no neutral docks. Wow. So the Mongol dock, the Mongol trade empire is done. They could do some trading at these docks and be a little pirates. But aside from that, the gravy train is over, guys. It is over. And the Mongols island wonder dream is basically in the can. Yeah, no, this game is still going. Uh, you know, I was like, oh, this will be fast. You know, people are going to get killed quickly trying to get to the mainland. But it's just, it's just always how it goes, man. I wish I could do like some hands-free commentary. It'd be nice. Like someone could help me out with that. <laughs> my, mouse, my mouse hand is too weak. So the Mongol trade fleet is heading up north. Not sure they're gonna be. Oh, they're they're going to try and steal from the docks, dude. That's so haggard. Oh my god. The demo ship getting in, nuking a bunch of those down. Um, they're going for this dock. They're gonna just try and take whatever they can and flee. But yeah, the Mongol economy is going to have to... They're going to have to build pastures. They're going to have to like figure out some land-based economy. Because now it's just... We're in the potato zone now, guys. We're in the potato zone. I feel bad for East Coasters. I know Glorfindel. Yeah, so you're probably close to me. It is still going. HRE sitting on their relics. I see two relics there. This trade up top, this like trade alliance, has probably been benefiting them quite a bit. Green um, does have the land-based trade. He's trying to rebuild the dock. Yeah, the trade post. Looks like he finally gets it up here. HRE could maybe come in and kill Delhi, but probably not because Delhi does have 36 hand cannoneers. Oh my god, dude. I, I don't think I don't think this is gonna end. I'm starting to suspect this could be the most dreaded long suffering fest ever. Oh my god, the terror. The sheer terror that I'm 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 envisioning now. Okay, spring old sniping coming in. That's going to be nice. Yep, pulling back. We got Culves getting ready to counter snipe here for Rexasars. So a little bit of trading there as the spring olds and the Culverns do battle. Yep, a couple springs pay. And now the men at arms going to cruise in. Green still in constant mortal combat here. And if we look at the Mongols, yeah, they've been sieging here. The southeast, you're saying? Yeah, they're going for a landmark snipe, obviously. I, I was trying not to draw attention to it in case somebody's on the stream or something. But yeah, it's uh, it's... You know, that's that's looking like it could be a little bit spicy, all this. 
Clearly, they're uh, they're coming here for some blood. And if blue went down, that would be wild. Yeah, French are the most likely to wander. Two relics on the island now. That's pretty big. So the HRE have engaged full front. Delhi hand cannoneers doing great work. Trebuchets and artillery pieces being sniped. Ladies and gentlemen, we got some bombards coming and some Kashyyyks. This could be the end for Delhi. If they don't react well, they could they could totally pay the price here. If the HRE keeps attacking, maybe they'll be okay. Hand cannoneer is going to be running back to the base to try and stop the snipe. Keeps going down, but he doesn't go straight for the landmark snipe, which actually gives Delhi a little bit of time. And uh, I don't think they're going to get too many landmarks. They might get lucky and get one, but yeah, they're still making progress and making money. So Dark Age Rush being sandwiched pretty heavily here by both uh, the HRE and the Mongols. Could we see a French victory? Like a French Wild Wonder victory? Let's look at the French bank. Not bad, actually. Not bad. He's, he's got like 5,000 gold. You know, things are going okay for him. Bombard cannons uh, trying to landmark snipe, going after the Hissar Academy. Jesus, what a stressful game for this. Dark. I, I feel like Dark Age Rush should get like an honorary victory for how well he's played. He has been just scrapping so hard against so many players this whole game. Like, just like 3v1, 2v1, like swarmed. But he is just whole, hanging in there like a champ, dude. HRE men at arms get in, club down a couple of units, but at the end of the day are going to be taken out, and the HRE troopers going to be preparing for another push. Honestly, Delhi doesn't really have good siege. You could build a keep here. Um, that would be very, very punishing. I'm getting up for work. And oh, Gunhound, go, go get some rest, dude. Go get some rest, man. No, you got to get some rest, brother. I know, I know. Well, I, understandably, I'm, a, I'm an idol too, but man, you got to get up for work in three hours? Jeez, that's brutal. What are the French even doing? I don't know. It looks like they, they're they trying to fight Mongols at sea now. Mongols are going to go back to being gremlins again. Because without that trade, they're just like potatoes, basically. Um, the wonder is not going to happen. They could start selling food. It looks like that's what they're doing. Still doing some partial pushes. You know, all these little pushes are definitely worth it. Um, up at the top, we do see the Galeases. So a big French navy. Going to be trying to push the Mongol presence off the north, which would be smart. Try and re-secure those relics. The Mongols do have those two relics, and at this point, dude, relics are just like so, so good. Gunhound said, someone die already? Dude, I know. Anna, Anna made dinner, my wife, and it's like sitting in the kitchen. I can smell it. It's like salmon and, and rice and some other yummies, and I'm just suffering here. I'm just like, help me. I'm too weak. Yeah, we're still going, baby. We're still going. All right, up north, we got mangonels. We got counterweight trebuchets. A little bit of pushing, but Dark Age Rush has been such a good defender. Like, he's so scrappy that, like, you know, most players would have died just due to this pressure. But he just, like, finds a way to live. Despite all the Mongols and other factions, like, poking away at him. Mongols actually found a way to get some wood on the mainland, too, which is big. HRE Mangonels trying to return the favor against those hand cannoneers. They do take down a couple. Uh, currently, Dark Age Rush is basically on deathbed financially. He's got 15 eco, guys. 15 eco. He's just hanging in there. He's just hanging in there. Ah, oh, we... I eat at random times. Like, every day is a different, you know? Like, some days it'll be, like, 5 p.m. Some days it's, like, 7. Some days it's, like, midnight. It just depends on the stream schedule and, you know, what other, you know, things Anna and I might want to do. All right. Um, up top, yeah, French are trying to resecure the island, and they'll probably be able to. The Galeuses, they should be able to take down the Mongol resistance here. Mongols going once again for another snipe with the Bombards on the other side. Dark Age Rush... Poor guy rebuilding another keep here, just trying to trying to hold on. And I would imagine the iron bladder thing has um has probably been tricky. Like I would imagine one of these guys has probably had to go to the restroom at some point during this game. And they're just sitting there suffering in their chairs. Although this is one of those games where you could probably go AFK for like two minutes and still be okay. We are getting ready to eclipse the three hour mark, yeah. We're at two hours and thirty minutes. And I would never, I would never blue ball you guys with the ending of this game. It must, it must be known. All right, so the Mongols and the French Navy battling it out. The Galeuses have pretty good numbers, and uh, they have their bombards, which do 130 damage. Let's see if they are able to win against the Mongol fleet here. Looks like they might. Yep, they're knocking them down. It, it looks like the French will have resecured the northeast quadrant of the map. Um, the Mongols will have been pushed back at this point. Blue looks like he's on death's bed, though. He's, he's Palpatine right now. He's just hanging on with his relics, just trying to make whatever he can. He's got the dreaded 15 eco. Um, yeah, I don't know how he's hanging with that. The fact that the French aren't attacking him is a pretty big godsend for sure. 
Are the French going to do a wonder of any sort? The French look like they're hunkering down in the sacred site pretty hard. Um, so they have a, a built keeps there and towers. I wonder if they'll go for a sacred victory here afterwards. Who knows? HRE is pretty strong. I don't know how they're maintaining this, where they're getting their wood from. It must just be from like tithe barns and things like that. Springald's coming back out. Dark Age Rush showing how solid he is here. Yeah, he's, he's, he's getting in there, but he might lose these springs. Maybe he's getting tired. Dude, this game is pure suffering. It is entertaining, though. There's been a lot of weird backstabs and shenanigans. Mongols with a, a dread push on the side again. They got three bombards. Could come in and knock some keeps down for sure. HRE's moving in with their troopers, but the hand cannoneers fighting in the defensive chokes are really nasty. They need trebs. Yeah, trebuchets are what you need to start like nuking down the houses like progressively and pushing up and uh, they won't have the wood to rebuild all that. Rexasaurus, how is he getting 300? I guess it's just his trade up here. Yeah, he's, he's got that trade. The weird trade alliance with the French. The Mongols, have they been able to get back on land? They're getting the last of the trees on the island here. Hold on, I'm going to do some leg stretches. I'm at a standing desk, so five hours of standing and ranting is, uh, you know, taking its toll. Oh, that's good. Big mango damage, though. That's pretty nasty. They, they were able to take down quite a few models there. HRE uh, does not have too many troopers left. Looks like they were steamrolled there, and I would imagine the HRE will be re reproducing its units. Definitely should make more archers rather than men-at-arms. Um, that would probably be the way. Mongols with the split push again. Are they going to get the keep? Oh, my God. Dark Age Rush is just... He's just so hammered here, getting hammered here so hard by these guys. And he's still, like, maintaining his ground. He's not giving up too much ground. I don't know why they're building more barracks here. It's not, I mean, you have plenty of barracks here. You don't need to build more up here, for sure. I would save that wood. Um, but, yeah, the house is getting knocked down. Currently, Dark Age Rush is sitting still at full supply. His army here pushing the Mongols back, but they might have their rat's nest of towers here. These are not upgraded. Bit of a, a blunder. Definitely should have been upgraded if you want to hold that position here. The four spring alts that could, man. They're going hard. And I guess Delhi is getting uh, food from its Hisar Academy. So that's pretty nice. So they don't, they don't need to worry so much about their food economy. Up in the top, we do see the relics being resecured. But oh no, it looks like the Mongols actually ended up getting the relics out of there and took them away. Oh my god. Yeah, French are getting pretty good. I mean, the guild hall money is, is real. He's got 10,000 stone. Oh my god. 10,000 stone. Yeah, the French might find a way to win this game. HRE moving down, still getting good progress as we see the base of Dark Age Rush slowly diminishing. Hey, look, and the thing is, for the HRE base, this is, I mean, this is good to kill Delhi because Delhi has a ton of relics. And if they're able to get Regnet's money going and have like six relics, HRE could also take over the game with the gold. So, you know, I, I like this idea that they're pushing to. It, it, it makes sense to me. The last of the defenders of Dark Age Rush going to be going down, uh, mainly just artillery and keeps at this point. Mongols uh, preparing another split push here. Yes, they're doing it. And the French Towers, which disrupted his trade, are now duking it out with a couple of the bow chads right there. So. Yeah, if HRE can get those relics, that's going to be pretty massive. Rexasaurus here. Certainly not hearing no bell. He was pushed off the mainland. And yeah, Samuel, I, I see a lot of people in chat being like, hey, I just got home and oh my god, this is still going. Yeah, dude, it is. It really is. Couple knights gonna go dive that trebuchet back there. No spearmen to defend them. Men at arms chasing down these spring alts, but those spring alts have been absolute menaces this game. I think people are getting a little tired. It seems like the micro is slipping on a lot of fronts. The only person whose micro hasn't really slipped is Dark Age Rush. He's been, he's been very, very on point here. Oh my god. Everyone hates the French until they're the only ones who can end a game. I know. Now they're now now we're best friends. It's true. Uh, looking at the French bank. He does have enough to wonder soon. If he starts collecting gold and uh, other resources. What's he collecting here? Yeah, he just collected. So now he's getting wood. Oh my god, French player, please wonder for the love of the gods. If you just if the French player wonders. All right, let's see here. Here, gun is Gunhound still in chat with these guys? I was going to make a bounty if Gunhound was still here. I was going to be like the first guy to end this game. I'm gonna. I'll, I'll send him a. I'll send him an, uh, an Applebee's gift card, or we'll send him something. I don't know. The longest FFA we've ever cast was three hours long. Really? Wow. Yeah. So this could be it. This could be. This could be the longest, brother. This could be the longest FFA we've ever uh, ever casted here. It's kind of looking like it might be. It's up on the top side. We do have the Holy Romans making steady progress. Slow, slow with an emphasis on slow though. So Gunhound. 
you can you can tell uh, you can tell the tell them in chat and say that turn says whoever wins this game is gonna get a uh, is gonna get a uh, I don't know we'll do like a, we'll do this a fifteen dollars Steam gift card you know twenty dollars Steam gift card let's go big we'll do a twenty dollars Steam gift card to whoever wins this <laughs> like that gunhound is still here <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We got we got to up the ante. I don't know if they all live in the United States though. Otherwise, I would do an Applebee's gift card. That's like the ultimate the ultimate meme. But you know, it is what it is. Twenty dollars, man. A twenty dollar uh, Steam gift card to the winner. Dude, nothing. It was as much suffering as the big cranny game. Oh, this is getting close. This is certainly a contested game. It, it seems like the HRE player is trying to trying to win it. The Mongols have this unholy island fortress. So good luck at getting a player kill in the Mongols. That shit ain't gonna happen. And um, HRE is just swarming into the base and just trying to overwhelm them with sheer armored bodies right now. And yeah, what little villagers they do have left are for sure gonna be tanked. Look, look, they're like little badgers going for the uh, going for the the mosque. They know the relics are in there. That would be huge if they knock that mosque down. That's gonna really tank the economy. All right, so tower is slowly pushing. Um, trade in the center. Trebuchet is being called up from reserve. French doing God knows what. You told them Applebee's, but you'll downgrade to Steam. Sound good. Sounds good. Gunham, what did they say? Did anybody acknowledge it? <laughs> An Applebee's gift card worth half of an appetizer, the ultimate prize. I feel like uh, I feel like Applebee should sponsor us. You know, we talk about them so much. It's probably the best marketing they get. Today's Age of Empires tournament sponsored by Applebee's. That would be pretty funny. All right, so HRE slow pushing super hard, like towers. Uh, followed up by trebuchets dark age rush. I I just don't know how he's still alive. I don't get it He's got like seven eco or seven dudes working. He's it's just relics really and the Mongols looks like they got uprooted from their rats nest in the corner um, So th that's not gonna go down there HRE troops gonna be engaging versus the Delhi men at arms for sure gonna get some good trades there Yep, keeps getting nuked down houses getting taken down dark age rush is actually under supply cap now because he doesn't have enough to rebuild houses so if they just keep hammering houses, that's going to send them back to the pits. <laughs> Blue just keeps telling Green to please wonder. Blue is begging for the game to end. He's offering to be vassalized. <laughs> oh my god, I love it, dude. Just the suffering. Oh my god. The show must go on. I know. You guys just imagine Freddie Mercury just belting it out. <laughs> show must go That song's so good, by the way. Why are the Mongols attacking here? Why are they attacking Green? Green's actually trying to end the game. Dark Age is burnt out, dude. I don't blame him because he's in a position where he can't really win, and um, and like, but like, it's also he's like, it's like the Metallica song, you know, song one. It's like darkness imprisoning me, all that I see, absolute horror, and he's just like a man trapped in his own body after war. That's basically Dark Age rush. He's just like, he's alive, but like, he's just existing, you know, and struggling against the darkness. That song's so good, by the way. It's so good. Commando, thank you for the 20. A little help to alleviate the suffering. Loving all the Dune and AoE streams. Me too. All right. Uh, Mongols, are they trading? Somebody suspected they were. Oh my god, the Mongols are trading at Purple's dock. Purple building a tower to counterplay this. Honestly, deleting the dock would probably just be the better play, but, you know, we'll have to see. Blue trapped in the iron lung. He is, dude. That's a, that's a, that's a really good song, though. Yeah. Like... It's a great anti-war song, that one, and um, Rooster is another one by Alice in Chains. That's a, that's, a, that's a, another another great one, very much in the same vein. All right, so walls being built there to prevent Mongols from raiding. By the way, if you guys are Alice in Chains fans and you're looking for like a very underrated song of theirs, look up the song, it's called Don't Follow. It's, uh, it's really, really good. I think it's from the album Jar of Flies, I think. Oh, I can't remember what album that was on, but it's really good. It has like such a good midsection in the song. Anyways, we do have the men at arms gathering up here. They keep him in game as torture, I know. We trained him wrong as a joke. HRE once again pushing down and uh, the Mongols are doing uh, a mass scout push, it looks like. So the Mongols will probably come in and just try and take down. Wouldn't it be, oh, what if the Mongols did a mission impossible and like tried to jack all the relics from the mosque? That would actually be a really, really big play. <laughs> nothing, nothing is real but AOE now. Hold my breath as I wish for death. <laughs> yeah, you guys are doing a great job of the lyrics. 
Yeah. Yeah, Rooster is a great song. It's really, really good. It's really good. Uh, so Trebs and Heavy Artillery coming in. The French, uh, I mean, should be pretty... Oh, oh, here's the Wonder Spot. Please, 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 please drop it. Why is he building so many town centers here? Is he building villagers to just repair? Um, currently, we do see... <laughs> We do see Bob sitting here um, with what kind of supplies. Almost enough wood, actually. He just needs a little bit more. The guild hall, he could do it, but he wouldn't have much to defend with, so he should probably save up a little bit more. Kind of looked like a storm was going on there as well. Down to the south, uh, poor Dark Age Rush just... He's got one of those, like, never-say-die attitudes, you know? Like, one of those people who, like, just won't give up in the face of, of defeat, which is, you know, a great way to be. Um, but in this case, it's drawing him into suffering. Although, like, look, if we really look at it... Oh, that's right, French DCs have the Arbalist emplacement. It's actually a strat. It's extremely powerful. Okay, I'm learning. Um, yeah, what I was going to say is, I'm hungry. And number two, that, like, Blue does have a chance of winning this game. Like, if the Wanderer goes up, okay, and they kill the Wanderer, but don't finish off him, then Blue, like, maybe can find a way. You know what I'm saying? So, the crossbow's moving out, engaging with the HRE army, as they are being sieged down. We see, uh, <laughs> this is the never say die attitude here, just sending like scouts in to snipe like haggard artillery, you know, it's like, it's just, just going tooth and nail until the bitter end, dude. Yeah, never surrender. This <laughs> around looks like Detroit. Yeah, this is just, just anarchy, dude, anarchy. Mongols have a big scout legion. Honestly, they're probably going to try and landmark snipe with like a million scouts, which would be really funny. It's basically the only thing they can do is produce scouts, right, from their stables here. Uh, the Mongols currently looking at what kind of supply? 148 over 200. So they have plenty of room left. The Mongols are just basically torching things down now to try and recoup their money and, you know, getting the, billet, the piracy bonus in tandem with the... Uh, well, not piracy so much, but just the basic Mongol stuff. Yep, and look at that. We see the Mongols scrapping up. And the wonder is, is bound to come down here. Um, he has enough to build it now. Is he banking at the guild hall? He is. So as long as he has food and wood, he can defend himself. And he does have enough gold to build a lot of trebs too. He's got the red palace there, the TCs. Um, yeah, that's right. They do have the arbalist emplacements. He's trying to wall here, which isn't really... Yeah, it might save him a little bit. HRE still pushing in. Darkness imprisoning Dark Age Rush. All that he sees. Absolute attrition and suffering. As he's literally sending scouts to snipe artillery. That's how desperate he is right now. Mongols are about to feast. Like the heathen kings of old. <laughs> that's, that's pretty funny, Josh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So looking on the other side... Wait a second, what the hell is this? We have a, a haggard landing from from the, the from the French. They didn't know the depth of insanity that the towers held here though. Well they're trying to get their they're trying to get the relic sniped. Oh my god, dude. Look at this just jankiness, bro. That's gonna be setting back fishy fry though if the if the it does go down, but it looks like villagers will get it up in time. Spearmen coming out. And uh, yeah, that's just some wild shit. Mongols, in the meantime, cleaning up all the French island colonies. Please, French. Please. Dude, if the French player... You know it would be the ultimate suffering? If the French player builds a wonder and loses it, and then the game keeps going. That would be... That would just be pure hell on Earth. So on the other side, we see the, um, the Scout Legion. We haven't seen them active yet. The, they could definitely do some work, though. I mean, the Scouts could run in... And if you came in and torched the... Um, the mosque here, and that would basically uh, get rid of all the uh, income that Blue still has. I don't even know where Blue is getting resources from. It must just be these farms and the tithe barns. That's like it. That's straight up it. He's got no spring ults. How is the HRE player not killed him? Like, there's, he should just be dead like 10 times over. Dude, I don't know. I don't even know how he got there. Like, the Mongols have, like, vision. Well, these are just fishing boats, though. The Mongols are not in good shape anymore, either. They had their moment in the sun, but... They've all been uh, been all but shut down, basically. Mongols contesting with the French here. Please drop the wonder. Please, dude. Please, for the love of the gods. He's, he's building walls. He's being very cautious, which... Look, I respect that as well. 
I, I respect the walls because knowing that you're going to be getting like haggard torch run buys and everything, that's going to be uh, something for sure. All right, so Mortal Kombat once again here. We get archers and uh, pretty much no progress. I don't know how he's losing artillery to, to the blue. Blue doesn't have any sort of spring alls or anything at this point. Um, the Torch Overlord has not emerged yet. The French player, not no wonder in sight um, yet. The villagers are still sealing the walls here. So we do see that wall getting taken down here. 13 minutes until three hours. We're getting there, dude. I feel like this is a wonder victory. Yeah, walls mean wonder, yes, obviously. Uh, they're, they're coming for it. Mongols won't be able to do much to help. Um, Dark Age Rush will probably just let it happen. <laughs> He'll just be like, end me, bro. And then maybe we see the HRE player getting in there and trying to take down the wonder. It could happen. I mean, it's it's a pretty vulnerable position. Like, you can literally trap the wonder spot from this other side of the wall, so. Dude, look at the haggard scouts. Blue just won't die, dude. <laughs> Green seems more unhinged than blue. Oh my god, dude, please. Oh, he got the trap. He just can't kill Blue, dude. Blue just won't die. He just won't die. Blue deserves something for sure. But maybe now that we have an Applebee's gift card in play, one of these guys will like feel motivated. You know, they'll hear, they'll, they'll hear the call of their ancestors. How's the wood running out? So only a thousand wood left for HRE. Oh god, and then we're just in pure suffering mode. Because he, he won't even be able to make artillery, and just like nobody will kill anybody. Blue's just asking for anybody to wonder. Just kind of. <laughs> oh, this is like one of those like Bronzodia games where it's just like, <laughs> it's just like they're not capable of killing each other. <laughs> but also the map has made it worse because the map is like resource starved. So normally like people could keep the pressure on, but this is just, this is just pure pure Bronzodia. Yeah, because like green can't even like make a make a enough siege now. We see blue moving in. When are the Mongols gonna attack? Those the question, you know. He's pulling villagers, guys. He's making bills to fight with their daggers. The villagers are shanking down those men at arms, and once again the trebuchet is killed. <laughs> oh my god, dude! Come on, please, please, build it. Oh, he's building villagers, uh, dude. Nobody's gonna race you on that wonder. You can you can just do your thing. The French player definitely is going to get this at this point. I can see the winner uh, redeeming their gift card at Applebee's and telling the waiter, you have no idea what I had to do to earn this $15. <laughs> yeah, I know. The waiter would probably think it was like some like illicit activity, right? But in the reality, it's just grinding in a horrific, horrific game. Somebody, isn't there like a legend in Age of Empires 2? And somebody let me know this. There was like some guy who was known for just turtling and playing Black Forest. That was like the only map he played. <clears throat> And um, apparently he played like a 24 hour game or something like that. It was like just like just some insane like suffering marathon. What are these guys doing? Where are they going by the way? Why would you not just go in here and just try and put a fork in it? What, what are they doing these scouts? Are they like riding into purple's base? Purple's pretty entrenched here. Oh Notre Dame salvage us dude. Yeah okay so the scouts are getting in to try and get into the base to stop the wonder what why would you do this why would you do this and um now the wonder is coming up dark age rush is probably just gonna chill out he might attack though you never know okay they're going for the free farms got it five dollars per hour hey man you know that can be some money i already played a one hour ffa the hero the hero we all need but like we need bob to actually win this hold you know what i'm saying like if bob if bob loses this I don't see that happening though. There's like one trebuchet on the field. Dark Age Rush cannot muster any siege equipment. Might be lucky to get like a bombard out. Like, and there's this is against like Red Palace and like Spring Alds should be spammed here. So if you're if you're Bob, you need to just slap those Spring Alds spam down and get ready to hold. <clears throat> Look at this janky ass fight over here, dudes. We have like some like French horsemen battling this legion of, of Mongol scouts. Um, in the base, do we see any backdoor plans? No, it doesn't look like it. Um, blue, and these guys are just fighting. You know, they're just getting at it right now. So somebody says you're referring to a guy named Fat Slob, the legend of the Black Forest. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty great name. I think, I think people just want to... Look, I don't think anybody could actually kill this wonder. Like, if, if Purple doesn't play poorly, nobody is going to get that wonder. Um, the, everyone else is too poor. The HRE would have the best chance, but, um, you know, 
Blue is too weak to really help. Could maybe make like a couple ramps to contribute. Fat Slob has made pros rage quit age vampires two games. I love that. That's really funny. Oh god. Oh, can I just like stand with my hands off the keyboard for a minute? The old, the old uh, enthesitis is acting up. Got bunions on my feet. All right, so the scouts over here. Look, look, look at this. This is what we've devolved to, guys. This is the depth of insanity. Just like a million scouts with their daggers out, like taking down actual combat units. Uh, looks like they're gonna move over there. Is anybody gonna attempt to stop the wonder? I presume green and purple are not going to trade with each other anymore during the wonder. Yeah, looks like they are. Green and purple are just going hard in the trade. They should just help defend the wonder. I know. Honestly, the French have basically won the game at this point, though, because they have the wonder. They have all the static defenses necessary to defend it. Um, the only vulnerability would be a landing force, like an HRE. If HRE really wanted to make me miserable, which, look, I would respect it. Uh, they could land right here, make like 15 trebuchets, land right here, and just nuke the wonder. And that would be, that would, that would be brutal. That would just, I would cry man tears at that point. Looks like the Mongols didn't hear no bell. The Mongols are trying to get in there. Um, Green is still trying to kill Delhi. Hey, you know what? But Dark Age Rush, if he survives, it's kind of an achievement on his own. Like he, he can sit, he can sit, hold his head up high and say that he's, you know, he endured the wrath of the, uh, of the rest of the game. TC going down, more money for Mongols. Towers being set up here. Hopefully uh, Bob realizes the danger he's in on the northern border. This is a very big vulnerability. Um, you know, very big vulnerability. There are spring alds nearby and villagers could rush up there, I suppose, but the Applebee's grind war. But Bob is gonna win it. I'll offer, he'll either get an Applebee's card or a Steam gift card, whatever he chooses. But Bob, you'll need to reach out to me for that because I don't know your name in Discord, so. Yeah, Dark Age Rush gets like the um, the uh, the you know the honorary win of sorts, but yeah, the French player, you know, he got his guild hall back online. He fought for the islands. The French player was the one that stopped the Mongol trade. He did a lot to win this game. The purple Atreides wins the game. I know. Sure looks like it, dude. I love how the Mongol player is still trying to get him too. He's like parking scouts outside, like just eyeing the walls menacingly. It's hilarious. Um, looking here, we got 11 minutes and 27 seconds left. Three, three v one for straight hours, rough dude. I'm impressed with Dark Age Rush. I'm, I'm very impressed. Orange is trying to get green to help kill the wonder. <laughs> oh man, Orange! I love Orange's scrappiness, dude. The fry fish. Look, he's building a ram. He's gonna like move it up there and try and get actually get in here and do something. Green and blue's fight is like a gif. It is. It just keeps repeating itself over and over. And blue is just starved. He's basically just just like scouts at this point. He's making legitimate villagers to go up and fight and torch. And you know, ironically, he's making a little bit of progress. Um, is green gonna do anything here? We got Trebs coming out. Problem is, Trebuchet is gonna almost re almost reach Notre Dame from like the edge of the base there. Orange is saying there is no second place. <laughs> I love it, dude. I love it. Oh my god. Looking up top here. We have um, we have the scouts heading down. They're gonna be rolling, 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 going hard in the paint. And uh, yeah, let's see how this unfolds. Oh my God, please no! If he if he actually ends up killing the um, the wonder, I'd be so sad. Dude, this game is already such misery. Like, here's the thing. I have started to feel hope. Like ever since that wonder was built, I I was like filled with a sense of hope and like optimism like okay this could end i could be eating in 15 minutes i could be you know doing all this stuff hanging out with my smoking hot wife but alas the mangonel counterplay that's what i'm talking about okay so green <laughs> green is pushing the wonder oh my god he's in he found a way in look at the scout overlord look he found a way in oh my god he's trying so hard to get that wonder He's trying so hard for it. Looks like some of the walls are being knocked down now. I'll give Green Apples card if you can. <laughs> Glorfindel, why would you wish that evil on us, bro? And you know what my favorite thing is? His Dark Age Rush is just like trying to like save the day. He's like trying to stop the attacks and slow down the Holy Romans, right? Holy Romans moving up, putting some pressure. Here we go, baby. I'm ready for round four. In the dark future of the third hour of this FFA, there's only war. Dude. This could go longer too. If if like 
If Green had realized the opportunity of a backdoor landing, which is super easy because of this, like, uh, the, the Wonder could die 100%. It could easily, easily get taken down. Orange said they should just concede if they won't push the Salt is real. <laughs> oh my god, dude. Look, you have to take into account... You have to take into account, like, the longevity of players. It's a variable, you know? If this was, like, a tournament with big prize money, I think, like, playing to... Yeah. But blue is probably exhausted. Um, and green is trying to push it, but green is also being countered by blue. So that's going down. It's our cage, not the hero we need, but the hero we deserve. Yeah, yeah. Blue said, blue said green is... <laughs> I like it, dude. Blue and blue and uh, oh, wait. Blue said green is his. Okay, so it's like Mortal Kombat. What the hell? A bunch of French men at arms just came out of nowhere. Manganel's pushing in. I'm telling you, a landing would just be the most soul-crushing shit ever. Hopefully, he's not listening to me on stream. But yeah, if if Green were to build a boat from his northern shore, land like six trebs here, Notre Dame would be fresh fish. Looks like the French men at arms moving up. Manganel's trying to disrupt. And uh, where are the Trebs going? Yeah, the Trebs are shooting at something. It's a little bit hard to tell. Are you even sitting in an Applebee's gift card's not a big prize? It's not the biggest. I, I, I remember the last time I went to Applebee's would have been 2014, and uh, I, I did enjoy the chicken strips. For as much as I make fun of them, it was... it was. Um, I always feel like when you go to Applebee's, it's like it's like you hit the bottom of... It's like going to Weatherspoons in the UK, but I guess Weatherspoons is probably worse. Probably a lot of alcohol involved. Okay, so the French are actually pushing back blue. The Mongols are trying to get some bow chads around and disrupt. Um, nobody has penetrated the walls yet so far. Um, okay. Okay, guys. Oh, no, please. Please, no. Please, no. What he's doing here, how he's gathering on the shoreline, is making me really nervous. Because Notre Dame could fall. There are villagers here ready to repair a couple spring alds, but, like... You need to defend the North Shores. Please, Bob. Please, please, Bob. Come on. Blue is yelling at Purple to go defend and not dare losing the wonder. <laughs> yeah, come on. I love it. Blue's like giving him advice in the fourth quarter. Oh, man. Yeah, this is getting a little bit shady McGrady over here. We got seven trebuchets and a transport ship. The North Shore is extremely vulnerable. Blue Purple, please. Please, for the love of the gods, no. No. Go, go defend your wonder. Stand on top of it. Have your villagers ready to repair, dude. He's probably supply capped, right? He's got 200, 200, yeah, so. Please, 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 please. Okay, he sees the boat, that's good. This is gonna alert to him that there's an intent to drop in the north, and it's gonna have the spring alls in position. Okay, that's really good. These haven't landed yet. He he now knows the Navy is coming across. <laughs> Unplug or just heard. Oh my God, dude. That's what she said. Yeah, man, it's getting delirious, it's getting wild in here, man. I can do this all day, though. All jokes aside, and I'm not. I'm not tired. I'm good. Do this all day, man. Up the uh, in the base here, we do have the Dark Age Rush pushing the HRE, trying to keep them at bay. The trebuchets have not been loaded yet, and it looks like. Ooh, could you do it here? No, this would be a little bit too far. Spring alts in position. Navy on the north side, and here you go. Orange complaining about green that doesn't know how to play. Oh man, it's just dude orange is fish fry is a player hater dude You know, he's still making his scouts. So he's going hard Dark Age rush holding on like a champ as a matter of fact Dark Age rush is like turned the fight around He's actually making progress into greens Empire now and the south side the Mongols are trying to trying to torch him down Look the Mongols are going for the kill on oh, no, Dark Age rush just the spike kill which I love I Will send blue $30 to betray dude. How dare you? How dare you guys do this? Okay, four minutes left. Five minutes until salvation. The walls here, not a bad idea. It will keep anything from blitzing by. And uh, yeah, I think I think Purple's got this. There was like a window of fear with the trebuchets like landing in the back, but I think we've we've gotten past this point, and we can now um, relax. HRE looks to be resource starved pretty hard. Um, trading is still going, ironically. But um, it wouldn't be a bad idea to maybe cut green off the trade so he can't make siege equipment anymore. But yeah, this is this is like your classic wonder defense springs and mangoes. Um, walls going up. Trebs don't have any good angles anymore. And I think we got it. Yeah, orange going for the spike kill is pretty hilarious. Dark Age Rush. Dark Age Rush has been a real hero this game though. He's been scrapping and um, yeah, man. I thought this game was going to be kind of quick when um, when Gunhound died quickly. 
But it feels like, yeah. There's not enough like Terminator players in here to like end it super quick. There's a, there's certainly a couple, but officially the longest FFA we've ever cast. There you go. Look at that, man. We set a record tonight. You guys were all here for this. All of us together have uh, accomplished this great feat. More towers around it. The Navy is patrolling the shores. Thank the Dark Gods. The trebuchets have not been loaded up. Um. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, no. Don't let that happen. No, 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 no. Pay attention here. He's knocking down a keep right now. Men at arms are going to rush in. Okay, he sees it. He sees it. Come on, Bob. Come on, Bob. Purple and blue just scream for Sigma. <laughs> That's pretty great, dude. This has been pretty epic, though. This game, for sure. It's it's been uh, it's been quite legendary. If I, if I was like sitting in a comfortable. I'm I have been sweating this game. There's been multiple moments where I've been concerned. All right, so yeah, Dark Age Rush is just trying to stop the Mongols. Up on the top, it looks like uh, the French are strong enough that they can also muster a navy to go for the kill here, and uh, it's go time. I just woke up. Didn't would catch. Hey, Donkey, if you want to, um, the first game was really, really good. This one's been good, but it's been more of a meme. The first game was like a really solid, good competitive match. This one's been competitive too, but it's been a little bit like all over the place in terms of the action. The one time I regret tuning into the stream, <laughs> you just wasted your whole. Come on, man, you're hanging out with the, your old, your old pal Turin. Could be worse, right? Come on, baby, give us the wonder victory. Oh, two minutes until salvation. If he were to like delete Notre Dame, I would, I would, I would flip the keyboard. It would, uh, don't do that. By the way, HRE has gotten in, which is already stressful. Please have those villagers ready to repair. With the HRE troopers, you're gonna get mowed down by the knights and the, the you know, mangoes and all that stuff. They're gonna have a pretty bad time. Scattering out, not a bad idea. Gonna be trying to circle about onto Notre Dame. You gotta watch these trebs though, because if those trebs creep over here and get in range, they could like potentially two shot it. There's eight of them. So he needs to be really on point. Come on, baby. Come on. A minute 45. Oh, God. Dude, this is just... No. No. Pay attention. Watch this. No, 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 no. Don't let those things get close. Come on, Spring Alts. Okay, he's, he's watching. He's watching. I, he, he gave the order. He gave the order. He gave the shift click. He sees it. Oh, attaboy. Attaboy, Bob. You're my boy, Bob. He's holding it. And the spring alts are chasing him down. They're, they're, dude, they're just straight up going in the base right now. I'm like, screw it, man. Yeah, the spring alts going, going on the wild hunt, dude. Orion has sounded the horn. Um, Orange is here. I love... This is my favorite fight, though. Just like the haggard, the haggard Dark Age Rush Scout Legion. Just duking it out. Here comes... Dude, I got nervous there for a second. I thought those traps were going to get in range. Oh, my God. Less than a minute until salvation. Spring alts running back into the base. Got to rebuild those walls. Yep. Good play. Good play by Bob. Bob able to get the rebuild going. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's on, man. It's on. I mean, even with Blue's help, I don't think they would get the wonder. Maybe they would have, they might have a chance. If Blue was helping, it, it would be, I would say, like a 50 50 toss up. But, you know, it's all good. It's all good. 30 seconds left. Dear God, dude. This is, this is just salvation is upon us. I feel like I've arrived to the promised land. No, no. Back trebuch bad trebuchets. Back. Back. Oh my god, they're getting close. Get the villagers. Pull the villagers to repair right now. Get them in there. Oh god, the mangoes are in range. Or the trebs are in range, I think. Are they hitting it? No. No, 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 no. Seven seconds left. Oh god, they're almost all in range. One of them shot. They're stuck in the doorway. Dude. Oh. Yes, dude. Yes. It's over. It's over, dude. <laughs> oh my god, bro. Bob, thank you. <laughs> GG, well played, guys. All jokes aside, even though I joke that I'm suffering, I'm having a great time here. This is really fun. Um, if you guys enjoyed the stream, drop a like on the way out. Congrats to Bob on the W. And um, yeah, we should do the same map, same people. Just r rinse and repeat the suffering. Do drop a like on the way out. Helps quite a bit. Three hours, baby. We got it. We came there together. I'm going to go eat. Go hang out with my smoking hot wife. That's it. You guys take care of yourselves. Go pet your pets. Spend time with your loved ones. Feast like the heathen kings and queens of old. And uh, we'll see you on the other side. Yeah. Take care of yourselves. Cheers.